The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, September 18th, 2023. This sports program starts now! Football! was awesome this weekend and we can't thank you enough for joining us here on ESPN on our YouTube on ESPN plus wherever you may be at work at home at a cafe at a bar all we know is that for the next three hours we're going to be talking ball and how great of an NFL week two Sunday we had and how great the college football Saturday slate was and how fantastic tonight is about to be as the Saints and Panthers will battle at 715 on ESPN then at 815 on a BC. The Browns travel to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, an old rivalry where all kids born in those cities are taught to hate the other city mm -hmm. from the day you breathe air. And tonight, the Cleveland Browns are going into Pittsburgh as favorites. Whoa! Favorites! What? Kenny Pickett and the Steelers look great in the preseason, but last week, not good. They are being judged poorly because what the Cleveland Browns did last week was fantastic. What would tonight look like, we shall see as week two wraps up. The college football thing, too. Banana land. Wow. Yeah. Can't wait to dive into that. We have Adam Schefter joining us in about 20 minutes or so. He'll be chit-chatting about the injuries. Big ones. Big ones. A couple big names. I'm going to drop them real quick. OBJ, Saquon Barkley, both hurt yesterday. Oh, Ooh. big Ankles names. Yesterday. Don't love that. We were told by the football gods before the season started that there would be no injuries this year. Yeah. Everybody was going to be healthy. That's right. Don't worry about a thing. Mm. That has not been true. No. no. Adam Schefter will give us an update on everything. Saquon, they're saying lower. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Lower ankle sprain as opposed to a high ankle sprain. Now, I'm a doctor. Sure. Of course, right. you know, I've yeah. seen doctors, so that makes me a doctor. Yeah. I'm from the internet generation. That's kind of how <laughs> it all kind of works That's on right. X and everything like that. I've heard lower good for a recovery, getting back quicker, higher, longer, more pain mm -hmm. from what we've been told. Right. So we'll kind of ask those questions about when they're expected to return and when everything's supposed to happen. Now, I also would like to say, before I introduce this incredible crew, if the Super Bowl was to be on Wednesday, mm -hmm. yeah, right. okay? Not saying teams that'll figure it out and get better by the end of the season, what the Super Bowl will actually look like. With the football gods blessing some people, injuries and not. If the Super Bowl was on Wednesday, I think it's clear cut two teams are battling. Miami Dolphins taking on Dallas Cowboys. Whoa. I mean, these two teams are at the top of their conferences, and it has to be a blast to be their fans because for a long time, one side of the coin, this team stinks. Remember, just a couple years ago, it was being alleged that the owner was telling the coach, I'll give you more money, you lose. Yep. Yeah. That was being alleged. We didn't make this rule up. Nope. We didn't make this report up. We're just telling you that. That was being right. alleged. That's what the fans had to go through. Hey, our team is actually trying to lose. We stink. Then all of a sudden, they go all in. They find two as this gem. McDaniel, who's the most chill coach in the history of the NFL, him racing against the cameraman at halftime after doing an interview huh. is maybe the greatest display of swagger, confidence, and moxie I've ever seen. You're in Foxborough taking on an absolute legend in Bill Belichick. You're up 17-3, and what are you doing? You're actually... Messing with a cameraman, yeah, yeah, knowing that you got it figured out. Could you, could you imagine being that comfortable? You know. you know how much work has to get to the point that you're that comfortable, especially taking on Bill Belichick and that confident? Good for them. And what they have on the field is going to be tough to be duplicated. Now, yeah. I was a guy that is a fan of a team that was maybe going to get their number two wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you right. You know, right. whatever. And that was an absurd ask. I yeah. saw, saw last night why people in Miami <laughs> yeah. were thinking it was an absurd right. ask. What Jalen Waddle was able to do for that offense is phenomenal. And McDaniel was able to use all these pieces to be great. They've come out of the gates hot, and it seems like they're not slowing down. Shout out to that defense, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's not get crazy and forget about it. Miami Dolphins are at the top of the AFC right now, I do believe. Now, some people are saying the Patriots stink. So, like, uh, yeah, we're true. judging a little bit. Well, let's talk about the Cowboys, then. 
This Cowboys defense, what? We're talking about historic. They're putting them up against the, the steel curtain of the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the day. And I think even the Bears defenses yeah. are back Whoa. in the day. All these stats are being chatted about about this particular team in the first two weeks. And you got Dan Quinn up in the booth doing his thing. They are stacked. Micah Parsons is an alien. Mm -hmm. This God. dude is just different. Mm. He's so fast, so strong, so fast, so dialed in. Anytime he wants to get to the quarterback, he's going to do that. Then he's going to do a little uh, jungle cat celebration. Yeah. Wild. This dude is different. He is also, his work ethic's absurd. Uh, I think mentally he wants to be the greatest. He has a podcast, I think, every single Monday on Bleacher Report where he chit-chats, and it's fantastic. Great personality. This dude is there. He's one of, like, five of the – and then he just said, give me that ball. <laughs> yeah. Give me the ball Unreal. to Dalvin Cook. On the defense side of the ball, they're going to have five first-team All-Pros, we think, at this stage of the season. And on the offensive side, big Mike McCarthy's oh. back under under the headset. Yeah. yeah. He's dialing up beautifully. Deal. He's having a good time. Feels like he's right back in the groove with Aaron way back in the day. The offense is going to be great. Dax doesn't seem to be put in a position to make as many mistakes to turn the ball over. This might be the perfect offense for him. And that guy right there, smell me, shout out Pac-Man with the dance that C.D. Lamb does every single time he gets a first down. They are phenomenal. Give me the Cowboys and the Dolphins as the top of each conference after the Week 2 Sunday slate. Mm -hmm. I guess things could change tonight with what the Cleveland Browns do to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And they are as dominant as they were in Week 1 against a Cincinnati team that well, we got to ask questions let's about. Go. Uh -oh. There's a lot of questions ask around. Them, There's a lot of great teams around. Let's start mm -hmm. chit-chatting with the boys. Well, uh, the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Hey, sweet turtle shirt, dude. Yeah, yeah, sea turtles, you know. I feel like this is a very happy animal. Figure, you know, you wear it, try and protect feel some them. of it. Oh. Yeah, protect the sea animals, please. Drink uh, those I'll terrible. tell you what. I hate those paper straws. Sorry, They're terrible. Sorry, That's sorry. Darius J. Butler, a nine-year oh, yeah. NFL vet. Yeah. Couldn't, uh, couldn't get it out fast enough. Yeah. There, I think, now, it was an internet report, so yep. people are going to fact check me. I think there's some potential downfalls of the paper straws. Very there. bad. Yes. Killing think, trees. You know, this is the whole thing. Like, I bought one of those electric cars because I was told I was saving the world. That's right. And then just a couple years later, I'm yeah. told, hey, you're, ha, ha, yeah. you're, ha, ha. Yeah, well, you know what you're doing. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't told that I was saving the world. Yeah, killing kids. I was kids. saving the world. Allegedly, I guess, they say, like, since the beginning of time, for every action, yeah. there's mm -hmm. an equal and opposite Reaction. Yeah, Newton. Newton. Shout out so I, I think Einstein. who said that? Albert Isaac, Isaac Newton. Steve. Jo oh, Isaac Newton. Yeah, mm -hmm. sir. We'd get there. Obviously, yeah, he was knighted. Yeah, allegedly, right. higher, yeah. higher. Mm -hmm. But allegedly, there is some downfalls to the paper straws too. I'm not a scientist. I hope the smart people figure it out because I love those turtles. They're the best, especially on your shirt. They look amazing. Yeah, they're wonderful. majestic yeah. creatures when they're out there doing their yeah. thing. When they're doing mm -hmm. their thing they out there, forever. All of them are tagged pretty much because they're yep. tracking all of them. Uh -huh. yep. So they've all got Have piercing to. from uh, humans. And hey, mm -hmm. we'll take care of you. We'll yeah. make sure nothing's in your nose and stuff. Sometimes. Yeah. It's great. It's majestic. Uh, one half of the hammer. Damn. Cowboys tone Dick is here. How was the gambling weekend? Did the books win or did the uh, public win this Actually, weekend? the public did pretty well this weekend, um, especially in the early 1 o'clock slate. Now, some things got out of hand in, in, the, in the late slate. Uh, the, the Giants didn't cover. What? Denver didn't cover. What? Cowboys did cover. Well, Cowboys and, are well, And together. so did the Rams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. McVay knew what he was doing. What? Huge cover. You uh, – Four seconds left. You know the four seconds runs off on a on a kick. We were talking about it earlier. If he really wanted to kick the field goal, it should have probably been, I don't know, at least 20 seconds earlier so they could have attempted an onside kick and then a Hail Mary just like the Broncos got to. Yeah, McVay, uh, that sneaky, sneaky dog, he knew what he was doing. It wasn't that sneaky, though. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That was like almost, that was hey, too often. A little on the nose. Hey, yeah. guys, 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 at least try. Mm -hmm. you know he doesn't even I mean? have least... to do that, though. Like, coaches of, of bad teams have to do that because, you know, the boosters and the fans, like, at least we covered, okay? But well, McVay's McVay's good. He's fine. He doesn't have to do stuff like that. But maybe I maybe I don't know. Who knows? Hey, well, I think there's a chance that he, he forgot. Uh, you know the timing sure. of sure. it all. Yep. And yeah. The field goal automatic four second runoff. I think for a 40 yard field goal or 39 yard field goal, yeah. which was what it was at the time. You know, interesting. Certainly uh, sparked some conversation on the internet. Yeah. Interesting script turn there. Week two. Absolutely. For this whole interesting. NFL scripted, huh? And then what you got? The team in Los Angeles. Oh. Oh. Yeah, there's a little bit of that going on. It's hard not to dive into the yes, water yes. whenever you're watching, especially if you're going against them. But I like the fact that the public seemingly won. I had a nice... I spent every dollar in my account. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. I had three bucks left in one of my gambling <laughs> accounts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seven bucks shout to The Rock for the yeah, weekend. Shout out. That was awesome. Shout out for everything. The best. I had three bucks left in my account. You know, I've been there. And I went on a nice... 10 leg, I believe, plus 9,400 parlay. Yep. Beautiful. 
would have hit. Gorgeous parlay. So that thing would have been up at two nine. I would have had two hundred and ninety bucks all of a sudden in my account. It's three dollars to two hundred and ninety bucks. There was one team just couldn't do it. Mm. Just couldn't do it. Wear your ski masks. They said, yeah, oh, right. come Where on. Where's your ski mask? That team? Where's your ski mask? That was a good ball game. A team up north? I was so sure of them. A that, good ball game. I wasn't even thinking about them whenever I was piecing this thing together oh, to yeah. try to turn my three into 290 or whatever. My last final three uh -huh. bucks production. You know what I mean? That's what mm, I was sure. going to do. And what do you guys do? Just let Geno Smith run wild and then they, they snatch your masks. Yep. They snatch your mask yeah. Yeah, off your face. Steal the game, snatch your mask, go into the locker room, do their dance. I That's what that. happened yeah. to the Detroit Lions. That ain't the team that we know. That ain't the brand, brand new, new Lions. Lions. That was really the only one that was kind of unpredictable there yeah. in the 1 o'clock hour. Yeah, turnovers killed the Lions. They gave, them, they gave the Seahawks 14 points. That offense is too good to give 14 points, and that's why you lose the game. A lot of people want to blame the refs or the defense or MCDC's decision-making. No, 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 no. You can't give the Seahawks 14 points. Simple as that. Well, the issue was mm -hmm. they were way too worried about the zip line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nervous. Game. <laughs> Them having Tim Robinson there and Cuz from all the Apple stuff and also I think you should leave. Mm -hmm. He's very good. I should know his name. Sam Richardson. Boom. There it is. Yep. Uh, I love him being a human just out in public. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm watching him awesome. just thinking everything's a work. For those that don't know, the guy on the left there is the creator and the mind behind the most absurd show that has ever been granted three seasons or something. Yeah, yes. for sure. It is only – what was uh, what was old buddy's name where they used to have the shark party whenever the uh, – Andrew, uh, the comedian on uh, Comedy Central. Eric Andre? No, from Pittsburgh. He uh, – oh. Jezelnik? Yes, Anthony yeah. Jeselnik. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I think he lasted like two seasons. Yeah, not very long. And his thing was just, it was the most absurd show of all time. This I Think You Should Leave on Netflix is the most absurd show of all time. Some people get it and they love it. Yep. He yeah. happened to be yep. a show of people. In that that camp. Love it. Some people really hate it. Was he was MCDC too distracted by Tim Robinson being yeah. there? Well, it yeah. might have been Tim Robinson. It might have been Barry Sanders. It might have been Calvin Johnson. I mean, everyone was that. Colorado game. Wow. Everyone was there. <laughs> I didn't know the Detroit Lions oh, oh, yeah. Colorado game Barry all of a sudden. People were so pumped for this. Was Kid there? Uh, Kid Rock was he invited to Barry? Uh, uh, I didn't see Kid. Wow. Wow. That might be the issue. <laughs> Kid Rocker. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you get invited? Know. Anyways, that we don't want to bring the Detroit Lions up just to go ahead and we're, say that, but they kind of were the only team that did that. But I don't think anything is really set in stone on this season for MCDC and Goff, who had a pretty damn good day. Oh, yeah. You look at Goff's numbers. Let me uh, – it's like 300 and some yards, a couple touchdowns. Like 28 yeah. 35. He had, he had a pick six, which, which cost him. But him and Geno were just – Goff had two early. Geno had two late. They were going back. That was one of those games where, like, the offense was just back and forth all day long. Whoever had it last. Yeah, cool. it was fantastic. And to play the lock, it makes to win that thing. Yeah, to seal that thing in overtime. Old. I mean, it was – the Seattle Seahawks, every single year, it feels like we kind of uh, don't talk about them, especially post-Russell Wilson era. Last year, we didn't chat about them. What they do, well, they just had the number one offense in the NFL last regular season. Mm -hmm. Geno Smith earns himself a big-time contract. That guy's still on the team. DK's still on the team. They come out and ball. I yeah. uh, very much appreciate the Seattle Seahawks that we don't talk about ever now i didn't put them as you know my MC, nfc representative in the super bowl if no. it was to happen on wednesday but i think they are always going to be good with Pete carroll yes there was a time i was watching the game Pete carroll was jumping in front of the d line mm -hmm. like jumping in front of them and i'm like that guy's like 90 years old yep. dude still has that energy still has that juice still has that connection feels like he's always going to have a good team which is good news speaking of a good team darius uh you dunked on something earlier i had to introduce you i forget how you made your way into this overreaction monday but let's talk about the two teams that i dropped into the Super Bowl there. Yeah. This Dallas Cowboys defense is being compared to the great defenses of the past, the defenses that are in the Hall of Fame, the ones that NFL films write stories about and documentaries about, and people refer to as, these people are the best since, boom, mm -hmm. insert name mm -hmm. of team here. Do you think Dallas Cowboys are going to end the season this way? To incredibly hot start. Yeah. yeah. Micah said this is year three in the system with Dan Quinn. Do you think this is the year they go with this thing? I mean, Micah is a monster. And in, in the conversation for, I mean, obviously you got Mahomes, but in the conversation for best player in general in the league right now, he just plays at a different speed. And on every level, they just fly around in the back end. You got Hooker, you got Gilmore they added, Javon Diggs, everybody making plays. Once they get up on you, like, I mean, it's tough sledding for that O-line and that quarterback, whoever it is. Now they have started off against Daniel Jones, Zach Wilson, I think, what, five points per game right now? They're on the pace right now. So, uh, But every everything's pointing in the right direction. Mike McCarthy got him buzzing on offense, and they're in a position where 
don't have to do a bunch, can be balanced, and that's tough for a defense. They can hand it off to a running back. The play action's alive. The shots down the field, CD's lambs is unbelievable. So um, everything is clicking for them right now. Uh, I wouldn't put them above the San Francisco 49ers just mm. yet, though, in the NFC. Great style. game yesterday with the Rams. Yeah. I yeah. mean, great game yeah. with the Rams yesterday. Matthew Stafford was doing his thing. Bosa isn't 100% back, we don't think. Only had one tackle for loss yesterday. One tackle for loss, uh, but he did lead them in quarterback pressures or hits with three. Hey, Fred, watching Fred play Dude, football. He is a man. Monster. His face mask. So much fun. A monster. He's got good hang time, too. Oh, hair, yeah. Oh, yeah. hair getting real long. Oh, yeah. That's what I noticed yesterday as he was flying mm -hmm. around there. He is so much fun to watch. You're right. Rams, though, gave him a test. And I think yeah. like the Rams, Surprising. you know. Solid. It, I think so, right? Better than we than we thought, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. The joke is that he decided to cover with four seconds left. Yeah. yeah. But also the conversation should be, hey, Sean McVay is doing probably his most coaching and his Puka Nakua. Oh, <laughs> Puka Nakua is always open. I know they call people 7-Eleven and things like that, but it feels like this guy legitimately always open. And Matthew Stafford loses Cooper Cup because of a hamstring potential genetic issue, I guess is how they're describing oh, oh. it. So who knows if that's ever going to happen. Him and Cooper Cup are always on the same page. Him and Puka Nakua yeah. always on the same page. Page. Yeah. Puka Nakua got injured last year, I do believe, at BYU. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't really, I think there wasn't a lot of hype around Puka coming into the NFL. And then as soon as he gets on the same field with Matthew Stafford in actual NFL games, has the most amount of receptions through the first two games for any rookie, pretty much with mm, yeah. 20. And I get also most targets, too. Most targets 30. at 30. So think about how trustworthy Stafford. And he, I mean, he yeah. trusts him yeah. a lot. This dude has been a shining star early in this NFL season. I think the Rams as a whole have certainly outperformed what we all assumed was going to take yeah. place with a team that's very young, third or fourth youngest team. But they do have Matthew Stafford, who's, hey, he was moving yesterday. Oh, he's right out there. Yeah. Hey. Young. When he, I mean, he was. Yeah, high, high knees. Huh? Are you kidding me? He's out in L.A. probably working with his body guru. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He's doing that same stuff that Tom Brady's doing, who's running on the let's go thing with mm -hmm. no limp at whatever age he's at. He just looks good. Matthew Stafford was moving around yesterday, which I think is what surprised me most because that San Francisco 49ers defense yeah. normally doesn't allow that type of stuff. And that's not certainly the defense that you want to do that against either because they hit to hurt. Yeah. So I think we learned a lot about the Rams. I don't have the Niners up there just because it hasn't been as dominant, which takes us back to the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, you know, I, on this microphone right here. Well. Oh, yeah, I think we I think we remember. What was it? Uh, we, we remember. At least we in the north and the east. Okay, so into this microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Do you remember what happened? Yeah. So the Jets beat the Buffalo Bills. It was a great yeah. win. Yeah, that's it right. It was an incredible win. <laughs> yeah. They lost Aaron on uh, play four yeah. Of, yeah. of his tenure as the New York Jets, which he, he said on Friday, he's he's got sights, eyes on, you know, returning this year, and hell yeah. Yes, he does. And on Tuesday, after they get that big win over the Buffalo Bills without Aaron, uh -huh. in a new Zach Wilson that I'd seen on Hard Knocks and yeah. what I thought Zach Wilson was. Because remember, Hard Knocks preseason, he's running, oh, yeah. Yeah. shaking, uh -huh. grooving, talking Killing shit. Down mm -hmm. the sidelines. Doing his, hanging out with his teammates. Mm -hmm. yep. and he's doing that whole thing. So on Tuesday, after they beat the Bills without yeah. Aaron, and Zach Wilson kind of gets handed the baton, I don't know, two years earlier yeah. than what everybody thinks, I said, you know what? What's that? Because how good that defense is, <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that offense, because of how weapons they have, what I've seen uh -huh. out of Zach Wilson, Dalvin Cook getting out in the wow. breeze, always Kidding over there. Me? Okay. I, even without Aaron, mm -hmm. the Jets are going to make the playoffs. Yes, you did. That's what I said, right here, into this microphone. You weren't the only one. And there, well, yeah, I did realize that there was other people that were like, I don't think he's wrong. Like, there, was, there were people amplifying yeah. what I was saying. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, listen, Preach. This, this guy's saying, a lot of people <laughs> are saying that. Okay. And I'm like, oh, now I'm the hot take guy all of a sudden who's on ESPN. Holy hell, I've sold out. I've changed. Uh -huh. And then I was like, you know what? I do believe it. Trust mm -hmm. him. In the moment, I believed it. Right now, I believe it. Right. And then I watched them. Right now, oh. I do not believe that. <laughs> okay. well, Things yeah. have changed okay. a little bit. Exactly. Uh -huh. But Good. it was the Dallas Cowboys defense, sure. yeah. which has become a little bit of an issue. And then you think back a week before that, they took on the New York football giants, and they looked abysmal. Holy hell, six quarters straight, we got no points. Oh. Bruce Brown, who's in the back, diehard New York Giants fan, he had scored the same amount of points as the New York football giants in an NFL game. <laughs> uh, that's right. Literally, yeah. it was just yeah. hanging there for everybody on the internet to say. They stunk. Then they go into halftime. Holy hell. Unbelievable. They played football again. New yeah. team. Saquon Barkley was running like angry. You look mm -hmm. like, there was a couple of deflections off Saquon hands, one of them for a pick and everything. It wasn't really hitting much. And then in the second half, they oh, looked boy. like the team that we saw in the second half of last season. Yeah. I will wonder now if the Giants go on and do what we all expect them 
expected them to do at the beginning of the season. They're going to be good at football. Darren Waller getting in there. Right. He was getting hit. I mean, that, that team appeared to be good yesterday in the second half. Massive comeback win over a team that I think we all thought would just get railroaded. Joshua Dobbs, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Playing like a dog. Not, they're competing. Hey, not bad at all. Yeah, got not, that fire in not, gut. Not Running bad. over people on not, the goal line. Not bad at all, Joshua Dobbs, who signed to the team like eight days before the season started, and then all of a sudden, you're the starter. How you doing? Keep it moving. We're cutting Colt McCoy, who certainly is here, a leader here, and knows the offense. We cut him for you, and Dobbs said, you got it. Let me put the team on my back for the first half. And, and it was a great first half. It was a great so first half. It was, we will always remember yeah. that first half. But what we need to remember is if they go on to be good, how? Did, why were they so bad for these six quarters? Well, you know, mm -hmm. like Bruce, what, is, what was it? What do you think, as the Giants fans, what are they thinking was the first six quarters of the season? Just no, like Wink's defense. We never could have guessed that his defense would lay an egg no. through one game into the second game. Yeah. They're showing him on a sideline. He's got cool glasses on and like, Everybody that's in the football world is like, hey, that guy knows his shit. Like, that guy's good. That mm -hmm. guy's a good defense coordinator. And they were just getting trapped. It's like, and then they showed Dayball. It's like, hey, that guy, everybody says, yep. good offensive coach, good coach, Love good leader him. of men. It's like, well, why do they suck? Like, why? Why did it happen? And do you think now they're back after that second half that made you reminisce about last season? Um, yeah, for sure. So the, the offensive line was the glaring issue on the offensive side. They did play much better. Um, in week two overall than they did against the, the Cowboys there. Um, and then defensively, I mean, we kind of got Kayvon Thibodeau on, on the back of a milk carton right now, just looking for him, oh. waiting for him to show oh. up. Oh. 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 Back of a milk carton. And then, and then we got two, two rookie corners that are, that are kind of finding their groove but getting exploited a bit, especially with, like, Zach Ertz in, in zone coverage. They're just too, too small. Okay, well, good luck to the Giants. Happy you guys found it. Yeah. Yep, good second Hopefully half. you find Thibodeau. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're looking for him. He's lost. There. They started, though. That but means... they do talk about the competition. Let's go to the other side of the coin. Let's go to the Miami Dolphins. Oh, yeah. We all just respect Bill Belichick, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think we always will. Now, there's a group of people that are starting to not do that. Oh. You know, there's a lot of memes about Bill Belichick in the wild, you know, without Tom Brady. That's oh, yeah. Right. You know, I saw somebody put a man genie thing out and say, that this is who Bill Belichick <laughs> is oh, uh, geez. without Tom Brady. Yeah, that's not even the worst of it. That's not the worst. Oh, no, it gets worse. I don't know. If you tell Bill Belichick that he's being compared to Eric Mangini, I, I think he might think this is rock bottom. He's going to take offense. I think he's going to take Goes pretty heavy. <laughs> What's that? Uh, they're comparing him to a whole lot of terrible fictional head coaches. As far really? As, uh, oh, yeah. People are not happy, both in New England and just nationally. Okay, so the tide's turning on him in New England because I remember just, uh, what, like uh, a couple months ago, you would actually – there's a bullet coming this way. Mm -hmm. Bill Belichick's right here. Oh, yeah. Bill Belichick's looking this way. For whatever reason, he's getting caught off guard. Didn't know that a bullet was coming this way. Watching tape. Yeah, watch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're right. Learning more yeah. about football. He's getting shot at. He doesn't care. He's just watching tape. He's watching 1934 football. Yes. Oh, yeah. About a play that he can maybe put into yeah. the lineup to really get a first down when they need it. Bingo. He's not paying attention. You would have stepped right in front of that. Still thing. would. I wouldn't say would have. I, I still would do that. But. New England's starting to not want to as do a that? whole. No, ever since Brady left, it's yeah. been it's been split pretty much down the middle. And it's these lot, early man. years of the seasons, as they always go for New England, it gets very loud with Bill. Still the greatest flag throw of all time. Of all Josh, time, yeah. Josh flag throw of all time. Two for two this year. And fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Get good. Get good. Shoot, come on, Dick. God, that's on me. Hunter said on me. Got oh. a little bit too comfortable. I mean, he had to know. But that, that is what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is exactly what he said in that entire thing. You didn't say it. He said it. Bingo. Yes. I'm just quoting somebody else's actions. I do apologize. We didn't have audio for five minutes and like 26 seconds on Friday. Mm -hmm. So on ESPN. So maybe that'll be the same problem we have today. <laughs> yeah, yep. And that didn't make it through. But we all just kind of respect Bill Belichick and what he's going to do. And they're always going to be in it. They were in it last night. Yeah, bingo. Listen, I think they kind of got. Mm. No. Mm. no. A little bit. You Good know, call. I understand there's a fine line between, like, refs can't just say, like, that was cool oh, and yeah. do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I know. Yeah. Chris, Chris mm -hmm. wanted that for sure. Like, I, I know that they're – me too. I was watching. I'm like, yeah. They called it a first down. Like, are we going to overturn that sweet hook and ladder <laughs> right so there? So cool. I mean, did Gesicki – Having the mind to be like, oh, nope, can't go down fourth and four. Got to get a first and have it. Where's somebody, boom, cold range. Boom. Snag it, run it, grab it. We are a first down. Give they, it to they call it a first down. 
They called a first yes. down on the field. The the wherewithal to make that play, and then Cole Strange going up and getting driving his legs, Fancy. put that man a fullback. <laughs> Come on, for it to be that close, yeah. you know, on the camera, I've seen them not overturn things oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. have been much, sure. much more yes. obvious than that play. For sure. So I appreciate the fact that they're like the rules is the rules because if I'm in there, it'd be hard for me not to go. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Very give close. It, give it to See what happens. I, you know, we got a pretty good Look game that, here. Catching the spin. Yeah, Ooh, genius was, move yeah. by Gusecki, who he's the owner and operator of the worst gritty yes, of all time. Correct. That's right. right. That is the who, worst. Yep. And, and now he, him and Hunter Henry are supposed to be the big time duo. duo. Oh, yeah. Hunter Henry, definitely. Yeah, he's been living Followed. up to it. Somebody said something about uh, you guys did something illegal on the Hunter Henry touchdown. Is that? Is yeah, it, I'm sure some people are bitching and moaning because there's a couple guys illegally downfield. But hey, that's oh, yeah, there were happen. five yards down the field. Uh, there were three, but he yeah. Was they, no, they, there were guys was in the end zone. There were three yards. There were three yards. We can look at the screenshot, but they do. They, in the replay, they showed the zone that offensive lineman can be. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Boy, oh, boy. They were not in that line. <laughs> well, that's that's first time I've really seen that, yeah, that broken down that way. Me too. Funny enough, it's against New England. Yeah, bingo. And yeah. Bill Belichick and Sean <laughs> yeah. Payton are good friends because they both believe that the NFL is tr actively trying to screw them at all right. times. Like yep. Which last night would certainly add another theory into it. Did you see what they overturned? Kidding me? They over. What if that camera's at an angle? How can you yeah, even tell? Exactly. They even what if that camera's at an angle? How do they even know that they'd never be able to do that? Uh, but them putting the zone on there, I thought was oh yeah hilarious. Because I assume we'll ask AQ Shipley, who will lie first uh -huh. about offensive lineman cheating. Well, it's because he's skinny. He will lie. Yeah, he's skinny yeah, yeah. now. He, he doesn't but, really get it. But I'll, but we're gonna prod him a little bit. Like they're certainly down the field. I would assume on a lot of oh, just yeah. like holes, especially down near close to the. On that play, yeah. too, on like you're supposed to sell run a little bit, and the ball is either supposed to come out quick or they're going to run it. Mm -hmm. So to extend one of those particular plays, yeah. those offensive linemen are going to be caught in a purgatory place anyways. Mm -hmm. So them just showcasing that they did it on this fourth down or fourth quarter touchdown, yeah. I could see how Patriots fans would be like, oh, thanks, NBC. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. so cool. much. Is this a new thing we're doing all year yeah. or just, just tonight? The rules are the rules. The rules is the rules, even mm -hmm. though I think Cole Strange got that first down. Yeah, he yeah it is what it is. That That's one of those things where I, I – Really, I'm kind of on the rules is the rules thing. Like you do, you want all these reviews to be as good as they are, and that is exactly why they did call it back. But man, let the boys play. What happens if they have a Cole Strange throwback, you know, touchdown in the books that they're saving for the next play? And now we're never going to see it because of that stupid, you know, no, it wasn't a first down actually. Now, I've never been inside of the New England way. But mm -hmm. him seeing Cole Strange get loose with that ball oh, and drive yeah. his mm -hmm. legs. Bill Belichick putting together a full package, you think, for Cole Strange, a quarterback, running yeah. a wildcat? Maybe, Ooh, maybe yeah. not a quarterback, but once you get in that tight red area, he may be a jumbo eligible tight end, sneaks in there and leak out to the flat. Won't be surprised by that. You remember all. when the New England Patriots were cheating about that? They had to actually change the yeah. rules because of how many well, it's eligible. Not it's not cheating if you have to change rules, right? Yeah, Where you're right. It, it means you got around it, yep. yeah. but then you created new rules. Shout mm -hmm. out to Bill Belichick, probably creating more NFL rules than any other coach. That's yeah, the field goal block. You know, oh! Actually, that's not a real Let's rule, talk about this. Right, let's talk about this. Gorgeous. Great setup there, Darius. And that's why you have that job as one of the hosts of NFL Matchup. Right. Plus. That's How right. was the episode? Good? It was good this week? Uh, it was great. Great week. You guys killed it. Great yeah. week. I, saw, keep up. I watched it. I watched it. Yeah, yeah. I watched it. Hey, there we go. I Eight, watched it'll be 8.30 this Saturday. All right, so let's go. You guys, man. Let's go to this block that Bill Belichick brought into – Last night's game that will certainly be chatted about for other people to try, but I think this is a situations or situational mm -hmm. type operation. So yep. first of all, what needs to happen here is there has to be an indicator that would send old schooler who ends up blocking this kick. Here, let's just run through it here. So for those that didn't see it, standard operating procedure. Here's a field goal. Okay, need to have it. Sanders, great kicker. Holder, Jake Bailey, formerly of the New England Patriots, will be a piece of information. It's going comes off the edge. Perfectly timed. Canadian Football League on the run. Arena League on the run. Doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. And as the ball moves, he goes. Guy has no chance of blocking him. Now, let's go look at it from the wide view here. Oh, that's my play. We will get to that. <laughs> let's get one. to the wide view here. So you see him standing all the way out there. What's he eyeballing? Hmm. Well, he's looking at the holder. He's not looking at the snapper. You see, there would be a chance he'd be looking this way 
because the snapper might give something away. So there are times where a snapper, right before he'll snap, he'll either lift his head up or lift his head down, and then he'll throw the ball. It's like a, uh, a twitch almost, mm -hmm. like something that just happens in it. So there are times where you do that. But instead, this time, they are looking directly at the holder, okay? So then you got to think, well, what is the indicator? Well, it had to be something with the holder that would tell a schooler mm. to go on a sprint and change the entire game. So let's go back to that back view, shall we? Let's mm. watch the holder, right? Because schooler already told us that we're watching the holder. Keep an eye out here, okay? He's going to look back at Sanders, ask Sanders if he's ready, and then very slightly he is going to go with a deep breath seemingly. <sighs> okay? Oh, yeah. That's what it's going to look like. Subtle. <sighs> That's what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes peeled to this man's head, okay? This holder's head. Watch it. See that? There right is. there. Was. Did you see it? Wow. wow. Did you see it? That's small. I it. Did you see yeah. it? I see it. <laughs> okay, now that you've seen it, we'll look at it from the other angles. Little bit of a head dip. It feels like it's almost like it's a breath out, like a breathing air out. Yep. And that sends schooler, okay? So you have to think to yourself, well, how in the hell would they know this? Well, this guy right here was the punter and holder for the New England Patriots for how many years? I believe five or six years. So Bill Belichick probably watching self-scout going, how has nobody picked up on <laughs> the fact that this guy does this? So the first time he has the opportunity to do it, watch it, breathe, go, schooler, off the edge. It's wow. literally as small as that. It's a minor little detail that if you – See it, I would assume it'd be too obvious, yeah. but there's not a lot of people that are going to be able to find that particular tell. Nope. There's always been tells for like what the snap's going to be on. For this instance, it's when the hand opens, and that's mm -hmm. normally for these people out here on the edge, like, hey, you can get a jump if the holder mm -hmm. does a hand thing, you can see it. But to go next level, that's that chess thing. You know, that's mm -hmm. playing chess. That's mm -hmm. a move ahead of a move. This is a tell that we can get a little bit more leverage, a little bit more speed. It's absolutely brilliant. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saw it. Boom. Bang. How about oh. Miles Bryant off of this edge being like, oh, we got this. And he he, cause he and he goes out as if it's going to get blocked that way so he could scoop and score that way. They they knew. like oh, yeah. They knew that was coming. I assume they rep this, no lie, 30 to 40 times. If you have a tell that is that good, mm -hmm. that is not going to change. Because there is, and obviously I showcased this a little bit earlier, but, like, we had one, okay? Mm -hmm. And you know how I know? Because Bill did this to us on an extra point. Jamie, right over top. How you oh, doing? I'm Scariest right. night of my life. Gotcha. It was oh insane. So he had something on me. Okay. So obviously I had to change, I had to change <laughs> yeah, some yeah. stuff. Fast. We started snapping on one, on two, on three. We started doing different movements. I started moving my head a little bit. But anytime you see a guy jumping as high as he is right in front of your face, I mean, look at me. I'm still, I'm not even looking at the ball. Yeah, you can see him. <laughs> I'm not yeah. even looking at the ball. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute here. There's a little dump potentially spray out the bottom there. I, I'm trying to figure out what to do in a moment. You pull that thing? Or? Well, bingo. Fire. That's but All right, the, fire. Them Imagine what? I do that Adam Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri, what, he yeah, rips right. his hamstring? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what? Or Jimmy yeah. Collins rips your head off? He's got to beat Devin McCourty one-on-one -on -one in open field. I literally. <laughs> I think it was more than McCourty over there. You know, I patched the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing on that block, too, was on fourth and uh, fourth and ten. So, just in case old boy jumps it and gets offside, you're still kicking oh. the field goal. You don't give him a free first down. So, mm -hmm. Belichick got this in the bag. He's not going to pull it out on fourth and four. It's as small as that, though. Those are like the fine details that I think if you played football in high school, like, I got a lot of respect for you. I appreciate the hell out of you. Uh, you play, you love football. Mm -hmm. Okay, We get it. We love football, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you play in college, it's a little bit more. Like, just a little bit more. Like, okay, we're going to start doing this stuff to kind of confuse these people. Well, they're in this coverage, so that means we should check to this because we'll beat this. Then, in the NFL, it's like, okay, if they're in this coverage, we got to force them to get into this coverage so then, then we can do this. It's like there's just levels to this thing whenever it comes to focusing and dialing in. And sometimes it's as little as a guy exhaling and being <laughs> like, yep, we got three seconds once he – so, schooler, you got to time this up. Yeah. And I legitimately believe that they would have repped this – so many times for him to make sure that timing is perfect because a blocked kick is a massive ordeal oh, yeah. in a game. It wasn't enough to get a win over the Dolphins. No, no, no. Which makes me go back to saying, 
The dolphins are the truth. Yeah. Joining us now is a man who I would assume has more information on everything than we will ever have in our entire lives. For sure. He's ESPN senior NFL insider, friend of the program, Michigan man, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Yeah. Schefter. Yeah. Schefter, sorry. Happy Monday, guys. Hey, uh, Pat. Yeah. Take that last clip of the holder in New in Miami bowing his head. Clip that off and save that for the Emmy committee. Right there. Oh, okay, you just won an Emmy. Wow. Hey. We've been looking to do that. That's been the dream. Yeah. That's huge. Hasn't that been the dream? <laughs> yeah, right, Final right. box to check off. Oh, my. Yes. Save that. Send it in. And when you win it. Oh, thanks to my it, wife. When you win it. Congrats. Yeah. You can tell. Go ahead. You can tell that you now have. Yeah. Yeah. Give the speech, When man. you win it, you can tell that you've won more Emmy than me. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We don't whoa. want it. Give don't it to him. It. Yeah. Give, he were at the tail end of it. Give it to Shefty. Also, Dan Patrick and the boys, they deserve something. <laughs> Emmy's really matter. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move along. Uh, Shefty, we were just talking about the Patriots. We're talking about the Dolphins. Feels like Dolphins, best team in the AFC in my eyes at this exact moment. Not saying what will happen going forward. But everybody's healthy down there. I think big conversations revolve around Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham Jr. Early reports are Saquon's a lower ankle sprain as opposed to a higher ankle sprain. And what is the difference between the two? Well, first of all, that's pre-MRI. But I will say this, that everybody around it last night was more encouraged with the condition of his ankle considering what he went through in the game. If you watched it, he went down. He was twisted. It was an ugly look. He walks off, hobbles off, gets helped off the field, throws his helmet down in frustration, is despondent in the locker room after the game, has had a history of issues with his legs, as everybody knows. But the x-rays, the initial x-rays came back negative, which was encouraging. And now today, they're out in Arizona because they were playing the Cardinals they're staying out west. They're going out to San Jose on Wednesday to play the 49ers on Thursday night. So he's having an MRI this morning, which, what is it, 9 o'clock there, 10 o'clock there? I don't know the time difference. And Arizona. they think going in, it's going to be better than expected. Now, that doesn't mean it will be, right? Let's see what the MRI shows. But I think that they're hopeful and optimistic going into that MRI that it's not as bad as they thought. Odell Beckham Jr., John Harbaugh said after the game, didn't believe it was serious. So that's encouraging with Odell Beckham Jr., and we'll see how the week of practice goes with him, whether or not he's able to be out there. Okay, obviously Odell Beckham Jr. is a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. The Ravens didn't sign I expecting Odell Beckham Jr. for 17 games. I assume they are banking on him for the last eight, though, because he looked – hey, yesterday OBJ looked good. And you know who else looked good? Lamar Jackson was dropping balls in oh, buckets. Oh, yeah. That offense is going to be fun to watch. Hopefully, they'll be able to kind of let Odell Beckham fully recover before bringing him back. Last question about injuries or anything like that for me before the boys got it. Anthony Richardson, self-reported concussion. I believe he played. Yeah. Did he play again after the hit that it took place, or how did that whole thing come about, and what are they expecting going forward? You know, I didn't see the hit it took place, Pat. They just took him to the locker room. They, de they declared him out right away. Yeah. It was he got he, he touchdown. He's a, he takes a yeah he takes a lot of shots out there. I mean, he's a physical football player, and we already saw in week one, uh, Trevor Lawrence telling him be careful, right, and get down and don't take all those hits. So if, if this is the play, yeah, this rolls is it. outside, hits his head off the ground, bang, right there. Bam. But he's up immediately, right? <laughs> so I hit think his head off the ground and still did a flip when he landed and yeah. got up and celebrated and celebrated so. and goes back to the sideline and then I. Yeah. Sue me, I fell asleep for like 20 minutes. It's going to happen. My wife wakes me up and she's like, Anthony Richardson is in the locker room. Gardner Minshew's playing. I'm like, what the hell just happened? No, no, this no. guy's got two touchdowns already. Kind of <laughs> yeah. came at that, though. Oh, oh that, that, that's, yeah. that, that, you know, look, that looks like whiplash right there, Ooh. right? When you watch it, when you watch the angle of it, they, they downgraded him right away. I mean, so there was no question. And the thing with the protocol is, you know, you're going through it this week. You can't tell on Monday whether or not the guy's going to be fine. You, I've seen players that people say to me, I'm, oh, he's fine, he'll be ready to play this week, and then they're not. And then I've seen players say, it's serious, and then they go through and they clear. So you just don't know on Monday. Whenever I hear a player in concussion protocol Monday, first and foremost, you hope he's okay. But to predict his status for the upcoming week is ill-advised. Anthony Richardson needs to stay alive. That guy is incredible Please. at football. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about the other side of the coin with C.J. Stroud, and they're like, hey, it's going to take some time to develop new offense, new quarterback. It's like, hey, on the other side, 
Guy's got three touchdowns already, first two games. Him and Shane Steichen are a match made in heaven, seemingly. We hope he's okay. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Shefty, after yes. yesterday in the Jets-Cowboys game, obviously the Cowboys have an unbelievable defense, but you know the Jets yeah. struggled on offense. Is there any chance that we do see the Jets make a move for a quarterback, whether that be like an Andy Dalton or a Jacoby Brissett backup right now or someone who's a free agent, or do you think that they'll probably just keep rolling Zach Wilson out there and see what happens? Connor, you sound like all the Jet fan friends who are texting me after the game. We got to get a quarterback. Oh, yeah. We got to get a quarterback. Oh, yeah. a, everybody wants the Jets to get a quarterback. Easier said than done. I look. <laughs> I, I just think that they're committed to Zach Wilson. Uh, I don't think Joe Namath is walking in that door anytime soon. And you could want to go out and add. Could. He, could, though, the hey, good. hey, he was on game day. He yeah. was quick. He could. Still got it. Still got it. Do bring. He still got it. I don't know. I could sling it a little bit. Hey, like the boy. he just turned 80. Why not? Give it a roll. But the fact of the matter is, I think they'll add a quarterback to that room eventually, uh, whether that's this week or next week. But it's not going to be some guy that I expect that they're turning the offense over to and benching Zach Wilson. They, they they believe in him, and even though it didn't look great, that's a tough assignment right away. Step in, play Dallas. I think they're going to be patient. I think they're going to keep playing him. I think they're going to stand by Zach Wilson. I Sorry think, to all the Jet fans out there. No, I, I think <laughs> I said that they were still going to make the playoffs because I thought Zach Wilson had changed enough while watching Aaron Rodgers kind of be an NFL quarterback behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be enough to maybe get Zach Wilson over the hump to be a guy on the field. And then you got the Cowboys, you know, your first week. That def they're saying historic, Shefty. I, everybody at your network, our network, hey, yeah. our network, yep. I yeah. apologize. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's on me. That's Welcome on me. to the team. Welcome to the team. Yep. Hey, honored to be a part of it, actually. Yep. That's on me there. You know what I mean? Whoops. That was on me. Made a mistake. But on our team, has been hyping the Cowboys for a long, long time. That's why I said it, though, because, you know, it's been for a long Feels like this is the year, right? I mean, this really does feel like the year. Is there anything we need to know about with the Dallas Cowboys behind the scenes? Well, I, I, what I would say is this, that, you know, the Jets were talking about comparing themselves to the 85 Bears at the beginning of the season. And right now, the Cowboys look like they have a defense that's giving up, what, 10 points a game, sacks, interceptions. They feel like this is as good a team as they've had in a long time. Remember what Jerry said before the season? Everyone was laughing. This is the best team that I've had since I've been here. Everyone, hey, okay, Jerry, you know, let's see it. Well, so far, so good. So far, they look pretty impressive. That's only two games, right? But if you can play defense like that, and if they're not going to turn over the football on offense, they're going to be a tough out, a tough team to beat. And boy, the NFC with the Cowboys, yeah. Niners, and Eagles, oh boy, hey, that man. is... Those are three great teams. Added to that, the NFC East is 7-1 and one so far. Yeah, the yeah. NFC East is 7-1 yeah. right now. Ty has a question for you. Shefty, do you have any update or any information on uh, David Bakhtiari? Like, I, I guess he, he wasn't hurt, but, you know, he kind of hasn't been practicing as much during the week, and then all of a sudden right. he just doesn't play on Sunday. I don't know if that's because of the turf or if he's actually hurt. <laughs> are we expecting him to just not A play? messy? It's a messy situation? Like, it's allegedly, been. Methy yeah, said he wasn't. Yeah. But then Methy came out and was like, I'm playing on. Yo never said yeah, that. Yeah, I, thought he I never don't speak said Spanish. That. Yeah, exactly. You get it. Yeah. You get it. But. Um, but yeah, like, and then he just didn't play. And I know he was very vocal about the Rodgers stuff and hey, we need to get all the uh all the fields in the NFL to be natural grass, but like right. Packers, you know, two of their divisional opponents don't have natural grass. Like, is he just not gonna play on turf? Is he actually hurt? Like what the hell's going on there? And also, uh, is Aaron Jones going to miss extended time? Do you know? Because the Packers are a hell of a lot different when he doesn't play. Yeah, well, clearly. And first of all, in regards to Bakhtiari, that I would say this, that during training camp, he said that that was the best his knee had felt in a long time. You know, we saw him in Cincinnati, and he, he was, like, relieved and overjoyed to be feeling as good as he was. But – those knees have given him problems, and I don't think it was an issue of him. they're playing on turf or not play. I think he just basically had some sort of flare-up that prevented him from going yesterday in a game in which they never were going to play Aaron Jones last week. Like, just telling you, last week the Falcons thought Aaron Jones wouldn't play early in the week. They, they were like, he's, he's not going to play in this game, and Aaron Jones never practiced, didn't step foot on the practice field. Christian Watson got on the practice field later in the week, which tells me, that he's trending the right way. We might get Christian Watson back, get to see how it goes with Jones this week. But that's a very conservative training staff. Bakhtiari didn't feel right. Jones never had a chance this week. Watson is progressing the right way. And let's see where they all land out this week 
with practice on Wednesday. It's been two years, right, for Buck? Yeah. Two yeah. football seasons now it's happened? You know, the, the guy when he plays is so good. Dominant. So good. But but he, but he's yeah, had a lot of issues, and it just seems like – he can't. He can't shake it off. And obviously, there seems like there was. I sent him a message last week. He didn't respond. So I don't know. Maybe that's me. Maybe he wasn't feeling well. Maybe I want. He lose wants me to lose number. his number two. I don't know. Lose my number, <laughs> lose my number bro. What a, yeah. what a response. I have used that to somebody though. I just want after Yo. learning that that is as hysterical of a response as it was to you. And you know, I think. Have you guys mended fences? Have you? Yeah, I'm, I'm never, I haven't seen him. I was out at the gym. Ah, so I said, no. Yeah, I got oh, it, got it. We don't have to go any further. Hey, hey, Pat, let me say this. For the record, I got no offense to mend. I got no issues. It, it, your, it's your guy, not me. Whoa, I got whoa, no hey, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, easy. Hey, Tone has a question for you about a big. Hey, yeah. this one's huge when you're talking about full circle uh -huh. and zoom out a little bit on the whole season. Yeah, Shefty, uh, Bengals fans can't be feeling great about the 0-2 start. they got to be feeling yeah. even worse that Joe Burrow came up limping uh, in that game and re-aggravated the calf potentially. What, uh, what do you know about Joe Burrow and him going forward with that injury? But he tweaked it yesterday, and obviously he has not looked right the last two weeks. Obviously it impacted him and was a factor in the opener and looked like it was again yesterday. And, and if he came out of that game and he didn't feel great there, you know, I think it's fair to wonder, is he going to be ready for a week from Monday night against the Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams, Rams offense that seems to have just kind of been unbelievable this season. Bengals, Rams next Monday night. Um, let's see how the cap responds this week. It's not an ideal situation. I would have thought by opening day it would have been better, wouldn't have been an issue, but clearly he he and they just have not looked right through two games of the season. Now, saying that, they started 0-2 last year, I believe, and Joe Burrow was like, everybody relax, we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be time and to simil like utter a similar message this week. Relax. Right? Yeah. I don't, that was a bad limp. Yeah, yeah very. Bad. Hey, that looked afterwards, after the game, that looked very, hey, we're pulling for you, Joe. Yeah, there we go. Ominous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was it? What'd you say? Uh, ominous. Yeah. Oh, it was a little ominous. Very Truly. Ominous. <laughs> I don't know if that would have been a word that I would have ever used in that particular situation, but that's why we're lucky to have you, Shefty. Yeah. Hey, Michigan. we appreciate you, Shefty. Darius has a question for you about, is there a seat getting hot whoa, already? Whoa, whoa, what? Whoa, whoa. Shefty, got to go back out there to L.A. Brandon Staley, Chargers, 0-2 start. Ooh. You look at Herbert, obviously he's been fantastic. Obviously the beginning of this year and last year. Is that, is that seat getting hot out there? Well, listen, I, I first of all, there are all these people on social media talking about how he bristled about the question with the jab. I, I watched it. I thought he handled it rather diplomatically. Like people are bringing up last year, and he's on to this year. Um, that, that was my take on But to me – there were a lot of people surprised last year that the Chargers didn't make a move after that playoff game. They stood by him. Uh, let's just see. They, they have a talented oh! 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 Hey, your eyes. I've never seen your eyes go that far into your brain to figure out how not to say anything. Well, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> that. Phone exactly. buzzing. I'm trying to think that's back. Okay. How do I answer this without all of a sudden, you know, it's, I know it. I know if I say a certain thing a certain way, it's going to be come out not the way I want. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, hey, Foxy kept you on that wide shot. Too. Yeah, there was no escape. It was just you sitting in there. I mean, you were out on an island. Got him. I, I, let me say this. I'm never a fan about talking about coaches on the hot seat two weeks into the season. I'm just, it's just not something that's great. So no matter what you say, it's going to come out the wrong way. Here's the bottom line. The Chargers need to play better or everybody's going to get reviewed, right? Okay. That's fair. Well, right, that's very fair. There that's go. very fair. Well. Justin Herbert just got a massive deal. Yeah, he's, he's not they're getting keeping him. <laughs> they're keeping him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shefty, anything for tonight? We need to think about two games. Let's go. ESPN's about to have a big one. Hell yeah. Doubleheader should be fantastic. A lot of wide receiver injuries in question marks. Deontay Johnson out for Pittsburgh. I won't be surprised if Amari Cooper doesn't play. Looks like DJ Shark. He'll be back for the Carolina Panthers. Don't think we'll we'll see Kendry Miller for the New Orleans Saints tonight. So some injury questions in relation to the doubleheader tonight. But, hey, two straight weeks, two doubleheaders. Doubleheader this week, doubleheader next week for our team, Pat, our team. That's right. Our team has a new intro, too, with uh, Chris Stapleton and Snoop Dogg. Ooh, oh, yeah. Sounds, yeah. The early teaser that they let loose, uh, 30 seconds, sounds really good. It's Phil Collins. Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. Coming in the air tonight. Uh oh. Pat. Oh, no. 
This is what you get. This is what you get at a hotel in Bristol. Okay, well, I'm well, telling you. Our singing yeah. obviously just set off some <laughs> yeah. alarms. Yeah. Let them know we got that fire for the rest of the day if they need it. Be I'm safe. in trouble. No. Hey. Brandon Staley did not like my answer. <laughs> That's a hot seat. It's all the way from L.A. to Bristol. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Yeah, yeah. Schefter. That was awesome. That's, hey, we hope you're okay, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get, get out of that get building. Out of there. What do you think you wanted to say? Get out of that building, Schefter. Get, get out of that get building. Out of there. Yeah. Run, Schefter. Run. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to say, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're thinking about it. They're pissed at Sh I think. I, I, Staley. That's what it felt like. Foxy, you leaving him out there, too, was awesome. Yeah, you got hey, him. he's yeah. a pro. I got to do what I got to do. He's staring right at that camera, and it's just him. And he's like, well, normally, I'd at least have an out by now. Joke. But I, uh, <laughs> uh like, yeah, I want to fart him, I think. They stink. What do you want? Somebody save me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are well, they uh, one of those organizations, like, uh, hey, yeah. yeah, they don't want to pay a coach who's not coaching. There's a lot of stories about that whole aspect of the Chargers over the last couple of years yeah. with a disgruntled family member that got mm. out. We're not going to bring that back to light because that seemed to be a little personal. That was weird. Yeah, That was a very, very interesting situation. So we learned a little bit about tonight. A lot of wide receivers out, he said. But what do you say about Amari Cooper? I didn't hear what he said. He, he, might, not he might also be out. Deontay, we know, is out uh, with quad hamstring. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he went down. He's out for a few weeks. Amari, I didn't know about. So that's, you know, that's at least that's one positive. Kendra Miller. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about just your game. I respect that. There's two of them. Okay, let's. Let's maybe have a little respect for Saints and Panthers. Yeah. No, I actually told you earlier, I said there's only one game tonight, only the 7 o'clock one. Don't worry about the 8-15 one. What, you scared to death that the Cleveland Browns are about to come run wild in Akersher, pal? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Wow. Even that's though, noted Pittsburgh. Look at his thing. Look at his thing. That's a, that's a Steelers helmet that he will. I told you last week the optimism didn't work. Let's be as pessimistic as possible. There's no Conklin. TJ Watts going to have five sacks. Tonight. Okay, he had three last week, and they lost by 70. So that oh, was cool. Yeah. Oh, so that's the state of Steelers. little overreaction Monday here. They haven't even had their game yet. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's kind of extended an extra day of the week, so congrats to them. How do you think tonight goes Saints-Panthers? Spread is three. Saints favored by three on the road. Uh, Derek Carr in that offense looked good. Mm -hmm. I, I really – I enjoyed watching what Derek Carr was cooking, especially with that video with Jameis Winston coming in going, yes. <laughs> Whenever he was talking about throwing the deep ball again, feels like vibes are high. The defense flies around. And Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers, I'm intrigued to see if they're able, you know, to really take a step now. Mm -hmm. Week one to week two, they always say, is your biggest development, especially in the NFL for teams. Now, is it for rookies? I'm not 100% sure. How do you think the night goes? you think Bryce Young can fare against this Saints defense Ooh. that is very good, yeah. very good? Very good. Very good. And the Saints team had a tough test week one um, against Tennessee. Uh, I think they look better this week against that defense. J.C. Horn, Carolina's top corner, will be out. Um, so I, I got the Saints winning this one and covering this one. Okay, let's look at the NFC South real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're on a spotlight tonight, obviously, mm -hmm. as is the AFC North. Mm -hmm. the, don't look now. Atlanta Falcons 2-0. Mm -hmm. Don't look now. B. John Robinson for oh, the Atlanta Falcons. He's unbelievable. Game changer. So good. Don't look now. Artie Smith has got this team. Buzz it. Yeah. Now, I know the Packers uh, did their thing for three quarters and then chose not to do it anymore, and Bakhtiari was not playing, which is certainly a shame whenever you have your highest-paid guy on an offensive line that needs, you know, to help a new quarterback in an offense that likes to run the rock a lot and then in the fourth quarter not able to do it with A.J. I mean, there's a lot of things around the Bakhtiari not playing sure. that is certainly – something they've been dealing with over the last couple of years. But let's not just turn this away from the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. Atlanta Falcons last year had schemes mm -hmm. and had teams. They had a game in which we saw them perform like good. Like last year, every single game, there was moments where it was like, good team, good team, good team. For whatever reason, just not able to get the wins. We saw a quarterback with Marcus Mariota. Literally, they're recording. There was like four games he was playing in where it was one play at the end it was the reason they lost. So I think everybody bought into Artie Smith and the culture they were uh, kind of building. And now another year in there, the addition of B. John Robinson, the defense doing what the defense does. And Young Wei Koo is always going to make a yep. kick whenever he has to do it. The Atlanta Falcons sneaky NFC South team. Yeah. And it's hard not to pick them right now just because of how Bijan has looked and he's so electrifying and our belief in the mustache that is Artie Smith. Saints also some dogs. We'll see that tonight against the Panthers. But this team's awesome. Yeah. The Falcons are an awesome team to watch play football. Yeah, and Smash Mouth. Like, watching them play against the Packers was sweet, and they stuck to it. Like, yep. that was the one thing I thought once the Packers got up and the Falcons had to stop running the ball and they, they'd have to spin it around with Ritter, they might, yeah. you know, get in a little trouble. But they just stuck to the run, and it was great. I don't know if how, how you feel about the Bucks, though. 
But Ooh. like with Mike with how Ritter played ball. at at quarterback, and then you look at the Bucks and how Baker played, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but I <laughs> I do lean Baker in the Bucks because he's been playing well and the weapons that they have on both sides of the ball. People are gonna have to stay healthy at key positions on the offense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Kind of the same old story because they have so many great weapons. Yeah. But if you lose a couple of them, all of a sudden the offense looks different. Yeah. But Baker Mayfield is a guy. Yeah. Yes. Now Baker Mayfield is not just slinging it, but he's also leading this team. It feels mm-hmm. like they've rallied around him after his departure from Cleveland, then in Carolina, quick exit, then in L.A., it was such a short amount of time. Him coming into camp, winning over the boys, and then them winning and performing the way they are, this is a great story change for old Baker Mayfield. And Mike Evans, we know that defense got dog. Mike Evans is, you know, playing out of his mind. I mean, he's had a Hall of Fame career. Every year he's going to give you 12, 13 touchdowns, 1,000 yards, regardless of who's that quarterback. Baker taking care of the football, making big-time plays, big-time throws. Shocked at, at their start for sure, but those Falcons, man, physical, physical team. We saw them on in the trenches uh, with AQ was up here showing that offensive line. Just physical. Like you said, even when you get behind, if you can stick to your identity, play that type of ball, Ritter keeps taking care of the ball, and then uh, make plays when you need it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, excited about that team. The NFC Both South teams, doesn't yeah. suck. No, no, not at all. It seems like it, it, isn't, it isn't a bunch of crop. Saints now, win. granted, <laughs> granted, Say it. the Buccaneers yep. played mm-hmm. against. Yep. Well, that team sucks. The by, far. Oh, by far the worst team that in the team NFL. Stinks. Yeah. Yeah. They stink. I don't want to say it because I love the city of Chicago. Blue it's collar city. city. Yeah. Yeah. Love the lake. Blue Second, collar city. NFL's city. better when they're good. Yeah. Too. Willis yeah. Tower. It's been a long time. Long time. Mm-hmm. Been a- I don't even. Re- I don't think I have memories of the times in which the NFL is better when the Chicago Bears are good. Early Jay record? Cutler, I guess, flying around. Yeah, yeah, doing an NFC oh, championship. Yeah. Or yeah. like of doing everything. I mean, just a couple years ago, I guess the double doink had him oh, knocked out of the playoffs, God. which was a blocked kick. Mitch. Mm, Nobody talks it? about that. It was a block. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking it was tipped. Where is Cody at nowadays? I don't know. Cody Parkey stayed at my house a couple nights whenever he was a rookie and he oh, was nice, in Indianapolis nice. cold. Eh? He's a nice boy. Yeah. A good time. Good boy. <laughs> He's a really <laughs> nice boy. That was a tough thing. But the Chicago Bears... <laughs> I mean, they oh, they're bad, bad. They're so bad at football. There was people <laughs> talking about, you know, them trading Justin Fields, you know, and keeping the number one overall pick and drafting a new quarterback. Yep. And, you know, we were even a part of the team that were like, the only good part of the Chicago Bears last year was when Justin Fields would run for his life and he'd be running all over the field. So we don't believe that you should move on from Justin Fields. You should keep him and draft or trade your draft pick. So they trade out of there. They keep Justin Fields. Now they won't run him. The nope. guy never runs. No. Sticks it throwing. And the uh, defense said Baker Mayfield chop him up yesterday. I mean, it is yeah. hard times up there in Chicago for yet another year. We and, did hold him to one score, though. Uh, keep that. Uh, well, I, I don't know if you're going to hold yourselves to one win this year. I mean, the Bears yeah. might have got worse. They did. Hey, first overall sounds pretty good. <laughs> Does it? You guys had it last year. Yeah. And yeah. what happened? Well, and especially we have like, two of them now. Us, I don't think they're trading out this year. Us having Eberflus on right before the season two, and the interview was, was awesome. awesome, and it was like, hey, the Bears might have some. <laughs> the Bears, might, and they just clearly don't. They are so bad. And, it, I mean, you know, in, for them to be in my division, I love it. But, God, I – Bears fans, I, I cannot imagine what it's uh, what it's like waking up on Monday mornings. Bears fans, we hurt with you, okay? Yeah. Colts had number four overall That's pick. Right. I think we're going to be better. You guys don't seem to be getting any better. Hopefully the show will on the other side of this three-minute break. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Obviously, this is a conversation starter for everybody when they're talking about the dynasty. And there's still Raiders fans that are pissed off about this. Here's the game plan. Go out there in the middle of a snowstorm and make a kick that you're not supposed to make at all from 45 yards. This is the Patriots season on the line. Do you remember this moment right here in your head? Were you scared to death? Were you fucking pumped? I would say I was probably more scared to death as I'm watching the tuck rule review and realizing, holy shit, we get the ball back. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's coming all down to you, man. This will be a 45-yard attempt. That's Vinatieri's luck from this distance of late. Once I got out on the field, I really had three thoughts. First and foremost, try to attack the ball, but stay light on your feet. Just like anybody, you're running on ice. If your cleats don't stick, you're falling on the ground, and then the ball's going to end up hitting your center right in the back of the head. I wasn't thinking about missing for the last five, if that's truly what was going on. For me, it was all about, hey, you know, these guys aren't going to be able to get a good rush. Get it straight and get it above the line of scrimmage. And thank goodness, as it left, and I saw that they didn't block it, then it was all about i don't know if it's going to have enough distance in this snow you know let's hope for the best and and i really didn't know until the the referees at the back of the end zone raised their hands i couldn't really see it couldn't tell if it was good or not 
Hell honest. yeah, because it's a snow globe. What a kick. What a moment. Obviously, that would go on to launch a dynasty that the NFL will never see again Hell yeah. or before. What a kick. What a moment. Here's an overtime. You got to make another one. Substantially easier kick. Not just because of the distance, but we called a timeout. We cleaned a bunch of ground. This is the one time that a coach actually icing me probably benefited us, right? Because it gave my offensive lineman with the big size 16 cleats to get out there and move a little bit more ground. And, you know, not to say a game winner is ever easy, but this one compared to the one uh, quarter before that was substantially different. So you're coming out here sighing a little bit of relief. Oh, thank God. I can see the ground. <laughs> I'm not going to fall. Right. We've right. already exactly. done this. Exactly. This is no problem. Tied. And then you murder that ball dead center. And then obviously in the Super Bowl, you have like a 49-yarder that you hit at the top of the upright. Couldn't have been a better ball, I don't think. You hit it cleaner. You have something inside of you, okay, that not a lot of people have. And Joe Burrow seemingly is a guy that has it. What is that? I would love to tell you that I was born with or I developed developed the ability to, you know, be a clutch under pressure. I do think that there are certain people that are born with the want or the ability to say Michael Jordan, you know, Tiger Woods, Mariano Rivera. These guys are, or, and ladies, are the type of people that go, I want the game coming down to me. I want to be the reason, LeBron, you know, I want to be the reason why we win or lose. I was kind of that same person, you know, playing soccer as center midfield and in baseball, I either wanted a pitch or catch. I leave it there. I know what you're thinking. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I know you no, anyway no. <laughs> but I, just, I i always wanted to you know be in the middle of the game and be the reason why so once i get to football obviously 59 minutes of the game i'm standing on the side the following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world it is meant to be comedic informative the opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers their boss or espn there may be some cuss words because that's how Cubans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, September 18th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Is happening. We got two games tonight Woo. to watch. One on ESPN, the Saints and the Panthers, and one on ABC, the Browns and the Steelers. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a magical way to wrap up this week two of the NFL slate. Talking about football, though, you can't not mention Saturday's college football slate was beautiful. Yeah, great work. Shout out to college football. Shout out to going eight and one. On the picks at the end of game day. Oh, 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 who's yeah. seeing the board pretty good? good? Uh, who's whoa. seeing the board pretty good? This guy had no Come ball. Come on. Oh. Super Dodge was on like three hours of sleep. This guy doesn't know ball. No big deal. Toxic What's Table up? is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And nine year NFL vet, host of Everything DB and the Man to Man podcast and NFL matchup, which is the hottest show. On multiple platforms, <laughs> yep. ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Yeah, yeah. more people should watch that show. They should. Yeah, should. I agree. If it's ever, a good show. It's yeah. great. If every te um, team should watch the show, if the Patriots watched, they would have won. There's the show. We're watching it right now. Boom. Oh, teams. Darius watch. is the one in the middle. Teams. <laughs> Yeah. Clean fit. That's Darius That's right there right. in the middle. Yep. There he is. Yeah. Right there, crushing it. We appreciate you, D-Butt. appreciate Those you are two war heroes, too, next to him. Let's not forget about that. D-Butt travels a lot. a lot for yeah. this whole thing, so we appreciate you starting your mm -hmm. season with us, pal. You're the best. Joining us now from an attic in Ohio is a man who is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a man who is the current president of Ohio, father of 10, COVID survivor, A.J. Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks great. Ooh, Here we go. Wow. Doing, doing all right? Wow. Well, you did some work this weekend on uh, maybe your face, maybe the lighting, maybe the camera, whatever it was. <laughs> you're back. It feels like you are yeah. back back. Don't you feel it? I don't know. It all looks the same, kind of gloomy, dark, not centered on my end. But as long as it's going, the feet is good, I'm, I'm cool. Whatever okay. We well, you look great. You need yeah. to know. You're glowing. Yeah. So good. You're glowing. What were your That's thoughts on Colorado before we dive into everything that happened since then? That was an amazing time out there. 
I mean, yeah, just being out there, obviously, everything we got to do with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, he was, he, I guess he exceeded all expectations uh, he could yeah. have had for uh, that. Yeah. 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 You had a pretty good weekend with the guy. Obviously, you got to, uh, got him in SmackDown. I mean, yeah, what a, what a pretty uh, eventful weekend I feel like you had. I'm just lucky that I was able to be a part of the whole Friday situation. It was awesome. No, we all did. We all had a great weekend. Now, I did a couple more things, but it was fantastic. Thank you to Colorado for the hospitality. Yeah, yeah. They loved you AJ out there, too. Huh? The intro. They loved AJ out there. Yes, there was AJ Hawk tra- chants happening everywhere. Yeah. yeah, We appreciate everybody for joining us on those Friday shows. We appreciate I mean, the lineup we had was pretty absurd. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely absurd. The Rock coming in in the middle of the day. Dude, so hilarious. Before Aaron, you almost forget about the Aaron conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't forget about the Aaron conversation because no. he like broke so much news because yeah. AJ was like, are you talking about coming back this season? AJ was like Barbara Walters. Yeah, he, was and, and he was like, and Aaron was like, we're not putting any timetables on this whole thing. And it was like, oh, it sounds like you're talking about. And then all of a sudden, the story of the weekend was Aaron Rodgers thinks he's going to be able to make it back by the mm-hmm. postseason. He's like, you know where that came from? The big, dumb Ohio brain yeah. <laughs> right here. How about it? I don't think any of us would have pressed that. Well, none of us would have pressed that. He left it out there. He threw it out there, basically, like, oh, you never know. Like, he, he was saying, like, I'm superhuman. I can heal everything and do whatever I want. And I said, all right. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he said, you're right. Is that what he said? Well, word for word. I mean, I, 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 I respect human. it. He's like, hey, don't put your restrictions on me. I don't view myself. You know, you you can't put a timetable on my return. So yeah, I respect it. No, I loved it because I was a little boozed up at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, a little boozed up. Yeah, I was, yeah. was hammered, drunk during the Rogers interview. I want I want to kick soccer balls with the women's soccer team out there, ranked twenty <laughs> second. Yeah, then cool. they go beat Denver, probably ranked higher. They're a bunch of dogs. Let's go. They're a great team. I want to go. I want to go kick some soccer balls with them. You know, because they put a challenge. Boy, I was boozed up. Yeah. Buddy, I saw buddy, a couple I, balls. I was pretty boozed up. I saw a couple balls. We're trying to aim for the crossbar of a, a soccer net. It was like, there's no shot this is happening. <laughs> yeah. And then, I, you know, I break a sweat in there because I'm naturally a sweater. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, you want to go down to SmackDown, open the show, and then uh, be in the ring with The Rock whenever he does this thing? Uh, oh. I guess. Yeah. Close. Yeah. 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 I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that real? It's like, well, okay. Got there 534 local time. Okay, because traffic from Boulder to Denver was not great. It's far drive. Yeah. Show starts six local time. So yeah. a lot of people talking about how long did everything come together? It's like real quick. We're talking everything came together real, real yeah. quick. What an honor to be back there. Honestly. Unreal. Absolute honor to be back. Great to see everybody. I thank them mightily for the opportunity to do that. And then this pop right here. I don't know if we have sound. Right here. Look at that shit. Uh, absurd. That's Attitude Era. That's way back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Rock hadn't been back in four years. Unbelievable. And so this, loud. This Denver crowd was loud to begin with. Man. Like, when I went out there, uh-huh. I heard them. I'm like, oh, this is a louder crowd yeah, big than normally is. Oh. And then all of a sudden, not only is it an active and loud crowd, then you got the <laughs> with his uh, social media guy going through the background. <laughs> yeah. Great shot right there. What a night, dude. I'm so thankful that I was even asked to be a part of that. It was so cool to see everybody, though. You know, and then watching The Rock, man, just in there, you watch like his face. Like when I said it's a two hour show, and he looks at me, The Rock knows it's a two hour show. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, being like, a part of the Cena Rock hug, too. That was pretty yeah. awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. They were like, uh, Hey, we're gonna we're gonna have you guys walk out here. Obviously, this is literally on our way out. They're like, Can we get a shot of you guys walking out? And then obviously, we'll have uh, Cena in there as well. I was like, You don't need to have me in here. You know, I was like, I do not. Listen, I understand the game here. Okay, there is no reason for me to be here. I appreciate it. They're like, no, no, I need you there. Okay, you said it, and then just, yeah, absolutely. So then I'm standing there just like everybody else watching these two. I'm like, are these two about to set up for a WrestleMania run right now? Oh. Like, is this about to be uh, – I didn't know if it was about to be a work or not. And then, obviously, I see you smiling. Yeah. And the whole mm-hmm. thing. It was like, cool. It was – Electrifying. I heard. I heard there's a new number one John Cena fan in the office. That's just rumor going around. Who's that? Foxy? No. Let's, let's just pump the brakes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, let's, yeah. let's just pump the brakes on new Shot number calls. one. But I will say, you know, <laughs> I will say, I, I I might take a step or two back. <laughs> As far as what I have said in the past <laughs> about our good friend John Cena, what? Gallagher's be so really good. At you. Yeah, and The Rock as well, because I have said some you terribly disparaging things. Are you dinner about with the, the Rock on Friday? Think about that. We we got a steaks or Con- of course, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, of yeah. course, big one. But Connor's sitting at a table across from the rock mm-hmm. and i'm just like <laughs> taking it all in i'm like what a life this kid is living right now yeah we're in a very nice place i had a tank top on he had a i think a tiger t-shirt tiger, on. yep but he did the people's elbow 
Yeah, that ring yeah. with the rock. Like was that, so was, that was that was every person probably aged probably twenty eight to probably forty something that lived that through that era. That was like the moment, man. That was not. Yeah, thank you. That yeah, was insane. yeah, it was insane. Yeah, that's why whenever it was all kind of pitched to me, they were like, hey, "Is it alright if you?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll do that. And I saw some people like, man. You get to be everywhere and everything. It's like, yeah. And I don't know how I'm supposed to say no to any of this stuff. Bingo. I, I don't know how you're supposed to. You know what I mean? Like, we used to have it on the old open. Like, people always say, you got to be smart with your money. You got to be smart with the money. It's like, for when you first get money or something and you see something you definitely want and you can certainly afford it, it's like really hard not to just be like, give me that. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> I want it. Yeah, I, I am going to do that. It's like, for me now, like, people are like, hey, what, do you want to? And they like literally just draw up like my dream thing. You want to do that? I'm like, yeah, I think I have to do that. And it's like, that was Friday. And the WWE has seemingly done that for me more than any other group of humans on earth. So I appreciate the hell out of all of them over there. You guys have got a good operation going over there. Yeah. I like to cut your guys' gym. That's mm -hmm. right. And the fact that they even let me, like, I could have got it. They, they told me to stay in the ring. Like, hey, stay in the ring all the time. I'm like, I don't think I should be in there. You know, like, we got a thing happening here. Like, stay in the ring. And then, you know, after, we'll potentially work a little bit. And I'm like... Okay, so I'm, am I doing, am I punting when I'm at leg drop? What am I, like, people's elbow? No, no. Oh, okay. Whoa. You know, like people's elbow. Okay. All right, sweet. So everything's, like, being told to me, and I'm like. Nuts. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I could probably yeah. figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Once again, don't have to happen, though. Every time they pitch something, I'm like, all good. Like, I can just hang out and watch their, no, no, need It's like, thank you for all that. Let's get back to some football, AJ, because we haven't heard your thoughts. At the beginning of the show, I said, hey, if there was a Super Bowl on Wednesday, I'm not saying this is who's going to be in the Super Bowl, because it's very hard to project that type of thing this early in the season. We have no idea who the football gods are going to bless with injuries and fortune of the bounce of a ball and everything like that. It's very hard. But if there was supposed to be a Super Bowl on Wednesday, I would have the Dolphins out of the AFC, and I would have the Dallas Cowboys out of the NFC. And I don't think I'm the only one. Obviously, this is an easy take. You agree with this entire thing? These two teams have seemingly come out hotter than everybody else. Is it sustainable in your eyes, A.J. Hawk? Yeah, I mean, why not? It, it should be sustainable. Now, it takes a lot for that to happen. You need to obviously get very lucky with injuries. You can't have any injuries to key positions, especially, I think, O-line. You want to protect your quarterbacks. But, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a sustainable thing. But do you feel like, okay, do you feel like the Dolphins can continue this for 17 games? I'm not saying they're going undefeated. But they can continue and, you know, win the majority of their games playing like they are now. Well, the thing about it is, like, Tyreek Hill is one of these Lambos, Ferraris, but he's also durable. This guy has somehow mm -hmm. managed to remain healthy. And we're talking about normally muscles. When you're the fastest, most explosive guy on the field, yeah. which is Tyreek Hill, every single time he steps on a field. And I know the commentators are talking about a lot of conversation about who's the fastest guy on the team. We all know who the fastest guy on the team is. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the fact that the guys in the workouts and the guys in the gym and the locker room think they're faster than Tyreek Hill. It's like the guy's the fastest human that's ever been on a football field. I think that is very clear when you see him out there. But the way McDaniel uh, draws up plays for him to be forced to be open pretty much is another weapon. And then you think about Tua with what Tua's been able to do, putting balls literally in keyholes yeah. to different guys. And then the emergence of Waddle over yesterday, not only just – Last season, he was great, but yesterday he got into it in a big fashion. Mostert popped off a massive 80-yard run. It's like, this team, I think, it is sustainable if they remain healthy. And, like, Tyreek Hill has remained healthy. Tua, yeah. we're thinking with the new jujitsu ability yeah. to roll through whiplash hits, which I think Anthony Richardson will hopefully be taking the same type of rolling lessons in jujitsu. It's like, I think Miami is sustainable. I, I believe yeah. it is sustainable, Darius. Butler. I mean, offensively, they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. I think the, the Patriots had a pretty good game plan early on to make them kind of mm -hmm. go their long, hard way, make them be patient. But the quickness that uh, Tua gets the ball out of his hands, the motions, the pre-snap shifts and all that. And then his defense, you only expect him to get better as, as Vic Fangio kind of gets um, – uh, comf more comfortable with his personnel. Ramsey's going to enter the lineup at oh, some yeah. point. Tua's been kind of clean all year, and Armstead's not even there yet. Their best left tackle. So, I mean, <laughs> hey, we feel good down there. Oh, we are. Don't forget about Davinke. Right Davinke might have been the best player on Von the field Ginkle. last yeah. 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 He was Ginkle. unbelievable. Flying around. Wilkins also, right? I mean, that guy oh, yeah. didn't get a contract, but he said, all right, mm -hmm. it didn't work. I'm going to still play and play dominant. Gumpy, what normally happens in this situation? You guys just fall apart what is it is, there, I, is optimism high down there in Miami that it's good this is the year it is different than what it has been I think because of the way they won last night with Mostert running for like 127 like they won in a way like 
Tua is not going to be able to throw for 466 every game. Winning like they did last night, their defense played where, way better. It was pretty impressive, to be honest. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, I think the biggest thing just watching it as like with all the questions before with the Dolphins is, is Tua going to be able to stay healthy? And I think it's absolutely yes. Because, I mean, Gummy just mentioned it. They beat us running the ball, and that was much different than week one. But also a huge question mark going into the season was the O-line. And look at that. Like that's a, That's unbelievably blocked. It's perfect. He goes untouched 40 yards into the end zone. Like if they can do this and Tua's getting the ball out quick because it's not as if it's like last year where he's hanging on to it waiting for people to be open like the schemes that they're running that little you know motion out into a wheel with a flat and then Tyreek Hill sitting down like everything feels perfect for the Dolphins and Tua's really not getting touched yeah so like this play here this is Tyreek Hill's first reception it's like with 530 left in the first quarter he hadn't really had it yet they send this motion out and we got the clip uh, a little bit late in the play so you're just gonna have to trust us that he sent him in motion and it's like Second and four right there. Second and three pretty much actually in reality, even though the graphic's wrong. And they sent him out there, and it's like, how do you how do you stop that? Like, how do you not look at the motion just a little bit? And then all of a sudden, Tyreek is open. Like, you have to look. Yeah. You have the yeah. play is like per it's unstoppable almost if you have a guy like Tyreek Hill who can run a four one forty seemingly every single week. Yeah, and it's on Judon right there to kind of sink back in that window. Right. But I mean that's obviously that's a pass rusher, so he's not as comfortable in coverage. And like I mean, you just find the hole right there. And oh. Tua just quick play action, dump it off to him. If Judon goes straight back, it may make it a little tougher. But I mean it's tough. When you get motions in general, but especially when uh-huh. you're really quick and there's no communication, so Whatever you talked about that week in the meeting rooms, that's what you got to execute. If Judon sinks there, they just said 81 in the flat. Yeah, big yeah. Yeah. And like, they ran another one. to stop it. You can't defend it. It's like it's it's free yards right there, and that's the mm-hmm. thing. The, they motion Tyreek Hill across the formation to get him on an outside backer. That's a guy that's generally a pass rusher, of course. Like it's McDaniel's – he's doing some special things with this offense. And you know where else with that motion? And I think we're talking about the same exact play where he went on motion from the left to right. They do it a lot. And obviously Andy yep. Reid did it a bunch of times as well with Tyreek. He's running mm-hmm. 14 miles a game, and he's never tired, and he somehow never gets hurt, and he always has that. <laughs> yeah. He is different, dude. This, this dude is just a different – not everybody has the cardio to be able to do what he's doing. Not everybody has the ability to stay healthy. Like, mm-hmm. muscles go whenever you're running and a he, bunch and get tired. No body fat. And usually those guys – you have like soft injury, soft uh, soft tissue injuries. Rarely, you know, they stay healthy. But we don't want to do it. But it is—it's a compliment to him. It's something that we have to point out because other players that are built like him in the past haven't been able to maintain because your body's so wound up, so tight. It's like something's going to go have to, have to go at some point. But with what McDaniel uses, he put him in motion, and it's literally right as the ball is being snapped yes. too. So it's not only just that it's in motion; it's the timing of the motion. Whenever it comes to when the ball is being snapped, it's like defense is talking, and while you're talking, you're not looking at Tyreek. Tyreek's so fast, he's gone. Mm-hmm. Like it's. It's over. That's why whenever you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers offense tonight wow. and you see, you Makes know, what Matt sense. Canada chooses to do, or you see other teams that are kind of inept on the offensive side of the ball in this modern era of what football is, it's hard not to watch the Dolphins. Tyreek Hill's different. I completely understand. But the creativity that McDaniel uses to get him wide open is like never ending. And Andy Reid does this with the Chiefs, even though their offense seems to always be one that develops over a season. They never cover early. Mm-hmm. They never live up to the hype, but they seemingly always win. But it's like the creativity of the offensive play caller down in Miami, I think, is a massive asset, especially with what McDaniel's been able to do. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's easy to scoff at that, you know, and just say, like, oh, th- this guy, the way he schemes everything up, you know, I feel like we do that a lot with like new coaches when guys have success early. And I was one of the biggest detractors of Tua early on because he couldn't stay healthy. But like, it is very clear how much different he is with McDaniel than he. I mean, we saw a little bit of it last year, but like, he just always puts him in a position to to be successful and make the right read and then to to his credit like his processing his ability to just know where he needs to go with the football mm-hmm. right right away like he is almost always making the right decision and then obviously when you have guys like Waddle and Tyree Kill who can do this crazy stuff after the catch like it's it's tough not to look at them and be like who, I mean if if they can stay healthy like who can beat these guys yeah you think last week too like okay there's teams playing press and that's why you know they're able to throw the ball deep like if you told me the Patriots held Tyree Kill to 40 yards I would have thought that we 
one for sure, but they can beat you in different ways. Like that play we just showed where it's, you know, unstoppable, it's because we're playing zone because of Tyreek Hill because you can't play man-to-man against them. Yeah. So what do they do? They just hand the ball off, and then they just nickel and dime you up the field, and that's what they did consistently the entire night. And Tua has real chip on his shoulder. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Love, awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. It is awesome. I love every press conference seems to get a little bit more petty. Sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're talking a little bit more shit, Tua. Mm-hmm. Is. It's like, Tua, talk your shit. Yeah. It has been awesome to watch because where he has come from with the amount of conversations and how those conversations were about him to where he is now, he deserves the flowers. I hope the Miami Dolphins can keep it going because they're the greatest show on turf. Yeah. That's what it feels yeah. like. Oh, yeah. Yet again here in 2023, speaking of greatest show on turf, this man probably called all their games, and then he went on to call all the World Series. Then he went on to call what? basically probably the entire Stanley Cup, what? then the World Cup, what? and then he's been doing this basically since he's like 17 years old. Jeez. Absolute dog on a microphone calling a Monday Night Football game on ABC this evening as the Browns will travel to Pittsburgh as favorites for the first time since... 1989. 1989. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Joe Buck. Hey, Joe. Hey. Hey. How are we today, guys? AJ, is your mic on? For God's sake, say something. Breathe. (laughs) Joe. I'm here, Joe. Joe. Don't worry about it. I'm here. You don't get it, Joe. Joe, that's right. You're in Pittsburgh. Where part of the city are you in right now? Enjoying the sights? Uh, I did a little walk today. Uh, I saw PNC Park across the bridge. I actually walked on a bridge that was closed and got yelled at by some workers on the bridge. And the guy said, what are you, what are you, some kind of idiot? Well, how many, how many signs you need to see to, to, to know this thing's closed? I said, yeah. I'm not trying to ruin your morning, my friend. I'm sorry. I patted him on the back. We parted as friends. It was a nice hello uh, to my Monday in Pittsburgh. That's Pittsburgh. Uh, That's pretty much Pittsburgh in a nutshell. Happy to hear that you're there. Great week two Sunday slate. Now tonight, Browns-Steelers could be a great indicator of maybe – are the Browns – huh? Are the Browns at the top of the AFC right now alongside the Miami Dolphins, or is it just one week of dominance? What are your thoughts after talking to them behind the scenes? Uh, I, I think the defense is legit. Um, we're all waiting to see Deshaun Watson capture some of what he was doing at the end of his time, I guess, in 2020 in Houston. But he doesn't need to be that guy. He's got a great offensive line. He's got good receivers. He's got Chubb, uh, Mr. Chubb, as so Mike good. Tomlin called him. And his defense, I, I think their defense is still underrated. I mean, when you've got three corners that can all play – they get Juan Thornhill back, it seems, tonight to join with Grant Delpit. McLeod was good last week. And then they've added up front. Uh, Jim Schwartz is as big an offseason addition as any team made. I think they're loving playing for this guy. Uh, they've got some swag. I, I think tonight is an opportunity to let everybody know that this is not just the Ravens division in the AFC North. Hell, not just AFC North, the whole AFC. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah. What do you expect to see, uh, Joe, from this Steelers offense? You, you expect them to kind of have a bounce back game? I think it's opportunity, AJ, uh, for Kenny uh, to to have a good game. I, I hope so because he's a really likable guy. Uh, he finished great last year. He had a good preseason. I think it's a good reminder, though, for all of us to not put too much stock into what we see during the preseason. No, preseason uh, matters, Joe. It's a, it's a, it's a trap. And so the jury's out. I mean, he's got to do it again. Um, And, and I, I, I'd like to think he will, but they want to get back to what they do, which is run the football. They only attempted 10 rushes last week. They got behind so early They they were playing catch up on the 49ers and couldn't get over the hump. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a big deal not having his top receiver in Deontay Johnson on the outside. He may not be the most talented receiver, but I think he's their top receiver with uh, with Pickens being, I think, the most talented. You talk to the coordinators and the head coach, right, for every single game? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me about this Matt Canada guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know him at all. All I know is Pittsburghers hate him. That's all. The injuries hate this guy. The offense is boring. We're the only team not to put up 400 yards in the last three years, literally in the entire NFL. Yeah. Kenny Pickett was something special in the preseason. Now they're terrible. The offense is stale. We see people like McDaniel do things with Tyreek where it's like guaranteed completions, guaranteed yardages. We see it other, they just never have that. What is he like behind the scenes? What is he like as a human? Who is he? <laughs> Is he human? He's a great guy. Okay, uh, I'm happy to hear nice. that. All right, so it's never like, personal, Matt. Never yeah. personal. 
No, no, I, I think he's a good dude. He was he was at Indiana uh, just after I was. Our director, Derek Mobley's from Indiana. We talked Bloomington, Indiana. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I think he's he's frustrated, uh, obviously, with the way they started. Um, I, I think he's chalking this up as a one-off. He hopes for Kenny Pickett week one. Um, they did finish well last year. I mean, you have to give them and him credit for that. Uh, but now it's time to get back to that. Uh, so, you know, how good's the offensive line? How good's the left tackle? Is Pickens there every play? Um, I don't know. And and I think, you know, he's he's calling plays and I think still trying to figure out exactly what he has to use. But, I mean, yeah, I read the same stuff. that Everybody's on his neck here in Pittsburgh. And, you know, hopefully tonight will be a better night. I hope so for him because it sounds like he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. Like he's a great guy. We got to remember that. You got to remember people in Pittsburgh are potentially watching. He's, he's a person. He's, he's a, a person. Well, he's not going to call him plays I mean, is what yeah, they yeah, say. Good <laughs> that particular human probably going to make it sandwiches. We got to drop down from Haynes or Rudy's. <laughs> we do the whole thing. Yeah. But call him plays for the Pittsburgh Man, Steelers. He seems like a bad seems like a bad fit. Let's, what is Stefanski in them saying about T.J. Watt? Because last week, obviously, it doesn't get talked about because it was just a blowout. He has three sacks, two four fumbles who cares Steelers lose let's move on he's an alien and so is yeah. Miles Garrett so are the other teams talking about these two guys I assume as such you know I've got oh you can't see blurred, yeah. blurred out the background because I thought I would just look angelic uh you do show. you oh, do yeah. by the way you do. very very yeah. heavenly Biblical. yeah yeah absolutely but yeah thank you so much guys uh Dewan Jones <laughs> is is this fourth round pick mm -hmm. from Ohio State and uh, I, I said to uh, I said to Mike Tomlin when we talked to him, what kind of a night <laughs> is Dewan Jones, who's making his first NFL start, going to have uh, with T.J. Watt across from him? And he said they're not going to make the same mistake they made a couple of years ago on Monday night when they had this guy uh, James Hudson, who's kind of their swing tackle, uh, make a start. T.J. Watt had four sacks, okay. so Dewan Jones is going to have a lot of help. Uh, when when I think every time they snap the ball, T.J. Watt, as we know, is a game wrecker, and I they're not going to leave him on an island in his first NFL start taking on T.J. Watt. That's good to hear because some coaches will do that. <laughs> yeah. And then the internet's yeah. like, why are we expecting this guy to block T.J. Watt? And on the flip side, Miles Garrett was just like – in his T, JJ Watt, Watt, another Watt, what? described that as just being in the zone, having a feeling as if nobody could block you. If I was Miles Garrett, who can dunk at 6'4, 275, and everything he could do, I would feel like nobody could block me as well. What is Pittsburgh saying about Miles Garrett and how you stop him? Impossible, it seems like. He can go wherever and do whatever he wants. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's different than all these other guys. You know, Jim Schwartz coached Javon Curse. And, and, you know, when somebody has the nickname The Freak, they're obviously different because of the size, the bend, what they can do with their feet. You know, like Schwartz said, he can change direction like a defensive back, Miles Garrett. He can beat you with power. He can beat you with speed. He can come at you with power and change the speed. He can come at you with speed, change the power. Uh, Jim Schwartz said, of all the guys I've coached, Miles Garrett, with what he's seen since he got hired in January or February, I guess it was February, he has the chance to be on the top of the list of the guys he's ever had. So I, I mean, I, and, and by the way, you'll love this. If these guys don't celebrate after they make a defensive play, Hell yeah. Jim Schwartz counts it as a loaf. Mm. He wants them to go crazy after plays. This is a Cleveland defense that is going to be fun to watch all year. Yeah. Mm. Pittsburgh Steelers fans are pumped to hear that. Oh, yeah. Pumped to hear that. Go ahead, AJ. Joe, speaking with uh, some of the Cleveland coaches and players, do you sense is it any different than years uh, previous with Cleveland? I feel like there's a lot more optimism. I know we're early in the season, but people feel like, hey, they can maybe put this thing together. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. I mean, Stefanski went to the playoffs his first year. He was brought in to fix Baker Mayfield. And? They went through a couple of rough years. Yeah. What happened there? Uh, what, and what? he's 2-0 he's with the Bucs. Yeah, that's what that's what happened. Now. Yeah, you're right. Divert. He's two and zero with a buck. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. divert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got him next week, so I'm I'm playing nice, and I actually really like him. Uh, uh, yeah, I I think they do sense that you know Watson had no chance with the suspension being out of the building, coming in, hadn't played in basically two years, has six games. Um, we'll see. I mean, game one was not a statistical wow day for Deshaun Watson, but it was a a constant rain in Cleveland. I think we'll get a better sense tonight uh, when we talk to Deshaun. He feels like he's 
the leader that he needs to be and in charge of things. We'll just see tonight. What? Uh, you, what? You're, Pat, you look like you're ready to jump. Go. No, no, I'm excited to hear it. I'm just taking you it get in. A cramp? I'm just taking you it cramp in. cramping up? I'm taking in what you're saying, man. I'm taking in what you're saying. You know, he had a, you're, you're giving a lot of good gospel right there. You know, you're because my worry yeah. about Stefanski was they get to the playoffs, they win a playoff game against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh his first mm -hmm. year there, and then seemingly it all just <clears throat> from the inside. Odell Beckham Sr., not Odo Beckham Jr. Odo Beckham Sr. is putting together videos. He becomes an editor, mm -hmm. gets his son out of there. He's gone. Uh, Baker Mayfield getting no high fives from anybody down no. there. You know, Stefanski's like, yeah, he can't throw. We know he can't throw. Then next game against the Steelers, he has him throw 75 times yep. to kind of make him look bad. So it's like Stefanski, I think, has been judged mostly by us about everything that has kind of happened around having a pretty good team. Now it feels like it's his team, right? This feels like his group. This feels like the one that they think is going to go. That's kind of what I was taking in from you talking there. Yeah, I just – I think they have more pieces. They don't have to rely on one facet to carry them. They can win a game with their defense. They can win a game with their ground game. They can win a game, I think, time will tell – uh, if Watson gets back into form, he was completing passes at 70% his last year in Houston. They have Amari Cooper, who they think will play tonight. Whoa, 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 Shefty. Shefty said he didn't think he was going to play, I think. Wow. You're saying he thinks. Yeah, I read, that. I read that tweet. I'm just telling you what the fans <laughs> told us. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm, I I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe Stefanski didn't read Shefty's tweet. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch practice, Joe? Uh, no, I did not Sorry. watch practice for the Browns. No, we 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 get. I would require me traveling to Cleveland and and you don't and then to coming over here to Texas. Texas. I love my job, bro. I love my job, but that ain't happening, bro. You took. <laughs> As you take a sip of like tea, yeah, seemingly right, is how right. that would be described. I've got a cough. It's either this or like cough up a piece of my left lung as we're talking on national television. What do you do whenever you lose your voice in the middle of it? Are you a tea guy, coffee guy, any spray? Suck my thumb, cry, <laughs> uh, worry, get a steroid <laughs> shot, uh, whatever it takes. I've only lost it one time. I mean, I had the, the hair plug thing, you know, years of years ago. They look good. Wow. They look good. Great hair. They look real but good. I, I I went under and I came out talking like this. And I went for nine months sounding like I was dying. So this is nothing. This this is she this got is hair, nothing. but you lost I had your voice. A nerve issue. Yeah, see, I you know what? I said that to you're very much like McConaughey. I said that to McConaughey at an event, not to name drop, but it kind of fits in the story. Wow. And uh I, I said, you know, I was maybe poking around for a little inf information. He goes, uh, what happened to your voice there, Buckaroo? Whoa. And I said, well, I I said, uh, well, I went in for for hair transplants and I came out and I, now I sound like this. He goes, Well, so what you're saying is you <laughs> fixed your video and effed up your audio. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn good. Yeah. Pretty damn good. That guy's the best. Yep. Classic Muhammad. That guy is the absolute. We got to see him down at that Texas Alabama game, and he was Everything that they say he is. Yeah. He was awesome. He's intense, man. He he is intense. And if you're ever just having a casual, casual conversation with him and you use the word can't, he'll like stop you. What do you mean? We never use the word can't in our family. <laughs> you can. You can do it. There's there us. he is. Look at look at that. Here's a, yeah, one of the greatest catches I've ever seen with these two eyes happened four feet in front of us, and then Matthew McConaughey cut a promo pretty much. Right? Yeah, so it was good. it was awesome. How the hell how the hell did one concentrate worthy with you and AJ? <laughs> I mean, all uh, look at that. Look what he's looking at. And he caught the ball. But, hey, I listen, mean, my God. don't get it confused either. Josh the sheriff was a dog, yeah, too. He was. You know, he was radiating some good <laughs> yep. vibes yeah. from there. It was magnetic. Yeah. There. But he literally, that ball was a punt and he was running. And I think we all just assumed we were going to get the ball because it was going to hit the ground and bounce right into us. And when he tracked it, what an electrifying moment. Yep. And then up on a Today Show. They are yeah. talking about on the Today We're on the Today Show, Joe. Super famous. No big deal. Congrats. Thank you. Not, not drinking <laughs> Third tea. Third hour? Third hour? No. no. Second Come hour. On. Have a little respect, Joe. <laughs> we weren't drinking tea saying we're not traveling to Cleveland. <laughs> but, I mean, we were on the Today Show, which is beautiful. It's nothing. It's, uh, it could be any city. There's nothing to do. Don't take uh, it that way. Oh, well. Uh, too late. Well. It's the visiting team. It could be. 
the 49ers. It could be well, it doesn't matter. They yeah. they could be they could be in my backyard and I might not watch Brian. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Well, I'm happy we did clarify that because in my head it was just like okay. shot. Oh, he's talking about no, no, no. I don't want to yeah. go to Cleveland. My, my whole, my dad's family's from Cleveland. Of no. course. No, I want to go so. see the family. Jack's oh, Casino's up there, too. They give out money. No, they all hate me. They hate me because of the 2016 World Series. I've got, I've got oh, relatives yeah. who I'm sure have been on Twitter like, you suck. You're rooting for the cup. Schwarber, you love Schwarber, man. You love Schwarber. Yeah, we do. I know. I know how that goes. Well, hold on, though. Let's yeah. talk about that because that's been your life for a long time. Darius has a question for you. Yeah, 22 years now with you and Troy in the booth and, uh, you know, been the gold standard when it comes to that. A lot of eyes on you guys. How do you make that relationship stay, you know, stay good and, 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 and uh, you know, keep that juice in the booth on, on prime time? You know, we, I mean, we're truly your friends. You know, we're basically the same age. Uh, he works his ass off. He gets prepared. He prepares like a play by play guy in that his board by the time mine's jam packed with stuff, his is jam packed with stuff. I know he's never mailing it in. And from day one, he's known that I've had his back and, and I know vice versa. So, you know, it's a weird business. And, and I feel like you can tell when the play by play guy and the analyst don't really get along. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. the good. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is, you know, with the switch to ESPN, if it was fake and we didn't want to continue working together, he went and then I had to get out of my deal at Fox to get over there. So it wouldn't have happened. So we, we, it, it, the proof is in the fact that I jumped ship and came over here and I, I couldn't be happier uh, to join him and do Monday night football. Uh, it's so we, we truly like each other. Well, tonight's going to be a big one yep. in Pittsburgh. We hope you enjoy the hell out of yourself. We appreciate the fact you got your voice back. And also, we can't wait to see the brand new Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is good. Snoop. Uh, it's awesome. Ah, uh, it's all. We got Snoop, uh, Stapleton, our producer, Steve Ackles, and our music department just crushed it so it's a great way to come on the air every monday yeah I, did we know that there was a new one coming i don't think any of us knew did we know this no no we've been working on it over in the little side lab oh because wow. last week last week was monday night football yeah we went with another stapleton cut about uh white horse and aaron is not ready to ride off into the sunset just yet appropriate for an older quarterback coming to a new team mm. but now we're rolling starting tonight with in the air tonight covered by chris because we can feel it coming can't yeah, we? We oh, yeah. oh we oh, feel yeah. it coming huge especially tonight yeah. that afc wow. north it's gonna come big mm -hmm. it's gonna come strong mm -hmm. and it's coming tonight <laughs> We appreciate the hell out of you. Thanks, McCabe. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both video and audio fantastic. Joe Buck. Appreciate and Joe. Appreciate you, man. 22 years. Long That's a time. long time. It's a long time. Two decades. AJ, he said something in there. You can tell whenever the people hate each other. You certainly can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Can't you? Can, if you pay enough attention, you can kind of tell when there there may be a little friction in the booth. You, Matty you Ice. hear who was in his bag of... This weekend? Tony Romo. Oh, yeah. Tony Romo is all the way back. He was <laughs> right. he was doing a voiceover to Dan Quinn video in yeah, the booth, and that was when we said, Tony Romo is throwing 102 on the yep. paint again. Thank God. I love that he is just out there doing it, crushing it, freewheeling from the hip. It's what we do. We love Tony Romo on a microphone. That was the best ever. <laughs> like, I, I really don't know if I could ever watch. Like, I don't know how you can exceed that. That is the pinnacle of calling an NFL game, just being – in your bag, so deep, <laughs> just not caring about anything. And then he obviously crushes it. He knocks it out of the park. Here's what Ty Schmidt is talking about as Tony Romo voices over a Dan Quinn shot from the booth. We got no audio. Oh, okay. uh, well, the only okay. good part is do the we have audio. Wait, no, I think we did. Audio. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're just, right. Just got fixed. Yeah, you're 100% right. I did, did. I did watch it about a thousand times. I don't remember exactly what he <laughs> okay. said because I was laughing so hard just the entire time but he basically you know Dan Quinn's up there and he's got kind of you know reading body language you know yeah come on let's go he said something like that and then to you guys point about guys you know seemingly they're you know maybe not on the same page Nance without a hesitation is just like yeah sounds just like him and then goes right <laughs> on to <laughs> he was you know, again, they love each other. Nate they do. said that many well, times, yeah. but it seemed like they yesterday he's like, okay, you just got to, I'm going to give Tony the rock. I'm just going to let him get shots up. Tony Romo's got a beard going right now. Oh, it's good. good. I love everything about him, yeah. dude. Tony Romo, boy, what a story. You know, I assume we're going to experience similar things.
at the beginning, Tony Romo is the greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah. best to ever do it. This guy's the best of all time. <laughs> yeah. He's telling us what Tom Brady's going to do before Tom Brady does it. Yeah. This guy's smarter than Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. This guy is, mm-hmm. holy hell, our guy who appears to be like our uncle, who happens to be a freak athlete, though. You put him in a basketball game, he's unbelievable. Ping pong, outstanding. Golf. Obviously, football, good. Golf, this guy's a professional. This is a super athlete somehow yeah. in all of our uncle's bodies, pretty much. Yeah. His basic ass <laughs> uncle's body. This guy's here, gets in the booth. Relatable, funny, quick, energetic, calling out things. Holy hell, this guy's changing the game. They pay him $700 million <laughs> yeah. to call games, and Troy Aikman's like, wait a minute. All right, sweet, thank you. We will do <laughs> yeah. what he just did. Let's go ahead and move on. And then season two came around, Ooh. and everybody was like, what was it? We like this? No, yeah. we did not like this at all. Everybody turns on him on X. We're not talking about in the world. No. No, We're no. just talking about on the internet. Turns on him. And then it got to a point where it was so much like this that a lot of us oh, were like, yeah. no, no. You know what? I love this we guy. We love this guy. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he did not change at all. No. In any of these moments, whenever he first got into the booth mm-hmm. and everybody loved him, exact same guy, when everybody was seemingly turning on him quickly, loudly, he did not care. Stayed the exact same. And then now he's on the other side of it. Sa- Maybe the most Tony Romo yeah. Tony Romo yeah. has ever been right now. Whenever he did Dan Quinn thing, I find that admirable, and I will always be a big fan. Yeah. yeah, I love it. You could you could argue that the first year he was doing it, when everyone was saying he was so good, like he hated it, and now he's like actually having fun and enjoying it quite a bit. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. Al Michaels, friend of the program, like unbelievable. Do you believe in miracles? You know the <laughs> the benchmark call. That's the gold standard. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone will ever top what Tony Romo did yesterday. The only no, his hard that- count. His hard count. <laughs> see, that's good. It's good, but is it that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. You know, Romo kind of gives himself the opportunity to one up himself every single week, but I just don't. Should be know a recurring how- thing. Should be a recurring segment. He does. That's yeah, what-, uh, what breaking down, voicing over things. Yeah. yeah. Tony does the voiceover. I mean, that's the thing on the internet people do. Let's have Tony do it live during game. Fans? Doesn't just have to be coaches. No. No. Oh, yes. Anybody. Get a pre-record chain of gang, a fan. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Ch- guys working the chains. How is that still a thing in 2020? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of Great it. Great question. Mm-hmm. I can't take it anymore. Tell me. Today we're taking a stand. We are no longer allowing those chains to be an actual thing. Okay? Anti-chain gang. We can bring them out if we want to do a song and dance. Yep. Okay? And talk about it yeah. all. But we cannot have that being how we're deciding a first down in 2023 when they've told us openly there are chips inside the football. Right. Yep. Yep. There are chips in the football. Just do it. Just do it. What are we even talking about? Well, well, like not- tennis, right? What's it called in tennis? When, yeah. they, go, when they, they go to the bar? Eagle eye. Eagle eye, Couldn't they do that? Poo. Out. Yeah. Genius. That's awesome. That's the best review system in all yeah. sports. Nah, but remember, who told us it's Fugues? So, uh, I thought that was for soccer. It was Marty Fish, I think, said that, right? Yes, I don't know if it's Marty Fish. Or maybe McEnroe. McEnroe, Marty Fish, somebody in the tennis community that knows tennis a lot better than us said that, yeah, but there's a lot of questions on whether or not that's accurate. Everybody just treats it as gospel. It's like, of course there is. Yeah. Mm. Of course there's like conspiracies about like, nope, nope, there's no way that's accurate. My eyes saw it out of bounds. They put it in bounds. That thing can't be right. But everybody acts as if it's a hundred percenter. So if we were in a tennis community, I assume we would do the same thing. It's just like reviews. Yes. There's yeah. been some reviews that have happened where the whole world sees one thing and the people making the decision see the other thing. I don't know how that happens either. You know what I mean? Like how is that taking place? Week one, it was Saints, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Saints. Yeah, Derek Carr. Was, Derek Carr with the fumble, which would have changed touchdown. A lot That's of things in there. Yeah. It's like it's how cool. is that still happening? In but we blame the rest on the field, don't we? Don't we blame the rest on the field when really the ones making the decision are back in New York mm-hmm. telling them what the decision is. How often are they dropping into their ears too? You know, because we do what they do right though. They do the right thing sometimes when they know it's a quick deal. They they tell them, hey, no, we're good. It's a first down or whatever. They don't go take the whole three or four minutes. And the refs say after further discussion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We assume after further discussion in 2023, although in the past it might have been just amongst themselves, there is another person coming in to the discussion mm-hmm. through everybody's ears. It's like kind of mm-hmm. mic'd up. So I appreciate them doing that. I think we've been pushing that for the longest. Like, hey, let's get X player who's trained, pretty savvy when it comes to tech, being able to operate, rewind, and zoom in and slow motion quickly so that there can maybe be a pick up that flag that's on a call mm-hmm. before having to stop it and go review the whole thing, that whole song and dance. We'll, we'll allegedly get there. But we all kind of want that to happen now. You know, we all want it to be like, 
do that now. Yes. Why are we waiting until we decide that's going to be a good decision whenever we're still waiting for reviews to take 20 minutes and somehow somebody's getting one thing wrong when everybody else on earth is saying they believe it differently. It's just like, I think it's going to get there, hopefully. It hasn't been a conversation on the season just yet. Well, and that's why I like blaming the refs on the field. I don't blame the refs on the field because so many of these calls are bang, bang, and they happen immediately. It's whatever the like context of the review is. Like This is what happened with the pass interference is that the people who are watching and reviewing it deciding if it's pass interference or not aren't working on the same standard that we know the penalty to be. Like It had to be blatant and obvious was what we were told or yeah. something for it to actually get changed where – I mean, you break it down and you go frame by frame, anything just looks yeah. like it could be pass interference. That's why the difference is so tough. It's just figure it out. Figure okay. it out. Figure Hopefully. it out. The chains, we need not have the chains out there. PI is always going to be subjective. Those subjective calls, though, are always going to have to be made by crew. humans. Hey, that's, that's I may be in a minority here, but I like the chains. I appreciate the change. You game. like the song and little, dance. Little nostalgia. I like the song and dance. You know, everything is 2023. I know everything. One futuristic aliens, robots, AI. Those we don't want all this. guys no, on the side. We, we don't want all those things. I Leave them out there. We're man. just like saying it. that they're they're yeah. inevitable. Use the chip. It's in there already. <laughs> but you're telling me if like we're that cold strange play would have been rid of the short they immediately. They no, 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 first, no, first immediately. Day. Game over. We're saying use the use the chip to free Cole Strange. Yes. From what was rightfully called the first time. Exactly. I cannot believe they overturned that. Did you see this, AJ? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, that's how the game ends. It sucks for them. We've seen much more egregious misses not get overturned. Yes. And then, I, thought for sure this was getting, I thought for sure they were giving him the first down. Here. Me too. Oh, it was boy. called a first down on the field. So for them to overturn it, it was like, wow. that's Because what his leg's still see? driving right there. Boom, yeah, first down. Keep it moving. Next play. Awesome play here, though. Awesome. Was. By Gesicki. With the middle Look, this bar. Guy, get this guy the ball. Boom. Knee down. First oh, down. Whoa. I mean, whoa. Yeah. That, that, damn. He's a yard First and a half down. past the mark. Yeah. yeah. That, that one right there. That angle is. right there. Yeah, that's the angle we all saw, D. Yeah, but, uh, Butch. Oh, no, that's not what that we've been much, talking sure. about. It's like, this got overturned. It's like, how? I don't know. Okay, here's a bet. Because what's the angle this camera's Boom. on, too? Well, yeah, the angle. angle looks behind the first down as it is. So it's where the ball is when his knee hits, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Football. Yep. First down. <laughs> I'm saying right here you get a good angle. The other angle, I'm but, saying you get it. You see his knee goes down right past the white line. Where's the ball? This at? angle kind of a kind of a nothing. Yeah, because it's from the. Well, first. You know, I hate that too when they're reviewing it. When they put a bad angle on, it's like we're already past this angle. Yeah. <laughs> We've all decided this angle gives us nothing. <laughs> right. They're doing that on TV. I'm like, are they watching the same? This is the one. This is yeah. The angle. Pause this whenever. Knee down. Down. down there. Where's the yeah. ball? You don't know where the ball is. What if it's up there in the elbow? With the angle, we don't know. It's short. What if it's up there in the elbow? Bro, we have seen much worse things. Yes. Not get. Should I mean, have been whistled down when Gasecki was dancing around with the ball, anyways. Uh, why? Because yeah. forward progress yeah, is not. Yeah, over yeah. hours. Oh, ago. last play of the game. He might be. It might be a little short there in his right arm. No, well, no, because you yeah, know he's he way tell. down already. He got pushed back. Yeah, yeah, he he the for that one. The game Go saving back. play by Davinci again. Oh, Rewind. Yeah. Is this now. Thing? Snatching at uh, that ball. Go forward, Matthews. forward, 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 right. forward, forward, forward. Stop. Boom. First down. Yeah. Well, you, you little first late. down. Anyways, yeah. first down. Move right. those chains. First down. Yeah, first yeah. down. Move those chains. Clearly a first down. I said, let's not get the correct thing. Let's not have the correct call stop us from what could have been even more better plays coming. But, yeah. Or that play just worked, like, being awesome. Yeah. You know. We had a jet sweep to Cole Strange in the books, too. <laughs> Talked to Coach before the game. They wanted to see what he was like in the open field. All right, AJ, I want to get some of your takes on some of the storylines around uh, the NFL. Joe Burrow, Cincinnati Bengals. That looks bad. That was a big limp. Uh, off the field, he's coming off. He's limping. But then after the game, when he goes to shake their Hans, you know, afterwards, yep. yeah. it's a very... Very clear limping gait on Joe Burrow. They have not looked good. Obviously, they're the only team, I think, in the modern era that's made the playoffs after going 0-2. Last year, they were the only team that's done it. Will they become the second team to do it in the modern era this season? We shall see. But Joe hasn't looked great. They've lost games badly. And now he's seemingly hurt again. What the hell is going on in Cincinnati? I thought we had to figure it out, AJ. Yeah, it did. It's... it's Worrisome for the Bengals because, Joe, like, first off, when is Joe going to ever be healthy enough to feel pretty good? It's, you could tell, like, yeah, he came back. And I'm just wondering what else, what what more is to this injury? What is there? Obviously, we saw him pop his cap, like, first day of camp, whatever it was. You would think it would have gotten much better by this point. But, man, like, the fact that he re-aggravated it and he has not looked good already, he obviously is not feeling very good physically and it's messing up his whole game. But 
I mean, defensively, too, they're replacing some good players. They're trying to figure it out. And when you don't have this high-powered, potent offense like you normally do, it's tough. Yeah, so, like, obviously, Lou Anaruma, we assume he's going to figure out the defense. Yes. Yep. But if you look at Joe Burrow with the calf this year, appendicitis last year, and then a year before something happened, he's never had, like, a full training camp, yeah. and they've always started slow. Like, obviously, it's being chatted about with other teams as well. Like, ah, this team's coming on a little bit. Remember, they didn't play in the preseason. It feels like that's a real storyline right oh, now. Yeah. People are taking it much more serious than in years past because there was a time when preseason games, and, I mean, Joe Buck just kind of said it right there about the Pittsburgh Steelers, about how it's a fugaze, it's not real. Or Schefter said, I forget who said it, yeah. about the preseason not being real. But it does get jitters out, I think, gets you a little bit warm into yeah. the season. get them, I think people are going to take preseason a little bit more serious going forward than they have over the recent past. I think so. But with these guys making, you know, to our borough, he's making, what, 55 a year now? You know, do you want to risk that? Uh, the Chiefs, they do it. But even with them, they've started off slow as well with, um, you know, Eric Bieniemy departure. But these Cavs, man, you got to be concerned about these calf injuries that kind of linger. Remember, that was the thing with Andrew Luck. Even he was a calf, then it was an ankle, then it was something else. You know, obviously, A-Rod had the calf injury before, you know, the freak tackle. Uh, somebody else had it. Now Burrow has a calf. So this is, this is something to be, obviously, very concerned about with Joe Burrow. What? You, obviously, scared to death tonight that the Cleveland Browns are going to come into Akershire and embarrass every Yenzer while they just do their dance, do their dance all over your face. Yeah. Yeah. But you, obviously, as an AFC North fan, Pittsburgh Steelers fan, see what's going on in Cincinnati and wonder if they still got it. Like, they've started slow on a very regular basis. Mm -hmm. But it's weird. It's just weird at this stage that they're still doing it. It was kind of different because last year he started slow and threw, I think it was five interceptions in week one against the Steelers, but he also threw for like 400 yards. So he was – this this year for some reason feels different Like because yeah. he, he didn't throw for – he didn't throw for barely anything against the Browns. And then yesterday, like, threw a, t a terrible red zone pick when, when the game was still in reach. And he also wasn't – Great play. He wasn't – injured last year either i mean he had the appendix thing but he wasn't it wasn't an injury that was like going to be a nagging thing all season long like this is this feels bigger for some reason he did look a lot better though in the second half of he, this yeah game. yeah he i was about to say he, he threw time. uh 41 mm -hmm. times for yeah. 200 some yards him and, yeah. T, him and t higgins got on the same page in the second half him and jamar have not got on the same page yet yeah, yeah. there was a drop i think too or and that, feel, those. that feels like the biggest difference is that him and jamar aren't really on the same page and last year i think right off the bat he had a touchdown week one but aren't mm -hmm. the ravens also really good like the Ravens are two and zero, they are kind of that team in the division right now. And Lamar, the way he played, hey, he looked unbelievable. Yeah, he could go. He was finding Zay. That ball he dropped in Zay in between two guys was beautiful. Ooh. I mean, absolutely fun to watch, man. Lamar is very fun to watch. Honestly, I love watching this Dolphins. I love Big Ricard too. How they use him so many different ways. And I like the confidence that Lamar has. It's yeah. like he's always having a good time while playing. Yeah. And it's like you're not going to have a good time if you're not confident. And the reason why he's confident is because this is the type of offense he's been asking for. Mm -hmm. He said, "Hey, let me go ahead and open." up a little bit now he did run he made some people miss he still has that but what his arm was able to do yesterday i think is what made us all go okay yeah. the ravens are going to be a team aguilar too mm -hmm. made some massive plays odell made some plays before he had that ankle injury it's like mark andrews was back on the field it's like are the ravens a team this year Dude, feels man. like they are yeah just like they have been and then that ball right beautiful. there yeah dart nice absolutely beautiful, beautiful. unstoppable oh, unguardable and he yeah. threw he threw his slot fade like a few a couple plays earlier in that same drive. Great ball. DB played him well, kind of one-handed, and they came down two or three plays later, ran the same play again right on the money. So maybe we need not judge people who are playing against incredible teams as harshly with just two weeks in. Maybe the Bengals are going to be okay. Let's hope the calf is. Bills look like the Bills again. Yeah. I mean, the Raiders march right down the field opening drive. Yep. I actually thought to myself, damn, there's going to be some Ball large dead. overreactions tomorrow yeah. about the Bills if they lose to the Raiders at home. That <laughs> that did not happen. No. The Bills showed up. Josh Allen's all the way back. I appreciate that they understand that they had a poor week one, and then week two, they come out and just dominate. Now, Dawson Knox catching a tud beautifully from Josh Allen, and Josh Allen's former college teammate, he tried to jump over at one point. Yeah, he did. Had a nice little interaction with. Are you pumped about the Bills being back, and was our worries a little bit out of line last week, AJ? I don't know. I mean, everyone likes to overreact when a team you expect to have a chance to win the Super Bowl loses a tough week one, but I mean, I think they rushed the ball well too. That helped Josh Allen. He didn't turn the ball over. No, yeah. no interceptions. Three touchdowns, and you and you have some success on the ground. So yeah, that's a recipe to win. Detroit Lions uh, blow it on Barry Sanders Statue Day. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them, AJ Hawk? It's tough, and Jared Goff played pretty well too. I mean, 
Seahawks, I got. I mean, I love watching Pete sprint down the sideline. It was fun to, to watch old Pete and the Seahawks. They seem to really enjoy their victories. Bro, he was jumping in front of his D-line in those Nike ma- uh, Monarchs yep. or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's like, this dude is awesome. How do you feel about the Giants coming back? Think they're all the way back? Jeez. Didn't feel good at all first half, second half. Yeah, I think they're all right. They'll be okay. I think so, too. I think the Giants are back. I think the Cowboys are incredible. I think the Dolphins look phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we learn a lot about the Browns. Are we thrusting them up into that top tier of AFC teams? Or is Kenny Pickett, Matt Cannon, and the Pittsburgh Steelers going to put something together? All I know is the Steelers have won 20 straight at home on Monday night. Oh, wow. Is that good? Wow. What about the other game? Any stats for the Saints and Panthers game? Yeah, uh, Frank Reich's going to kick or not kick a field goal on one of the first couple drives and go for it on fourth and two, and they're not going to get it. Okay, Saints win, it sounds like, is how Diggs feels. Yeah, mm-hmm. We appreciate you all so much for joining us. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is tomorrow. We'll be overreacting to Monday Night Football. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. You're the greatest. Goodbye. Nailed it. I think we hit it right on screws. Let's yep. go. Yeah. Started on the screws, too. I think we did it. Yeah. Today was our best Technical. We don't know if there was audio the entire time on ESPN. No True. Clue. That's Overrated. a full scene behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Said that a lot today. Behind the scenes. Going to have to say something else tomorrow. Got sick of Under the hood. Peel back the curtain. All those things. Yeah, we'll start yep. dropping There it in. is. We'll start dropping those in. <laughs> but they, uh, that whole five minutes and 26 seconds of no audio on ESPN was not received well. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous when that stuff happens, but they still got to come in here and uh, the fibers. I mean, you need you need more fibers. Well, fiber. listen, Connor, there's it a lot is. of people that would like to see this thing go off without a hitch, obviously. Yes. A, lot of, a lot of incredibly talented people who we appreciate who have done a lot of hard work. Absolutely. I, I don't want to discredit that by but saying. But it also feels like things happen to our program that don't happen to other yeah. programs. Mm-hmm. So we would just like... That lineup, too? Dude, Stephen A. was talking for five minutes. Nobody heard a word on ESPN. Yeah, and it was gold. YouTube, though. I mean, we wow. uh, we feel like our world's a YouTube because it is our YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? So you, sound on YouTube, completely good. You know, over 100 It took a long time on ESPN to not have audio. Five minutes. Yeah. That is, cr- that is crazy. Long time. I wonder when the last time that happened on ESPN. That is so long. If ever. If that has ever even happened. All right, we'll take some phone calls on the uh, next hour. We'll also be talking to Todd Archer. He covers the Dallas Cowboys. Nice. The Archer? L- listen. The Archer? Yeah. Archer of Infamy, yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's coming on. He does that in all of his interviews. Don't do <laughs> that. Don't do it. I guess yeah. just. He doesn't like that. <laughs> you ever see those guys? Right up in the cheek? Yeah, but it's like through their cheek. Yeah. yeah. It's like this. got to do this. Shooting blow darts. And then, <laughs> bullseye. Yep. Uh, drag their faces back. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look like Nico on Saturday night out there slinging a the rock around. Yeah, that's right. West Virginia's back. Everybody can eat shit. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think? Even though GG's done. Huh? Garrett Green? Yeah. I am worried about Garrett Green. Okay. Yeah, yeah you need him. Nico Marshall. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've been picking up what he's been putting down. Gabagool. Yeah. We're talking about good Gabagool. Yeah. I, I, this guy's a slinger. He's a lefty, which mm-hmm. I didn't know, obviously. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And he's throwing it all over the place. Yeah. And we're talking about tight spirals, too. Ooh. Look like okay. Scott Mitchell out there. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I took the Italian, took West Virginia, but I don't know if. Then uh, you won, okay. I don't know if Nico is getting it done for the Mountaineers this season. What are you talking about? We got a running back who's an All American, takes his helmet off as soon as he scores the touchdown. Yeah, that was yep. good. Can we have a little Why composure? Not? Good coaching. <laughs> Can we have a little bit of composure? Don't love that. You know, don't love that, but hey, do your dance. Yeah. I understand everybody's got to see your face. I appreciate it, but also, now we're kicking off from the 15, you know, right, right. We're putting some things. We're trying to win a game. Yeah. Trying to win a game, but I appreciate the excitement. Uh, I appreciate that. Got a call from a couple people around. Uh, the West Virginia program this weekend, and they said it felt like the attitude around the team was back. Oh. Like the fans, very, very present. Felt like very much expected to win the boys. Felt like they were going in there. I heard Neil Brown say, hey, it's a brawl. We're going to have to fight him. I'm like, that's the toughest thing I've ever heard you say. Wow. Yeah, I love that. That's, I like that. We're back Sweet on the climb. Sweet right there, too. Yeah. Good atmosphere. Absolutely. A couple of my old teammates are on the right side of this photo here down in the mix. You can't see them. Their faces are blurred. Also on the left side. Oh, they, a great they, they have a good time. Milan Pushkar. Milan, okay, push car stadium. <laughs> Who's Milan? Well, Milan is actually a pharmaceutical guy, I do believe, from West Virginia. Oh. I think old Milan Pushkar has been around a long time up there. One of the bad Zook. ones. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know any, what, what kind they of pharmaceuticals. Make. Yeah, if he's been there a long time, it's not good. I don't know what. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they <laughs> yeah. make. They might save lives. You have no idea. Okay, yeah. fair right. enough. Yeah, fair enough. Oh no, it hurts. 
Everything hurts. Did your uh, did your old teammates have a good time at the game or? Uh, yeah, Dean Kane was there. Yeah. What? Dean Kane was Dean there. Superman. Oh, Superman. Holy shit. Superman was there, but Stone su Superman. Su yeah, Superman was there, but some of the guys I know from college what were, were not remember. thrilled that Dean Kane did not hang out in the blue lot before the game. Uh, what the hell? Well, the if there's the red lot, he'd have been there. But well, I don't know. Oh, like red light district. Oh, no, I, get, no. I get AJ's joke now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't like think his uh, party affiliation. Oh, oh, yeah. oh is yeah. that real? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know he was running for. Office. I know him from Ripley's Believe It or Not. Bingo! That's Excellent show. Great Excellent show. Program. Yeah. Excellent Good program. book. Up in Canada, there's actually uh, like a store, a museum you can go into. Oh, what nice. a Ripley? A Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. You just walk through, and Dean Kane just pops out of the corner. <laughs> Did you know that this shoe right here? Is <laughs> That's sweet. Like, Thank you, Dean Kane. I guess he was also Superman. Is what yes, he was. Well, well, he was at West Virginia, Clark? and he posted a photo, and he was out there for warm-ups. Oh, yeah. So a lot of people were embarrassed for him that nobody goes into this. Is the blue lock gravel? Sure. Can he get there? Cement. Cement. Oh, so he could get there. You, well, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the wrong Superman. The other Superman's in the wheelchair. You're a bad guy. Uh, Jeez, you Louise. are. What? What's wrong with you? You are wow. a terrible guy. Hold on. I was worried oh. about the guy. That's not Dean Kane. There's a handicapped Jeez. Superman? That's, yes. Yeah, what was Christopher it? Christopher Reeve. There it is. What? The Superman. He fell off his horse. Superman? Really? He's the Superman? Yeah. Yeah, he fell off a horse, for real. He's yeah, tragic. Rest in peace. He's the Superman. He's dead? He died 20 years ago. Guys. Oh, my God. Oh, you made fun of a dead guy? Why'd you got to do that? What the hell's wrong with you? Huh? A bad <laughs> tone. I didn't mean Mom to silence, low, no. please. For yeah. this man who passed away, he fell off a horse with Superman. <laughs> oh, real funny. Tony. Real Whoa. funny. How is he Superman if he fell off a horse? <laughs> well, it was after, you see, obviously. it was after. <laughs> okay. It was clearly I, okay, I was going to say, I miss him, peace, Christopher. I was not here for We appreciate handicap. you, man. What, we appreciate you. You what, did good. If you want to see a touching tribute to him, there is a South Park episode that <laughs> really, sure there is. really pays. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Gut. Tons <laughs> crying, you scumbag. You're a terrible guy. I mean, he looked good. You are good. a terrible Jeez. guy. Dude, I didn't know any of this. Unbelievable. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, sure. Tony. He, he looked good oh, in the yeah. end. He's got like a young Michael Jackson thing going for him. Yeah, that's why he was su he's Superman. Look how handsome that fucking guy is. Well. Anyways, Dean Kane is not this guy. No. Dean know. Kane's still alive at the West Virginia game. A lot of people were wondering why he chose not to tailgate with the entire state. But Why was he there? Why was he at the game? Did he have? Was he doing something? I don't know. I only saw a photo. I didn't do enough research, and I I said, "Oh, it's Ripley's Believe It or Not guy," and then I got like ten thousand other reasons why I should know him, and I didn't know any of them. So whoops. Was, Fair. Shout out to that guy being a West Virginian. Then the immediate burial from the group of people were like, "What a loser this guy!" <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was kind of how it all went. I don't feel that way, Dean. Okay, I want to let you know that. All right, we'll take some phone calls. One eight three three four three two three six six three. One eight three three four. Dead. Dead oh. Oh. It was an incredible college football slate. So good. Legit, that West Virginia game was obviously awesome for me to watch. And I don't know how many people made it for the Colorado-Colorado State game. That one started at 10 p.m. Eastern, one into overtime. Yeah. yeah so nice. we're talking about long, long, long nights. Michael Irvin, I think, did not sleep no. through that game right into NFL Sunday uh, game day for them, which we appreciate. But college football has been electrifying this year, man. Mm -hmm. It has truly been electrifying. The storylines are big this weekend. Oh, breaking news. We'll be doing a show live from uh, South Bend, Indiana this Friday. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Up there for the Ohio State Notre Dame game. Ooh. Obviously, that's where game day will be on Saturday. That's going to be an epic environment. That's not too far for the Ohio fucks to travel. There's going to be a lot of Ohio State folks up there, we assume. Oh, I, I would assume so. I don't know how easy it is for tickets. Like that. I would assume I've Notre Dame told, is not uh, uh, open them all up for them. I've been told uh, the other way, actually. What's that? I've been told from Notre Dame fans um, that in the past they have chosen the money over going to the game. So. Okay, wow. and Tone was a mayor alongside Pete Buttigieg yeah, that's yeah. Right. of South Bend a couple different times over the last few years because that is where his lady is from. Mm -hmm. Tone was spending weekends and weeks and years seemingly in this city <laughs> befriending everybody, so he he does have his ear to the ground mm -hmm. over there in the Catholic school grounds, mm -hmm. which we will appreciate. But we'll be there live Friday, AJ. I'm excited for it. I'm how do our numbers test in Indiana and Ohio? What's that, bud? You were talking about how like in Alabama and Colorado not are the biggest number-wise. How's Indiana and Ohio? You know, I'm just going to not believe anything anymore. Okay. Because that Colorado crowd was not supposed to be like that. It was, was nuts. Crazy. Yeah. That was so cool. They were awesome. I was scared were to death to do these shows. They're scared to death. I'm like, bro, we go down there and there's no humans there, we're going to look like the biggest dipshits of all time. Mm -hmm. Especially with everything that has happened, with us getting blamed for people not being there, and then boom, it happens. So we genuinely appreciate the hell out of the people that showed up in Tuscaloosa and in Boulder, Colorado. Because all the numbers under the hood. Yeah. Nice. 
There it is. I did it. Yep. Sounded very good too. Thank you. With that, with that naturally, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. All the numbers under the hood said like not going to be good for you. We would assume South Bend, Indiana, should be a good time. Sure. Yeah. Friday should be pretty electrifying. And know that whatever you're thinking right now with ties to Notre Dame and ties to our show mm -hmm. and ties to Ty and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We know. Yeah. And we are trying our best right now, currently, to piece together an epic Friday mm -hmm. <laughs> in South Bend, Indiana, which we are assuming will happen. AJ, we are assuming will be happening. You talking possible Lou and Lou? Whoa! AJ! AJ! Shut up! <laughs> Let's get to a break. Maybe. We'll see. See you there. Find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't watch on ESPN. There might not be sound. True. But watch on YouTube, because it'll be... Uncensored and real. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I do wonder how today went on ESPN. I said fuck. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Well, I'm sure we were That's down. two times now I'm reenacting a head coach. Right. And I've just naturally, first one was Salah, Pops and Skillies were fucked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second one is Bill Belcher. Going, fuck you. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what he said, though. Yeah. We're just trying to give accurate analysis of what. We're covering. And I'm guessing that the one today probably got beeped because there's a good chance good old Dick Good got a tongue lashing for letting the last <laughs> one slide through. I think there's been a lot of tongue lashings. Uh, about, yeah, yeah. Nice. About a lot of stuff. Love that. Muted for five and a half minutes. It's a long time. Bold Talk move. show. Yeah. Talk show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No action. Right. You actually did sign language for a little bit. Oh, yeah. We've been there before. I've been on a show with no sound. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For, for an that hour? Was a little longer, The whole yeah. time. Mm -hmm. I've done a show with no sound. An hour? Just give us a heads up. You know, you can An make hour. the most of it. Right. With no mics last year, Georgia, Ohio State, kick off the second half. And they wouldn't cut to the camera where I had a full notes section. Yep. Welcome back to the <laughs> Georgia Down. They wouldn't cut to it. Mm -hmm. Cut to my damn phone right now. We have no microphones. Because the person who hated us, the audio guy, was taking a dump and forgot to get us microphones. <laughs> exactly. Well, and actually uh, gave us quite the talking to to get back where we were supposed to be for the start of the second half, so that didn't happen. Yeah. Everybody's the smartest person on earth. Mm -hmm. Maybe just have an ASL translator next to you the whole time. Age, sex, location. No, American Sign, sign Language. language. <laughs> Wait, sign languages are different in different oh, yeah. cultures? <laughs> Ooh. Bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball. Wait, how does that work? Oh, yeah. Why? Age, sex, and location. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if we're going to play that game, but like, I respect it. Is that a game? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, boom. Fuck it. Ooh, nice job. Fuck it. Had to go, had to, had to heave it. That was, yeah, arms sore. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of push-ups, you know. I haven't been, I've been getting lazy. I've been getting lazy. How about the Rock sits on a game day? Because I gave him an entire speech about the night before about how there's no way you work out as much as you do. And then I even told him, cheat meal, fake. Mm -hmm. That's not real. <laughs> and his entire, everybody that was with him was like, real. Re we watch it. Very. Oh, yeah. The one person said it's like almost disgusting. Yeah. Actually. yeah. Like, it's yeah. almost. It's a ritual. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. It's not just a meal. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's like, all right, all right. I said, I get lazy. I eat that thing one time. I gain 30 pounds. Guess what I'm doing tomorrow, Rock? Give me it again. Run right? it back. Give me it again. So I'm trying my best. First thing he does whenever he sits down on a game day, he said, suit looks good. He said, did you work out today? And I'm like, when? And he was like, work out today. And I'm like, I don't know if there's going to be time. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be time, Rock. I wonder if I'll start getting like messages like, hey, fat ass jabron. Yeah. <laughs> Get off your ass and work out today. He yep. is so big. In he's real life, AJ. Nice. That neck. He's not even he's not even human. Like how he how he is built and everything about him. The arms. He told me, uh, I said I want to look like you. <laughs> you know? Yep. What did he say? What was that? AJ? What did you say? What was that? I, I know what he said. He said, Oh, you'll never look like me. AJ was there when he said yeah. that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to him. And I was laughing, like, yes, nobody will ever look like you. The rock. He looks good, though, dude. It's ridiculous. I think he legitimately had fun with us, though. I yeah, mean, yeah. Shit, he was up there for, what, an hour? Yeah. Drank a whole bottle of beer. Busiest terrible. guy in the world. His wardrobe is boom. Imagine Very him good. walking out at that WWE event in that whole place. Just 14,000 strong. Just standing, screaming their faces off for him. With everything else that happens to him in his world. Yeah. Everything he does, he gets. Yeah. Crumb, in the middle crumb. of it right now. Boom, boom, boom. How Giving millions of dollars. Yes. This guy sucks. Yes. Boom, <laughs> boom. Like, yeah. What the fuck? But then he walks into an arena and the whole place just goes crazy. And he's like, there had to be a moment where he's like, all right, Rock still got the juice. Oh, yes. yes. Rock still got it.
Good for him. What an honor. Foxy was filming, but that was a moment where it was like, I want to film this just so I have it on my phone because of how yeah. loud everybody was. In it the was movie. so loud. Loudest arena I've ever been in, for sure. Yes. For sure. Good for that Denver crowd, bro. What yeah. a moment. Good for the Rock, too. All right, we'll take phone calls. We got Todd Archer. We got other we haven't talked about a couple games we need to. Mm -hmm. Like the Broncos. What? Ooh. Sam Howell. Huh? Yeah. Look out. Huh? Yeah. Ron Rivera, we say he doesn't have his fastball as a head coach anymore. Sorry. Eh, felt bad about that. They gave him a ball after the game. Hundredth win as a head coach he got from Josh Harris. And then they gave him a hug. And I just thought about, and I'm the guy I said, this guy can't coach anymore. Well, in your defense. Uh, it looked right after the game like he didn't know if they won or lost. <laughs> All right, let's get to a break. Yeah. That wasn't needed. Well, also, they stacked his 100th win. I, and congratulations, <laughs> but yikes. Broncos Cardinals, too. Let's just let's see them play the Cowboys and, and the Eagles, and then we'll see. Yeah, but it takes us back play. to this point. Like, Sean Payton and Broncos, Russ Wilson and Broncos. What do we think? Russ looks better. Bring in Stidham. Definitely better. Russ Put is better than Stidham. he was last year for oh, sure. Oh, he threw one of those. He oh, yeah. yeah Definitely look better. Mm -hmm. He does oh, look yeah. better. Put in Stidham. It's not going to be a finish. He's not a finished product yet with, with Sean Payton. I'm sure Sean's still trying to learn a little bit exactly what Russ does best and what he likes to do. What a weird time for Russell Wilson these last few years. Yeah. yeah it's yes. a weird, weird time. You know, a very weird yeah. time. Hope they figure it out. All right. We'll figure out how to do a better show on the other side, we promise. Be mm -hmm. a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. 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 This is the people show. And you know what that means?
are you going to do to change to make Tua better? Have you gotten so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, uh, and you're no. shaking hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero-win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're going to start with scoring more points than the opponent. Wow! Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, that's uh, right. No, I think um, there's I, – I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards, forwards, okay? Um, what things do I see that are – Really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at. Hey, it's he's a, accurate. Hey, boom! He, he, that's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just. I, I, you were leading me. That's how you should do this. Maybe Dude, think about it in the yeah. future. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for our whole lives? Oh my God! You tell me. Wow, this is weird. Yeah. Dude, Whoa, seems like you guys just that. became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro, hey, this is... did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. But what is it about Tom that last night, everybody on earth watching was like, ah, he's gonna fucking score here. This game's over for the Saints. Sorry about it, even though there's little to no time left. He's the clutchest performer of all time. I mean, I think that's neither here nor there. He prepares so. Hey, why? Let's go. This show sticks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Ooh. You pick. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We walk out! We walk out! Sports! 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 Sport. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, September 18th, 2023. Hour three of this program starts right now. Football! It's uh, happening tonight. That's AJ Hawk. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dan. The Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And nine year NFL vet Darius J. Butler is joining us on stage. Boy, hey, you look super cool. Hey, it's Hell yeah. Final mm. season. You look super duper cool. You asked this question to Adam Schefter about the hot seat of Brandon Staley, you know, over there at the Chargers. And Schefter didn't give us an answer, but, uh, but, but I kind of did about, yeah, things might be heating up for Brandon Staley. And a lot of people thought it would get hot after losing to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the playoffs in a way that they did last year. But we didn't really talk about the Titans. How about Vrabes and the mm -hmm. Titans getting a massive win here over the Chargers? Tannehill had some balls and oh, made yeah. him look spectacular. Derrick Henry was running like Derrick Henry, again, running people over. Vrabes is always going to have his defense and his team in the game, seemingly. It's like, what have we learned about the Titans over the years? They're going to be in it, and when they get rolling, they stick to their identity, and they do their thing. Down 11 zip, obviously not as big as 21, nothing that the Giants had, but they mount a big-time comeback, and they look like the Titans of old when the Titans were good, AJ. What do you think about this Titan squad with Vrabes at the helm? I think it was good to see. I, I read Tannehill's comments, too, after the game, saying he knew he was going to have a bounce-back game or he had to have a bounce-back game with how poorly he played week one. So I think it's huge for his confidence and, honestly, the rest of the offense and the rest of the team, like their confidence in what this offense can do. Obviously, they come from behind, but man, look at him standing in the pocket, yeah. pulling the trigger when he knows he's going to get blasted right in the face. Lit and up. finds who? Uh, Hopkins, who didn't practice last oh. week, remember? That's right. Mm -hmm. But was able to play on Sunday yeah. somehow. Showed up. Whoa. Showed, showed up great. somehow. That's great news. But you had that weapon. You have Derrick Henry still. Tannehill has proven to be a good quarterback, can win a lot of big-time games whenever he's hot. Great celebration dance there. Darius, 
how come we never talk about the Titans? How come we just assume, and D-Hop's been doing that mm -hmm. for like 12 years. Yep. Yeah. That exact thing right there. Long route, get open, how you doing, keep it moving. My catch radius is absurd, even if I'm covered. Tannehill and he are only going to grow and get better and better. But how come we never talk about the Titans, you think, Darius Butler? I think it's Ryan Tannehill. Um, you know, the expectations are always limited when it comes to, you know, and it's a quarterback-driven league. You know Mike Vrabel is going to have his team, you know, ready to play week in and week out. I don't know how many games he's won or he covered as, a, as, a, as an underdog. You know, he's always going to have his guys ready to roll. But you look at the quarterback first and foremost, and then the guys around him, obviously. Derrick Henry has been one of the best running backs in the league for what, half a decade now. But I think it's the quarterback is why the expectations are always limited. Because even like the Jaguars now, you know, they had one good year last year coming in this year. It's like, hey, what are, what's, yeah. the, what's the limit for those guys? Trevor Lawrence could be a top five guy. So I think it's the quarterback, and uh, if Tannehill keeps winning games, you know, we'll see. Conversation about the Chargers going into the season. They're all in, going to win a Super Bowl. Mm. Now they're 0-2. Mm. One of the losses yeah. being to Mike Vrabel and the Titans, who dip, weren't talked about Super Bowl contenders at all, AJ. Not at all. Well, I mean, okay. With the Titans, is it the fact that they win, like, I guess they went close games. They went ugly. They went old. They're like an old school team where nothing is crazy flashy offensively and defense. Their defense is they're mm -hmm. very solid. I like a lot of the guys they have. But it's just how they win. Is that why we don't talk about them a bunch? I think so. Yeah. You know, and also when you start comparing teams in the AFC at the beginning of the season, looking ahead before any games were played, it was eight, nine deep about teams that could go on a run. I don't think any of us had the Miami <laughs> Dolphins at number one no. in the no. AFC. They were certainly a team that could go if Tua stays healthy. Remember, that was the whole conversation. Yep. But the Titans said no convos. And here they are knocking down the Chargers who are 0-2 and the seat is seemingly oh. heating up mm -hmm. for old Brandon Staley over there. Let's talk about the Giants, AJ. What are your thoughts on the second half of them turning it all around, being a team that looks like they're in the NFL? now. Saquon Barkley seemingly playing great football. Danny Dimes doing his thing. What do you think about Martindale, Wink, the defense coordinator, and Dayball having six terrible quarters, and now have they gotten over the hump and ready to go? I mean, I would assume they, they sure as hell hope so. I, I, it did not look good when they're showing the six quarters thing and all this. You, you see Dayball on the sideline, and then I know there's all this what controversy, whether not controversy, but saying did Dayball take over the, the play calling in the second half? He yeah, said, what is I did that? Not take over the, he says, I did not do that, but it kind of looked like he did. So either he's just protecting his coaches, being humble, I'm not sure. But either way, huge turn. I mean, can you imagine how the majority of Giants fans felt after this first half of this game? Oh. Thinking like, wow, what is going to happen with us? We thought this was our year. And we're broken. You know what I mean? That's yeah. kind of what they look like. It, we're broken somehow. And it's like same old Giants almost if you start getting into the, the negativity of it all, especially against a team that was supposed to be god-awful. You're down 21 nothing, 21 21-zip to a team that's tanking. Allegedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. oh, yeah. That's a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> yeah. hey, especially after you pay a quarterback, you renegotiate a contract with your running back, right. you had success last year, mm -hmm. things are looking up, you bring in another defensive weapon, another year in the system, it's like, we should go, we should go, we should go, and then you just get embarrassed by a team that's supposed to be tanking for two quarters after getting your ass kicked in the division on primetime week one, it's like, hard times for those Giants fans. That's why the jubilation, I assume, afterwards had to be Fantastic. Bruce, were you – what are we doing? We were uh, jumping around the apartment last night. We had a good time knowing the Giants are back. We were at halftime, quite quite a roller coaster of emotions. What was it like yesterday? Yeah, at halftime I was looking, oh, you know, maybe we're tanking for Drake May, get the second overall pick, <laughs> looking at uh, Danny's dead cap, like, oh, you know. It's can only, we get out of this? Yeah, we can get out of it in 2025. Uh, second <laughs> half, completely different story, totally flipped the, flipped the script. It was awesome to see, you know, just a – some exciting Giants football finally to start the year. Isn't football remarkable? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, it's awesome. I think week one NFL kind of stunk. It did. You know what I mean? Kind of stunk. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, yeah underwhelming, I would say. Yeah, just bad compared to college football, too, with how college football has started. The NFL was like, this ain't that good. The offense was kind of <laughs> bums. There was no real yeah. the storylines, you know, like who's really doing it. I think yesterday we had some good football. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think tonight we're in for some great football tonight, yes. too, AJ. I can't wait. I think it's, so. Is this the only time all year we have two games on Monday night? Ooh, no, no, it's like four or five times. Next oh, week there week is too. Yeah. And then I just got. Okay. Uh, I just read an article. Yeah. Due to the writers' strike and everything that's going on in Hollywood, Monday Night Football is going to be on ABC a lot this year. Ooh, like mm. Monday Night Football is going to be simulcast at ABC and ESPN. Uh, Smart. Sense. So, you know, you strike. 
Entertainment people, you do what you got to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, entertainment people, you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Good luck over there. We hope you're all fighting and pulling for the same things. Hopefully there's a direction and an ask and a want and an ability to get a deal done so people can work again, you know, because there's a lot of that. But what you might also find out is when we come over to where you guys were, these numbers we might do football sports-wise – Versus what you guys are doing, I don't think you're going to help your... No. no. I don't know if it's going to help your conversation. I just, you know, imagine ABC and ESPN and ESPN2 if there's a Manning cast. Mm -hmm. All those numbers coming together for one Monday Night Football. And then, like, the Goldbergs were on, I sure. think, ABC <laughs> Goldbergs. at yeah, the yeah, time. Right. Thanks, guy. Not Bill. That's not going to be... You know what I mean? When yeah. these ratings come out for who all watched on ABC, I think it's going to be a tough... We might just have ABC now yeah. on Mondays. Okay. You know what I mean? Sports might just have ABC on Mondays, which goes into the whole negotiation thing. Yeah. We're pulling for you, but it seems like it's going to get tougher yes. after this evening and the next couple of weeks. Well, and you're giving the NFL another primetime game. It's not like you're just taking a channel. You're giving them a completely new slot that is now available on, on Monday On cable, nights. right? That's called cable? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Fox, ABC, ABC. That's, NBC. That's ABC's network. Basic cable. Network. Yeah, okay, network. basic cable. Networks. Yeah, so you, get, so you can get it with, like, the bunny ears. Like, you don't have to have, like, an actual cable package. Who's handing out bunny ears for their team to watch? HBO. Yeah. Phoenix Suns. Suns Phoenix right? Suns. Uh, yeah. Oh. They're buying bunny ears for fans to put yeah. on their TVs. They ended their Bally yeah. agreement so he could do that, and they're going to have like a lot more reach now, I guess, which like is legit? interesting. You don't say. Yeah. Okay. Legit, legit yeah, they're antenna. buying antennas for people because like it'll just be on the local channels that you can pick up on the antennas. And those are the networks, right? That's why yeah. SmackDown on Fox was such a big deal. Exactly. Mm. NBC is such a big deal. They got the Notre Dame games. Right. ABC is such a big deal because yep. it's everywhere. Yeah. Sunday Night Football on NBC. Big deal, right? Because yep. it's in literally any home that has a television. Exactly. Yep. Do not need to have cable to watch it. That's like back in the day. There was like four options of things to watch. You're like this shows will never be as good as insert show from 1974. The Jeffersons. There was three other options. Mash. It's like they were pulling exactly. in a point six. Nobody ever goes <laughs> like it was the only thing to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally the only thing to watch. Now those networks still have that advantage though, because there are some portions of the United States where those channels are the only ones that are available. It's like, why not extend the reach? And if you're ABC, live sports, NFL most specifically, mm -hmm. is a ratings driver. It's like I think this is the new home probably for Monday Night Football after you watch it. Yeah, it's like the top 100 uh, ratings-wise things of the year every single year. The top, you know, 50 or even 90 are all NFL. And then it goes to, like, the State of the Union, you know, speech that's also on just classic cable that anybody can get. And then it literally is either college football or NFL football for 90 of the 100. Am I misremembering? Wasn't it, back on, a wasn't it on ABC when we were growing up? Yeah, yep. Dan Dennis Miller. Yeah, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Shout out Dennis Miller. Yeah. People really enjoyed his time. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> <Monday Night Football. laughs> he did his thing, though. Yeah. He's just like Tony Romo, you know, never changing. That's right. Here's the response. Says, nah, I'm, I'm going with it. Yep. Tony's going to go back to be babyface at some point. Yep. Yeah. Dennis Miller had his run, did his thing, bounced out. Joining us now is a guy who's been covering the Cowboys with uh, ESPN for so damn long. Wow. They're the story of the NFL every single year, but this year it's actually yeah. warranted. This might be the team from Dallas that goes on a run. Ladies and gentlemen, from ESPN, Todd Archer. Yeah, Todd! Oh. Awesome. Hey guys, how we doing? It's an honor to meet you, sir. Before we start talking about the Dallas Cowboys, with a name like Archer, I assume there's some incredible nicknames. What do we call you if we are friends with you? Who? Uh, my high, my elementary school friends called me Itch. Ooh. I don't know if we want to go there. Okay, uh, like, yeah, yeah. Arch, Arch is fine though. Arch. Arch. Okay, Arch, Arch is a cool one. Arch is a cool one. Can you bow an arrow? Can you bow an arrow? You have to. Not for the life of me. Not one time. You Arch. haven't said. You know what? I'm gonna go get. Oh, my I've done it, but I'm terrible. Oh, not good. Not good at the archery. Yeah, not good. No. Oh, respect. So the no. name was different than the job. You're great at covering the Cowboys. Let's start talking about it. You know, every single sure. year the Cowboys have hype because the Cowboys are America's team. What Jerry Jones has been able to do business and brand-wise is literally second to none. This year, though, hype is real. Third year in that defensive system for Mike and the boys, he's seemingly confident about where they can go. Big Mike McCarthy seemingly throw his fastball on the paint right now. Special teams is good. We're winning the Super Bowl. Is that all thoughts down in Dallas that you're hearing? I've already booked my flight to Vegas for nice. February. So, you know, I figured, hey, I, I've only done that, let's see, 2007, 2016, 2014. Yeah, so I, I've probably got some flights out there where I thought this was a Super Bowl season that didn't come true. But, you know, the way that they've started, they've outscored their opponents by 60 points, right? I mean, that's just 
ridiculous. Uh, you mentioned Micah Parsons, the defense of 10 sacks. They've given up 10 points. They played eight quarters. They've only given up points in one quarter. Uh, this stuff is, and, and look, I know it's not, it wasn't Aaron Rodgers on Sunday. It, it was Zach Wilson. And, uh, and I'm sure the Jets would have been better with, with Aaron, especially Aaron's success at AT&T Stadium. But what this defense is doing is just otherworldly at this point. Kind of like AJ's defense is when they won the Super Bowl with Mike up in Green Bay, right? Hell yeah. AJ, go ahead, pal. Yeah, hey. I tell you what, and speaking of Mike, I, I saw Jerry, come, the owner, come on after the game and explain, I, I mean, really just sing Mike, Big Mike's praises, saying how great of a job he's doing, how great the team is doing. Has their relationship always kind of been rock solid, or has there ever been any kind of like roller coasters, ups and downs with them? And, and no, no real roller coasters. You know, he kind of gets a, a, a pass on his first year, right, with the pandemic. And then he's won 24 games in his in the last two years, and now add two here here this year. So if you win, Jerry's all all good. Uh, and, and look, Jason Garrett lasted here a decade uh, as a guy that you know went to the playoffs, timed it out perfectly. But I, w- with what Mike has done so far as a play caller, you know he caught a lot of grief in February when he said Kellen wants to light up the damn scoreboard. I just want to run the ball. That's really not what he was kind of getting at. He was getting at managing the game and playing to his strength. And I think yesterday's game was a perfect example of play to your defense. And even the first game against the Giants, you have a big lead. You don't need to press it. Just you know, kicking a field goal, that's not a bad play when it's already a two-score game. So when he gets his kicker, a former soccer player, Brandon Aubrey, gets him some work too. The kid's got a live leg. I like watching him boot the ball. I'm thankful he's in football. Welcome over here. I think he's going to be a great, and he can handle the Dallas Cowboys pressure, which is seemingly always there. The, the one thing that was said by the uh, whoever was commentating the game, I forget who it was. Hmm, who was it? It was, Ro- it was your boy Romo. So oh, good. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. Over he talked about Big Mike getting the play call in early, though, as opposed to it being rushed and late. Like, Big Mike's confidence calling plays after not doing it for a long time seems to be very high. It's for good reason, I assume. Is he enjoying it from what you're um, picking up from him, enjoying calling plays again, and he's just in the zone? Yeah, absolutely. He, he talked to us this offseason that he was tired of basically just putting schedules together, right? This is what you do Wednesday. This is what you do Thursday. Because Kellen's calling the play, so his deal is if you and in, in, if you're going to call it, you better install it. So Kellen, w- it was Kellen's offense, and Mike had some input, obviously. But now it's it's Mike's offense, so he he's installing it and he's calling it. And he's he's as busy as he's ever been here with the Cowboys. And you're seeing a guy that's in his bag. I don't know. I like oh, oh, yeah, oh, he is Liddy, isn't he? Arch. He's super Liddy. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm was... trying. It's the first, I want to make sure you guys have me back. Yeah, well, um, hey, you're awesome, Todd. You're doing a great job, Archer. Now listen, maybe you know, pick it, up a bone arrow one. <laughs> well, I'll need more practice at that one. No, yeah. Um but you know, two or six in the red zone, yeah, it's not what you want. But again, he wasn't gonna force throws into the end zone for Dak to put it in tight windows down there against a a zone defense, just kick your field goal, get out of there and live to fight another day and, you know, go on playing Arizona here in week three. Darius has a question for you, Arch. Hey, Arch, I hate to bring out the pessimists in you, but boots on the ground, you've been out there. I know the flight's already booked, but is there anything, if you had to pick, that can prevent these Cowboys uh, from making the Super Bowl run that everybody's, you know, kind of putting on them already? Well, I, I, some of it's going to be injury, right? But that's something for every team, yep. especially offensive line injury. You look at their depth, it's pretty untested. They've won their two games without Tyler Smith at left guard, um, but it's easy to play without a left guard. I hate to minimize the position, um, oh, but you're, 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 if they would lose Tyron Smith, if they would lose Zach Martin, if they would lose their center, Tyler Biotis, I think things change a little bit for that offensive line and, and, and what they're doing offensively. But, you know, this defense is deep. They can withstand a loss, maybe not a Micah, but they can withstand a loss or two at different positions and still be fine. I mean, you got Jordan Lewis, a really good nickel corner. I think he played 10 snaps because they're, they're, they are they have depth at cornerback. How about Micah's four-point jungle cat oh, celebration? Man. He's just – he's floating yeah. above the ground sure. after – and that helmet looks sweet on him. Mm-hmm. Yes. You oh, know, yeah. there's been some new versions of the helmet that look asinine. Like, you look at a player, it's like – do you not do you not have a mirror anywhere yeah. before you go out there? His helmet looks awesome and he just looks like he's at a different speed than everybody. It's been like that since day one, right, Todd down there? Absolutely. That sack you just showed, his first sack against Zach Wilson. I, I couldn't believe how quickly he closes. And that's something that he's shown since his rookie year. The, the funny thing is when they Cowboys <laughs> drafted him, 
they got lucky. They were going to take either J.C. Horn or Pat Sertan the second. And both those guys were gone by the time they drafted. They traded down with the Eagles, Giants, one of those two. And they were still able to get Micah Parsons. Do you think those teams, every team up there wants to have a do-over now? Yeah. And, and taking this guy, I mean, you know, he, he's, I've covered Jason Taylor when he was in Miami. I've covered DeMarcus Ware every game he played here. Two Hall of Fame guys. He's as electrifying as either one of those guys, if not more so, with the things that he can do. And he knows it too, which is awesome. You know, that's another thing. Like, he knows he can be great. I think he expects himself to be great. And uh, we're lucky to watch it. And the Cowboys are certainly lucky to have him. Patrick Sertain, pretty good, though. Yeah. You know, that's another, yeah, that would nice. be, that'd be another. The, the question mark, though, seemingly from the outside, and you say it's health, and obviously that's something for every team to deal with. But everybody questions Dak. And I think it's because of what Ty's about to ask about. Yeah, Arch. I mean, week one, obviously, Dak didn't really need to do anything. You're scoring defensive touchdowns and special teams touchdowns. And then even yesterday, I mean, he played fine he, he again didn't really need to do that much because the defense looks so good but and I know it's not the real world but you go on x or you know you read stuff <laughs> online and it seems like everyone kind of has an issue with Dak and that's the whole thing it's hey this defense is unbelievable but at the end of the day we're not going to win the Super Bowl because of our quarterback or we're going to win the Super Bowl in spite of our quarterback why do you think Dak gets such a bad rap with both the fans and the media it's the Cowboys. Simple as that, right? I mean, you're constantly compared to Troy Aikman and Roger Staubach. Romo. He is now experiencing what Romo had to experience all the years. They live on a on a, a, a high wire. Whereas, I guarantee you, if Dak throws a pick against Arizona, everybody's going to come out and say, told you so. Told you. He's not any good. Threw a pick. You know what I mean? That's the, 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 the high wire that these guys live on. The second they have a false step, everybody's going to jump on him. And, and Dak is as good or as prepared for all that kind of stuff than anybody that, that I've covered with this franchise and understanding all that comes with the dinner uh, when you play for this team. From all the shows, from the media, from social media, all that stuff, he gets it and he does a good job of ignoring it. But he knows it's out there because I asked him about the interceptions. He didn't go two straight games without a pick last year. He's done it now this year. And he's like, really? You're asking me about interceptions? You know, He, he, he didn't take two Colin when asking that question. But I want to know if like the work that he's done with Mike McCarthy has kind of paid off that is let him not have these interceptions. Sauce may well, have it's all in how you phrase them. it, Todd. You don't got to be an asshole. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? They're, they're dominating <laughs> teams, Arch. You don't have to be. It's all in how you phrase it, Todd. You know? Pat, it's about the answer. It's not about the questions. And we got a really good answer. So I was happy with that. Oh, so you said you worked <laughs> it. Okay. I respect <laughs> it. Right. I respect it. Hey, Todd, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, listen, I understand. I'm going to go with it because it works. Hey, jujitsu, you know, sometimes you got to finger the rib so you can get the neck. Yeah, you know, you, know, you got to do what you got to do. I understand. Yeah, I don't know jiu -jitsu. Archery and jujitsu, two, two things not on my. Uh, oh, you're a black belt in journalism, though. Yeah, right. I mean, we all understand <laughs> yeah. that. We appreciate yeah. your time today, pal. Thanks. Appreciate it, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, Todd Archer. Yeah, Arch. What's that jujitsu? Uh... What's that trick? Yeah. You, you know. I don't know. This guy did it to me whenever I was rolling. He, he said, finger the ribs? I've never heard it used that way. Yeah. What do you mean? That's what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? You're digging your fingers in between the ribs to yeah. hurt them? I don't know. Um, All I know is I was boom, boom, pow on the ground. Okay. This is interesting. This guy's smaller than me. I should be okay. Should just couldn't couldn't nope. control anything, nope. and then I had him locked up. You know, I'm hugged on for dear life. I have seen it in a cage before. Yeah, I'm in full mat. He's on full mat right yeah. now. Okay. So I'm, I'm dear life. I got some big legs though. Okay, so I'll be able to do this. No problem. Let me just put him in here like watermelon in between two thighs. That's right. We're gonna try to crush this guy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I feel his two fingers start stabbing me here, like just digging into the side. Of my, I'm like, bam! I start moving, <laughs> and then boom! He gets on my neck. Gotcha. And I'm like, oh my god! He did that on. He moved me, just like McDaniel's doing with these defenses. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Whenever he's trying to get Tyreek Hill open, it is jujitsu, not just what Tua went through to learn how to fall, but what. McDaniel is doing yeah. with that offense is two, yeah. three stages ahead. And that's what jujitsu is, AJ. Sorry, you don't understand. Sorry about Mixed it. martial arts, dude. Sorry about it. What a beautiful. Hey, yo, I know Shefty said earlier he wants yeah, you to send bingo. that thing into the Emmys. This is your Emmy clip right here. I felt pretty good. Jiu-Jitsu, tie, tie it all back together. Boom. You watched it hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, yeah, you, you can see all saw. Huh? Yeah, you can yeah. see my face. We saw face. Face. You got pumped. You got yeah. very excited. Stood up. Stood up. I had to get out of my seat yeah. for it. I know. I had to get out of my seat for it. It was fun to watch. It was. I felt very good about it. good. Everything we do is scripted, too, so we knew that one was going to happen. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Bro, you know, humans who have been introduced to our program have not been as negative as I assume they would be. Not, not at all. Slightest. That's been pretty crazy. Not a nice, actually. Yeah.
also like less a matter of, of time. the amount of people who are like not very happy about it don't see as much as before. Well, I think it's because we muted so many people. Oh, and yeah. also, what I've Over realized 3, a lot of people who are introduced to it like they're not following, you know. So like, if you go in and actually read some of the comments, that's where you'll find like someone who just will take a shot at you but won't tag you because they have no idea who you oh, are. So, oh, I, so, so I, yeah, so I've stayed. So I probably haven't oh, seen nice. it. I've stayed. Well, that's when I was like, God damn, this has been great. And then I went and looked at it. I was like, right, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah you either. can never do that. No, yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, I had no idea that. You was think happening. the people that were pissed about the ESPN move were thought Friday show sucked? Yeah, how about that? I mean, that was crazy that we were able to do that. Jimmy Trainer wrote a thing. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. That was good art. You. Appreciate right, you, yeah. Jimmy, doing Trainer. that. He did ask a good question. He doesn't know when I sleep. I passed out during a couple of the games yesterday. Yeah. Shouts to my wife and the baby kind of waking me up and saying, uh, Anthony Richardson's out with a concussion. This is two games. This guy's out. This is my first thought as soon as I wake up. Open eyes. Isn't that beautiful? Anthony Richardson is no longer playing. Gardner Minshew's the quarterback. Sure. <laughs> She was a good news bear. What the fuck? Yeah. What yeah. the fuck happened? Well, how long have I been? Win. How long have I been asleep? Gardner Minshew. Minshew mania is a lot. He deals. 19 to 23. Dealing. He should be a starter. So confident. <laughs> yeah. So not even a, he came in with 55 seconds left in the last game. Pew, pew, pew. And he's he's been standing on the sideline this entire time, doing nothing, doing less than what punters and kickers do. At least punters and kickers kick into a net, try to stay a little bit loose. They have to stand for 45 minutes. This guy, three hours and 45 minutes, just standing yeah. there with a clipboard, sitting down, said, and then he comes jogging in, clips that thing, and it's like. It's been shoe time. Yeah. That's how he feels. He owns the moment at all times. Him coming in, obviously, earlier than he did the first week. But, like, he knows Steichen's offense very well. The boys all have massive respect for him. Whenever I went to training camp, they were like, yeah, Anthony Richardson's awesome. We respect and appreciate him. But Gardner Minshew also hilarious human being that has come into our team. Yeah. And he was talking about being a starter whenever he came, and he was talking about being a starter in Philadelphia. He has that mindset, understands that Anthony Richardson's the future of the Indianapolis Colts. They spent the number four overall pick on him. But I am so thankful that we signed Minshew, Ooh. and I appreciate the fact that he's a dog. Yeah. Like, Minshew is a dog through and through. Doesn't do as much social media stuff as he used to. Mm -mm. Only cares about ball. Mm -hmm. So all he was cares about there is ball. His dad? Was his dad there? I hope so. I hope they had that moment after the game yeah. in, the, in the parking lot. They could say, oh, yeah. yeah, we fucking did it. Mm -hmm. Yet again. I love Minshew. Yeah. I'm appreciative of him. But <laughs> I don't need to be seeing him every single week. Mm, right. Feels well. like he might. What's going on? Whoa. Two weeks so in a row. First week, knee. 100%. Yep. First week, it was a knee. But Whoa. didn't miss any practice. And there was no scans, okay? So I guess they just looked at it and said, yeah, you're good, mm -hmm. even though you left the game? Probably. If it was me, Probably. yeah. I mean, he got clobbered, and I, I saw some people were confused if it was a knee or head last week. Oh, so you're oh, saying? Oh, and this so week maybe, once again. Oh, we got it. Yeah. Yeah, because that was a big shot to, like, his top back. Yeah, right yeah. at the end. Right, right up here, he which was a new helmet. Yeah. But they were saying he was down on the ground whenever that hit happened, which re-aggravated the knee injury that mm -hmm. happened earlier in the game that we saw. Mm -hmm. He was early yes. stumbling to get up, and it was like, oh, no. That was the first big hit this guy took. He's already out. He sticks in the game all the way to the fourth quarter. They said he re-aggravated the knee. He's out. Maybe, though, huh? Yeah, that's what that, That's just what some people were saying. And then especially because of how kind of similar that hit yesterday he, yesterday he took to the Tua concussion from the Bills game where he fell back and slammed his head. That's what people yeah. were kind of connecting the two dots there. How do you feel about the fact that we're two games into this thing and we have two exits from the quarterback that is going to be the future. And also a quarterback that was drafted to our team to run. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. running yeah. is a massive reason why a lot of people are saying, hey, we got to protect him and got to have him do this. It's like he was brought in to this is yeah. Yeah. this is the offense. that Shane Steichen, be, he's electrified. Yeah, use yeah. him. He is remarkable. They need to do this with Justin Fields, to be honest with you. Yes. Bingo. They need to let him be what he is, which is a running exactly. quarterback who can throw, but he's a runner, most importantly. Let him do that. If you're going to have success, mm -hmm. let's worry about the now instead of the future. They have him running. And it hasn't been that many big shots, seemingly. No. The one to the knee didn't feel – that felt like a standard – tackle that might have just got unlucky and then this one here clear whiplash of the back of his head but how quickly he gets up and does his thing i don't think any of us were worrying that one hurts two games straight yeah. though we lose our guy who's the future well, how do you how do we man is this what what are we doing you, how do we do this you things? talked about it earlier kind of the, the yin to the yang so you're obviously gonna have you know the great <sighs> athletic plays out there on the edge that's a that's a tough shot at the back of the dome to on that turf but this is the downside of it you oh. know guys getting banged mm. up and uh, missing time. And regardless how big you are, just like Trevor Lawrence told him last week, you got to take care of yourself. The hits 
add up um, in, on this level, man. So, hate to see. Hey, love to have a great backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, but like you said, hate to see him twice in the first two games. He's electrifying. Yeah, Everybody he needs is. to know. Watching him is a fun watch. So, there were people on the internet talking about how he didn't finish this run either. Yeah, kind of. So yeah. he, he like kind of let up there because he didn't see the guy. He like kind of stands up right there on oh, the yeah. coast in, and then he turns it back on. And they're like, if he runs full speed, is he past that guy? Maybe. Tough to kind of look back and say that. I, but they were saying he needs to learn to finish a play. It's like I think he thought he was. He yeah. thought he was. He yeah. saw him. Yeah, I think he maybe if he drops that shoulder, that'll protect him a little more because he did just stand up. He saw. He, he, he was looking right at him though. Maybe he didn't think he would. He would smack him that hard because he was going to score anyway. But you got to, you know. Protect yourself a little bit, big fella. Yeah, that did feel like one of those moments where his entire life he's been the fastest, biggest guy. And when he's that close to the end zone, he's probably just waltzed in. And this was not like a welcome to the NFL, but hey, unless you are a couple <laughs> yards in that end zone, you are going to get hit yeah. immediately. He bounces up close. immediately. Yeah. Yes. Two touchdowns. We're very grateful that we have him, but that hey, we can't have it every hey, week. What, credit to his offensive line, though. No one's not, no one's smacking him on the head. I saw multiple guys scoring touchdowns, and the offensive lineman, big old bear mm. paws, just smacking the hell out of their helmet. I'm like, man, you that does not look like it ever feels good. Yeah, Ooh. I agree with you. Ooh. Oh, god damn! Big shot. Yeah, look, they know. Look, they're hitting him on the shoulder. Too. Oh, 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 I think that hook. was the last one. Fries that, with a left hook. Yep. Thanks a lot, fries. Fries get a little yeah. stiff. Crunchy fries, the best fries. Mm -hmm. How about those soggy yeah. ass fries that people That's eat? The can't worst. do it. Can't have it. Flaccid fries. That can't be. Like no, that can't be anybody's fries. favorite, is it? Mm. Season? Which ones with the? Um, well, kind of like um, like the old Cajun? checkers fries. Like the yeah. The old checkers fries. Okay. Yeah, the old oh. checkers rallies type. Yep. Best oh. fries of all time. Miami subs. Well yeah. Said. Throwback. Still open down there in Miami. Still open. Really? You still have Miami subs? We yeah. had one in You Plum. lucky son yeah. of a bitch. That thing shut down. They go, though? Oh, yeah, I, see a lot of I don't think I've ever had Miami it's crazy subs. that didn't last in Plum. It was good. Legitimately. <laughs> fried everything. Sandwiches were incredible. It had a lot of neon lights, though. It was great. I, I didn't think it was. I, didn't, I thought it was only a Florida thing. No, yeah, we had it in Plum. It was so good. Well, did an Their wings were fucking it? delicious. It's, the what? The wings. I don't think I remember the oh, wings. They were, hmm, don't he like wingy? Tony do like what? They had yogurt Sundays too. They had it all, my friend. Damn. It was a great hangout too. It looks like that place is awesome. Right. They yeah, smoked darts inside that place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly. Got yeah. replaced by a Wendy's. Do you remember back in the day, smoking section, non smoking section? That was awesome. Yeah, airplane. Yeah. That was so cool. That was 1987. But most recently, <laughs> you know, like restaurants had is smoking. That one the divider. Yeah. Oh. The divider. Yeah. You could see everything other side. I, I finally got fed up on a plane. One and time. I, yeah. And I was like, why do you guys still have? When was the last time? I look, it's like 1986 or 1987. Huh. And they still put it up. They're like, no smoking. No shit. We know yeah. you can't smoke on an airplane. But I guess back in the day, they were just wide open on those. Yeah, things. I thought. Walking, waltzing, up and on the planes, off the planes, smoking wherever you want to do. Yep. Mm. And those restaurants, they used to just let people smoke oh, yeah. on the other side of a little bit of a, oh. a window or something like that. Yeah. That was good times back in the day. <laughs> Can't help but have more grit in your system. Oh, Whatever, yeah. That's a life. Always. Absolutely. It didn't end that long ago. There was recently where as long as you didn't serve food or you ser served food only on the other side, you could smoke. It was Bring it back. Yeah. Pretty electric in the bar, yeah. Bring yeah. it back. Uh, Dwayne Johnson has responded to our thank you to him. He said, the honor was mine, Pat Magfa show. Hell of a Friday we had. Chopped up with you and the boys Friday morning on your show and drank tequila. Why? And Friday night we rocked the house in Denver. You are an asshole for 10 minutes straight. He was having a blast out there. That was oh. incredible. Him him doing the whole crowd. How about Fox having to mute it? Did you hear that? I didn't know this. I did not yeah. like see the They let so many mute. assholes go through. It made no sense. Like Just let it go. Yeah, they couldn't keep up. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Just let it go. Yeah, pay it. Asshole is a problem. Also, it's you know it's a Friday night at like not at you know, like if kids are watching that, they're probably old enough to be able to hear asshole and not have it like just completely change the trajectory yes. of their life. Especially with the Rock up there. Come on, it's the Rock. We, we, got, we can do whatever we want. We had Dick Good up four there. years. So I, so Dick Good, Dick Good's trying to keep up with the Rock. I mean, <laughs> that place was awesome. Unreal. I mean, it was literally, and I was. I, at one point, I was trying to check in the middle, like, who's going where. It was almost a perfect line. Yeah. It was like a perfect divider. That crowd immediately. Well, see, The Rock's going to – we're going to have a moment here. Yeah. yeah. Just like him pitching it as if it was here. You see, in three seconds, this side of the arena is going to say, you are. You see. <laughs> and then this side is going to say, an asshole. And I'm like, 
that sounds like a lot. We're asking for a lot here because cadence and everything. Yeah, yep. You know, who, is everybody going to be on? Because you've heard mm -hmm. AJ Hall, AJ Hall, AJ Hall, AJ, 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 you know, it's hard to get yeah. people on. Yeah. So for four different words to all be in you, boy, that Denver crowd. Just like that. Nailed the it. first one was as loud as the last one and everyone in between. It was beautiful. God. And then he flipped it. And I'm just standing there like an asshole in the middle. Like, this <laughs> is so cool. Yeah. This is awesome. They would have won for 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they, if it would have. For sure. That's so cool. So How was the uh, Terramana? It's really good. Smooth. Yeah. Glorious. Smooth. I did yeah. find out that fucking guy does just walk around with one on ice. At all times. At all times. Respect. Oh, yeah. He, he showed up right at the, uh, he showed up right at the dinner. And like, just all right. Let me open this up. Yeah. All right. Here, can we get a couple of glasses with ice, please? Thank you. Where'd you guys go? Applebee's. Pop that thing down. open. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. I'm just like, yeah, dude. I had a bottle of this earlier. Yeah. You know, on the show, if you do recall. <laughs> Doing it again. He's I like, guess. we did. Like he was. He's. I did not expect him to be as human as he was. Me at either. all. You know what I mean? He was. He was so cool. <sighs> That's tough. His world. Yeah, stinks for him. Yeah, for sure. His world is a lot. Yeah, when you guys guy. were introducing him, like when you stood up and saw him across the lawn and he was the sea of people around oh, yeah. him, just the presence coming was awesome. Dude doesn't let anybody drive. He drives. Mm -hmm. So love that. Like, uh, we'll pick you up, Mr. Rock. He's like, no, please do not. I would like drive. I'll open my own. Please tell them not to open my door. I don't like that. I'll get my own food. Thank you. I'll do this whole thing. It's like trying to remain a human through it all. So much mana. Trying, a lot of mana. Great mana. mana. What we're having here is good mana. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do some phone calls, then we'll do the overreactions from around the internet this morning. Ty, how were they? Pretty good? Yeah, they weren't bad. I, I, I think not as good as week one. Whoa! Oh, Whoa. Come we on, got a lot, a lot of new people kind of being introduced to overreaction Monday, so hopefully they'll kind of you know get the, the hang of things here as we move forward. Well, I can't get the keypad for this thing to open, so let's do the overreaction okay. oh, yeah. from around the internet here. I mean, what the fuck? Not a whole lot of what, mana. Yeah, that's yeah, still it? Adele. No, I'm just trying to. It's it's the Adele, yeah. Yeah. The right. Adele. Lenovo yeah, from that. Walmart. No, the Adele. I'm just trying to get the keypad, and it says, "Give me the keypad." <laughs> yeah, that's a classic Dell move. <laughs> that work? Didn't. I thought, I thought I, might have you hit it 32 yeah. times. Yep. I thought, I thought maybe there would be a chance. The hoop. 33 is the lucky number. Throw in the hoop. <laughs> I just plugged into so many. Throw in the hoop, yep. Can I, can you just. Oh, man. Frisbee toss into the hoop. I'm restarting it now. Restarting You'd be just like Tom Brady with that thing. If I threw this thing in there? Oh, oh yeah. Tom Brady break that iPhone. Bah, bah. Sorry, Microsoft Surface. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's Monday of the NFL season, so that means we sent out a bird call this morning asking people to lose their minds on the internet, and it would be just fine. We would not judge you. No, no. We'd actually be very understanding, so much so that we'd celebrate you, and 10 of them would make their way onto this particular program. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for I Don't Want to Overreact, but... but... Hashtag, I Don't Want to Overreact, but... but... Got an intro, Ken Dorsey there, uh, <laughs> reacting properly, not overreacting at all. We appreciate that. Let's dive in, shall we? This became number one trend in the United States, by the way. The oh. Shout out to everybody out there kicking some ass. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but the team I'm most scared of in the AFC is no longer the Chiefs, it's the Dolphins. If Al Davis would have my, had Mike McDaniel, they would have won five Super Bowls. The only person that has harnessed speed more effectively was Pete Mitchell. Go Bills. Hell yeah to old Kev E. Now, this guy likes to sing songs that are very sad, mm -hmm. but Guru Eric <laughs> has a good time, and I think I'm picking up what he's putting down. I agree with what Mike McDaniel is able to extract from his roster is certainly beneficial to everybody down there because they're faster, more explosive, Why? more talented, Why? and seem to be in better shape than everybody. Why is Mike McDaniel so successful with all this talent as others have maybe have not been, AJ? I don't know. I mean, what makes him such a great coach? He seems like he is all football all the time, and all he cares about is finding a way to get the ball to his playmakers, give the ball to them in space. I mean, that's what football is now. How do I get some, create some space, get the ball to my playmakers, and let them go to work? And that seems to be what they're doing. Like we showed earlier, that one play, there's multiple plays with Tyreek, and he didn't have to have crazy numbers, and he still has a massive impact on how the defense is trying to defend him. First off, a little respect. It's Lieutenant Pete Mitchell. Uh, so for next yeah. time, get that. But their four-by-one sure. team with A.J. Mostert. What? Waddle, Hill, they all, they all run four, sub 4-3. Four, 
I mean, no. And in modern football, yeah, the ability to use speed and space yeah. is at an all-time high, mm-hmm. and he has really—I don't want to say harnessed it, but he has taken advantage of the weapons that he has more than anybody in the past. Yeah, and they're not just track guys either, like Waddle Hill. Like these guys can move side to side. They're quick. They're good with the ball in their hands. And um, you know, we talk about the difficulty, you know, to game game plan and, and adjust to this motion and stuff. It's also hard to like install. That's why you don't see a ton of offenses doing it because it's hard to install and have all these mm-hmm. different motions and different sets and formations. Um, but like when they took that challenge that that time when the Dolphins didn't have any timeouts and they think had a 10 second runoff. Yep. I knew without a doubt whatever play they came to the line with they were going to execute and score at that point. So um, shout out to Mike McDaniel. Yeah, we starting to put him a little bit uh, higher in the whole respect. Bucket, I believe we should. Every game we assume they're going to have an offensive setup and scheme and strategy that they should win. Once Vic Fangio and mm-hmm. the defense kind of, yep. this team's going to be a problem yeah, and still are. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we talk about Tyreek Hill and Waddle all the time and, the, like, you know, other defensive coordinators, like, they know they're trying to get them the ball and they and we know that people are trying to stop them and he still manages to to find a way to get them a ball, the ball, like, in space where they can actually make plays. Like, that's a lot easier said than done. Let's go to the next overreaction from around the internet this morning. This one's from Gavin, 24-24. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but but the Cowboys have the most dominant defense in football, and Big Mike McCarthy is 10 times the play caller Kellen Moore is. Getting rid of Kellen was the move of the offseason for Dallas. Big Mike getting put over. AJ, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I, I love hearing it. Uh, Big Mike was my uh, my old coach in Green Bay, so I'm a little bit biased towards him, but I do like to see him getting some credit for for being a play caller down there. I know their offense hasn't had to do too much uh, this far because their defense has been so dominant taking the ball away. But, I mean, it's never a bad thing to start out 2-0 and and feel pretty good about where your offense is and the fact your quarterback hasn't turned the ball over. Yeah. yeah, Dak not turning the ball over is awesome. I think Big Mike's relationship with Dak is a part of the reason why it's all going so well, why you get Dak to believe in the hype that he doesn't have to make every single play. Hey, mm-hmm. we just need to manage this football game. People say game manager is a bad thing for a quarterback. We disagree. We need you to be a game manager. And when the play shows up to CD – you need to make the play, mm-hmm. and Dak has seemingly every single time. Those two on the same page has been a beautiful thing. Yeah, I see what Ty's saying now, too, because that one doesn't actually feel like an overreaction. Like, that just feels like what the reality is. Their defense is one of the most dominant, definitely the most dominant right now in the NFL, and Dak, he's not making any mistakes like he was last year. I, what, what did Arch say that – he didn't go two games the entire year without having a pick, and the first two are like the two smoothest games we've possibly ever he, seen from him. He tried on one. He got, lo- yeah, he yeah. got lucky with one. Sauce, okay. sauce could have housed one in the, oh, in the yeah. flat. Kind of double clutched and went late. Um, but uh, for the most part, I mean, every quarterback's going to make that mistake. But Let's go to another overreaction from around the end. Uh, uh, Jay Shields. This is somebody, isn't it? Yeah, I believe he had one uh, last year. He's he's popped up a couple times. This guy knows how to overreact on Mondays. <laughs> hey, we appreciate it. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but my Bengals stink. Same shit, different toilet. We get another 0-2 start. The offense took forever to wake up. Jamar barely gets thrown to. The defense can't stop a nosebleed, and Zach Taylor stinks as a play caller. A loss next Monday night, and we're fucked. Uh-oh. All right. Well, thanks for breaking it down. Well, <laughs> seems seems maybe, like maybe it's not a big overreaction. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they stink, but a loss next Monday night would put them uh, significantly behind the eight ball. I would say. I would say, and then just assuming that because they have in the past done great after a slow start means they'll do it this year yet again. I guess it's going to be tough for some fans to buy into in the moment. <laughs> but we got to have faith, right? Got to have faith. Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. How's that calf? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a big thing. I mean, oh, even that, if he's scary. out like two weeks or something like that and they start 0 4, they like, have no bad. They are fucked. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to another overreaction. Cincinnati bringing the heat. Art of the Dad Bod at Art of the Dad Bod. Pretty simple. I don't think there's an art to it. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but Jimmy G is playing like a what? dude who rode the coattails of two great head coaches and somehow ended up with winning record. This guy stinks. <laughs> Hashtag, stink for Shador. Nice. People are saying uh, Caleb Williams or Drake May. Mm-hmm. Art of the Dad Bod saying, listen. I like to eat like shit. I don't work out much. I'm living my life. Sue me. Don't actually. Shout out Brett Favre. Give me Shador Sanders on the Las Vegas Raiders. Also need to figure out what's going on with Chandler Jones. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a missing piece that is not there that is certainly probably making their team worse. Jimmy G had a great start to that whole thing. Obviously did not finish that well, but that team has a lot going on. I, I don't think I fully comprehend it. Well, and it's kind of similar with the Patriots as far as offensively. How does your you know, offense looked that good to start the game with that opening script and then 
right after that, you only scored three points for the rest of the year. What are they running? Game. Like a, a yard or hand, a yard of carry or something like that, too? Josh Jacobs hasn't done anything. I believe he had he negative, negative two yards, yards yesterday. So like oh. nine <laughs> carries or something. Oh! Yeah. Art of the dad bod. I think those meals are going to get worse. I love the fact that there's an art to it, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it? I, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. You eat whatever you want. You don't work out. You probably don't sleep very well. You probably booze a lot. And there, smoke cigs. Mm-hmm. Smoke. Yeah. But there's you're lucky. Cigs. You can't get too fat because then you're just a fat. Yeah. So there's yeah. dad bod it, and then there's dad bod. It's like where you, you're holding on. People are still you're holding on. You're not letting it go completely. But there's some people that are always going to be dad bod. Can't get fat. Shout out Nick Bramado. Exactly. Yeah, it's just part of it. He, yeah. he eats like a full asshole. Mm-hmm. That yeah. guy doesn't work out. Eats like an asshole. He does. Yep. Just looks like kind certainly fatter. Than normal, but not like <laughs> just obnoxious. Fine. Yeah, just because the way his body is. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I he, guess. Yeah. Every, uh, genetics are crazy, man. It's true. What are you okay? You've yeah. seen Nick. I didn't know. What do you, I didn't you have no eyes. I didn't think Nick was is Nick dad bod guy. I don't know. Nick's pretty skinny guy. Bingo. That's what I'm. That's the point. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's accurate. Nick eats disgustingly. It's terrible. And his body just can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Foxy. Awesome. When Foxy gets older, yeah. he'll always just be able to. Devour whatever food he wants, and he'll never oh, yeah. get like super. Can fat. you imagine if that changed though? If that changes when you're like 50, that's tough for people. To <laughs> oh my god, it does. And then they die, and then that's it. Whoa, not a lot, of, lot, not a lot of super old fat people. No, no, that's kind of one of the things. Italy, Worst Italy's got some super old fat people. That Darius is, is another guy never not, gonna get fat. Nope, oh, that's no great chance. French toast. No chance. No fat people. Some guys every it's day you eat that guys. French toast. <laughs> yes, you could be that skinny, skinny. My kids do. It's a bad. I'd rather just be fat all around. I agree. And be skinny with just the... You're talking about trailer trash, just the gut here, body kind of built like a like a wine bottle. Mm. You're yeah. saying you don't like Hell that? Yeah. No. Like a no skinny like fat guy? You want to be a skinny fat guy with like no. little baby arms and a gut? Yeah, I hate that. I hate You'd that. rather just be obnoxious I'd rather fat. just be fat yeah. all around. Yeah. Ah, Probably smart. Interesting. Probably smart. Hey, I mean, why are we listening to Debo? The guy's never been a day over fat, so he True. can shut up. Not a single day over fat. Yeah. yeah. Point. Yeah. What a life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a prick, actually. Now. So French yeah. toast. I had good French toast this morning, he said. I had Chinese French food. toast sticks. All right, Nick. At 10.30. I didn't even know they deliver that. <laughs> Crab rangoon for breakfast. Just good living his best life. <laughs> yeah. Won't even notice. Can do that for the next 30 days. Nobody would even notice. Sweet. It's, it's disgusting. That's the art. It is the art of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Having the body that doesn't get fat. Yeah. Boom. Congrats to the art of the day. Congrats. Good go, Art. Congrats. Nick's Bob Ross of this thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. <laughs> Who's another famous painter? Magellan. Da Vinci. There it is. Van Gogh. Magellan. To Cap. Nope. Da Vinci. <laughs> yeah, I just started thinking about uh, Picasso. Ninja Turtles. Basquiat. Da Vinci came to mind. Basquiat. Who's that? Yeah. Michael Basquiat. Oh. Banksy. Banksy's a great artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to he's still doing it. Banksy. Yeah. Did he die? I haven't seen anything pop up of his. Oh, of secret. Well, how do you know if he's dead if you don't even know who he is? Yeah, it could be stolen valor too. Exactly. Like, do we know if it's ever him? Mm. Who is it? Is it? It's a multitude of people just claiming to be. This is like DJs that wear helmets. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like, do we know if that's the person? Because allegedly, I've heard that one of these little helmeted DJs mm-hmm. did like five shows in one night. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what? How is that possible? <laughs> well, it's like, well, you put the helmet on, you see. Great and business model. There. You, you yeah. click it, and you press play, and wow, <laughs> you're marshmallow. <laughs> you do one of these. I'm not saying I, don't, I did not say it was marshmallow. No, no, no. I, I don't even know this you story. It. But it is one of those types of DJs. Yes. Yes. Well, and you know what they're saying about they're, they're, they're doing 20 shows That's a week. Yeah. Great racket, right here. Great racket. Yeah. And how about meet and greets and photo ops? Yeah, same thing. You, this person wants to pay quadruple for photos. No problem. <laughs> Pull one of those hats on tie. Tie go over. Yep. Yeah. Go do the hey. All right, Connor, we need you in Denver. Let's do it. You need to do it. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great work. It's what Kanye's doing right now, is what they're saying. That is not what they're saying. That's not. That is is what they're saying. On the internet saying. And that's what those people are saying. They're saying that wasn't him on the boat. They're saying he wore that mask all that time because when. Those weren't his cheeks. Eventually. I got it. Well, well, if you look at the side by off, side, I was going to look at I the mean, side by side. Wouldn't be hard to find some guy. Hey, hey, you want to put a mask on and go get sucked off on a boat? I mean, you'd have a line of people <laughs> willing to do that. Yeah. So. Hey, you want my wife to suck you off? It's not video. Is there pictures? Yeah, yeah there, there are pictures. pictures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there was oh, no I pictures didn't. of the actual act. No, just Kanye's butt cheeks from behind. Allegedly, oh, Kanye's butt cheeks. Yeah. And then a head <laughs> popping up. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, For okay. air. That was it.
Wow. I did not know it was that graphic. Shut oh, up. Yeah. You knew. You yeah, knew. You For real. I did not see his cheeks. I did not see Kanye's yeah, cheeks. Yeah, Very he flat was, cheeks. Yep. One honest, company stuck, didn't let him go on. As soon as I seen the cheeks, Boom. I Boom. thought to myself, Kanye needs to get in better shape. Yeah. Here's some flat, bad cheeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? No cakes, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't get to a point where you got no cakes. Yeah. That means you're doing nothing. You know what I mean? Ass. Walk somewhere Stop. at some point. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ooh. Let's go to another overreaction. Yeah. Ryan King. <laughs> Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but... but... You better look out if Mahomes has a top five defense. The league will be put on notice. The Chiefs offense had an F-grade type of game and still had over 400 yards, 13 penalties, and three turnovers. Still won. The Chiefs are the team until further notice. We agree. Building a dynasty. Yeah. And whenever I say the Miami Dolphins on Wednesday this Super Bowl, if it was to happen and represent the AFC, I'm saying, like we all are, the Chiefs, over the past few years, even though they've been dominant, have never covered, only get hot later. They're kind of gamers, more keep things close, and then they do a magical run at the end, and they end up at the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about the Chiefs right now, even though they haven't looked their peak Chief self. First game with Travis Kelsey back, first game with Chris Jones back, feels like... They're going to get going again, and I agree with him. If that defense can play great, here we go. Trevor Lawrence held to nine. That's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris Jones comes back and immediately has an impact. I mean, that guy is unbelievable in the middle there. And No, I'm not worried about the Chiefs at all because they, when it matters, they will figure it out. All it takes is one game where they put it together, offense, defense, special teams, where everyone said, oh, here we go, Chiefs Super Bowl again. I'm, I do that a lot, too. Is that sound analysis? Yeah, because we're betting on the humans, yes. not the game. <laughs> yes. I'm betting on Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and the boys. Mm -hmm. Spagnola. I'm betting on them yep. to figure it out. I think that's the right play until further notice as yeah, well. Yeah, they will definitely figure it out. And you got a new OC with Matt Nagy, so it, it, Andy's probably calling plays still, but everything that goes yeah. into it, all the installs and the practice and the meetings, walkthroughs, you know, the OC usually handles a lot of those type of things. So it's going to be some adjustment, but it is Patrick Mahomes, and that is – the safest bet probably in football right now. Chris Jones, one and a half sacks. Welcome back. Dog, uh, Chris. Uh, Travis Kelsey, he moves into fourth place all time on a receptions list among tight ends yesterday as he continues his historic career. Tweets out NFL 345. Okay. He has a touchdown as well uh, uh, with being back. I assume the Chiefs are going to be A-OK. -okay, and if the defense can ball, look out. We got back to back. We have some breaking news here on oh. Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes have restructured his agreement, giving him 200. $110.6 million between 2023 and 2026, the most money in NFL history over a four-season span. His compensation for those years is now guaranteed. Also, the Chiefs and Mahomes plan to revisit the agreement again after the 2026 season, as told by ESPN to ESPN by Equity Sports CEO Chris Cabot, who negotiated the deal on behalf of Mahomes. Congratulations, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, so whenever we, yep, whenever we saw the Joe Burrow deal, yeah. the Lamar Jackson deal, Deal, the Jalen Hurts deal, every Herbert deal, every right. deal we saw come out that surpassed Patrick Mahomes, who is currently leading the dynasty of this generation mm -hmm. after winning a Super Bowl and an MVP and proving on quarterback that he's also lovable and the guy. Yeah. The face of the NFL was getting severely underpaid. They go back, get a deal done after this Chris Jones deal gets done. Congratulations to Brett Veach and the Chiefs, seemingly locking up their guy, making him happy, and doing the right thing yeah aj Woo. doing the right thing aj did any of us have any idea that this was on the horizon and about to happen no because patrick mahomes said hey listen i'm just about winning games a lot of people though had been projecting that there was going to be a conversation after the joe burrow conversation and jalen because how low patrick mahomes is falling down the annual payment list for quarterbacks and he's the guy of the nfl right now so it's being speculated about it was being projected about but patrick mahomes never Made a stink. He never oh, said anything oh. other than, I'm just trying to win games. Now he's getting $210 million guaranteed over the next three years or whatever with a window for negotiation. That's great negotiation. That's that's negotiating good faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that's two sides understanding what they have in each other. Hell yeah for them. Yeah, and I assume the cap hit is just nothing because this, this is what usually how th this goes. Is you get a massive signing bonus up front or is it just 52 one, five for the next four? The Niners signed Bosa and opened up like $16 million somehow. Bingo. They like These big... Yeah. Deals happen, yeah. and then all of a sudden, salary cap just opens up and expands because the way salary cap gymnastics are done in the modern NFL with 
prorating the signing guaranteed money over the length of a deal, but the deals can have like five voided years on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, this deal is 10 years long or eight years long with five voided years. Oh, this is a three-year deal with five years of fake? No, no, no. Voidable. Well, that's not a contract. Mm -hmm. If it's voidable, that's not a you can only kick the can so far, they always say. Well, yeah, you just keep kicking it until the next GM has to handle it. Yep. And then if you have Patrick Mahomes, you just kick that thing as hard and as far as you can. Yep, right. And just hope to keep getting the can to kick and then do it again and again and again. I think this is brilliant. I love that they did it, and congrats to Patrick. Become the highest paid guy of all time. And also good on Mahomes because, I mean, we've seen that he's not really this kind of guy, but he could have been like, oh, no, let's just do four years, $240 million. Like, give me 60 I want to make sure that I'm – Still up there, and it's just, and you know, for him to just be like, ah, fuck it, 52 million a year is good enough for me. I think that's a great spot to end this thing. Can't get to the phones because I can't open this thing. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I've tried a hundred times. I restarted it, dismissed this lock screen, to sign in. Then it won't give you me clear them cookies, right? Well, it won't give me it's Dell, you know, you never know. I can't get it to keep it. Then it says sign in options, and it has a little smiley face, which would be facial recognition. We do not have set up, mm -hmm. but then there's a keypad right here. You think that'd be the keypad. And you can hear. He, I mean, you're trying. Yeah, you you're can trying hear the clip. to get it. You are trying. You can hear it. Hit it harder. The more the harder you hit it, it'll go. Well, that's like an elevator. You hit the. Yeah, uh -huh. hit it a bunch of times. Closes faster. Doing what you can. It's not open. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You tried. I want an answer. Calls. I just go ahead and get there. Oh, oh man. That would have been a good way to go out of here. Yeah, yeah. look good. I would do a giveaway tomorrow for one of those. I will make them for the team. Okay. okay. I will make them for the program. I will make them for the show. Hell yeah. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday tomorrow. Be a friend. Tell a friend about it. You know, I think it's probably going to be pretty big. Mm -hmm. What has he been up to? Have you chatted with him since our chat on Friday? How's he doing? Uh, not really. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I think he's hanging out, recuperating. Probably, probably pretty antsy to get that thing moving, I would imagine. Did you tell him about the Keith Olbermann thing being a home run mm -hmm. on the internet? Did you let him know? Bomb. I did let him know it was a clever, clever quip he had, yes. Go get your faith booster, Keith. Hey, he he just... sat and thought about it. He thought about it for a second. Was <laughs> and a that's what really came enjoyed up. that one. Yeah. Yeah. A couple. Uh, there certainly man. was. Yeah. Did Keith respond? I would assume Keith would respond. It's coming at some point so smug. Yep. I cannot wait yeah. to hear how smug it is. You know yeah. what I mean? It's going to be a fastball, too. I mean, Keith's got his way. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, Keith has the pen. Might be biding his time. Just waiting for something to happen to Aaron. Maybe even, you know, next year, year after, and then he'll come knocking. Yeah, it's like a bamboo tree. Bingo. Mm -hmm. oh. That's right. I mean, he doesn't forget. You got to plant the seed and water it. Mm hmm. For five years. That's right. Five years. And you get nothing. Nothing at all. And then all of a sudden, guess what? Boom. Beef. That bamboo tree is the biggest tree in the yard. Yeah. Yep. But for five years, it was nothing. You stayed committed to something without seeing any benefit from it. That's called patience. That's called persistence. And that's probably what. Old Keith's going to be doing. Yep. Just sitting down there getting watered. I hate this guy. Mm -hmm. I say anything. Ooh. And then all of a sudden something's going to pop. And then guess what? That bamboo old oh. Yeah. Oh. I got it. Might write a whole book. He could. It might be an entire book about it. Yeah. Does he write his own shit? Or is he? Oh, yeah. Wait, I, think, I think he's the only one that can come up with Keith Olbermann stuff. Yeah. It's like Skip. I think Skip's, Skip's only creative producer. Mm -hmm. He's still doing it. Skip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're killing it on Undisputed. Yeah. Well, they're actually getting killed on Undisputed, but what do you mean? No, they're still the clips, doing it. clips, clips, clips oh. are doing good, right? Clips are doing good. Yeah, I don't need, uh, sure. <laughs> you sound like a hating asshole. I'm not being a hating asshole. I'm just looking at the numbers and I'm, you know, observing and reporting. But what numbers are real and what aren't? You know what I mean? We're in this whole game now. No, the clip, the clips. I'm not saying like the numbers are saying for how. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. If this one goes in, I'm gonna make one tomorrow. Okay. Ooh. Oh, man. too strong. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a spot. That's though. bad news for tomorrow. Yeah. I want to let you guys know. Yeah, yeah, Duke, get Duke down there if you want to throw the real thing. Duke's a little bit too fat. Might help. Are you guys, uh. Nice. Oh. oh. Ooh, that looks good, too. Oh. oh. This one. Yeah. Oh. One more. Oh. Two more. Oh. Underneath, underneath here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 o
Oh. That's oh. in. Oh. oh! That thing's in the air. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh! Uh huh. Uh oh, boys. Should try to this land one of the bear's head. Oh, that might go. Damn it. It's close. Yeah. yeah. Just live it around yeah. it. Oh, calibrated. It's calibrated. Oh, it's that, yeah. that was Damn. tough day. That was great. Tough day. Felt good about it. Tough day. Balls everywhere. Tough day. I mean, this is a graveyard. This is a graveyard failure. Okay. That's awesome. Damn shame. We'll be better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's a reason to come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. A reason to come back for tomorrow. Yep. Oh yeah, we got to pick winners. Good call. Uh, here we go, AJ. Now I will say the current standings from this past weekend show me in a little bit better light than you. I do believe. I think we have the graphic. We're pulling them up right now. And first one was wrong. Okay. Oh. So I don't know what the score is. If the first graphic is wrong, I do not know how we did this. I didn't week. check, did, but I don't think I did very well. It did help you. Oh, it helped the me? The updated graphic. Oh! Are we good? Oh! Ooh. Who's seeing it feel? <laughs> Who's seeing it feel pretty good right now? Mm. <laughs> that was a great weekend. Yeah. I'm pretty pumped about that. College uh -huh. and pro. Holy hell. Uh -huh. Big week. I'm starting to see this yeah, thing. Bad. Bad. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's go into this evening. AJ, uh, Saints, I Panthers. took the Texans. Are you sure? I took the Texans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys remember you didn't like the Colts. Remember you're yep. making fun of the Colts. Mm -hmm. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I hope you're happy Fair about it. Fair Anthony Richardson played for a quarter. Had two touchdowns. Yeah. That's eight touchdowns if he plays the whole game. Yeah. yeah. I'm no math with this, but he's probably scoring eight touchdowns yesterday. Yeah, a huge part of this, too, was the Atlanta-Green Bay game because because the spread was moving so much, had to just go money line. Oh, yeah, because it was a pick em. Yeah, it was a one-and-a-half yeah. spread. And they end up winning by one. Uh -huh. Shout out me getting a dub there. Sorry mm -hmm. about it, AJ. All right, let's dive into tonight. I believe it's a three-point spread for the Saints-Panthers game, over under 39-and-a-half. Who you picking, who you like here on Monday night on ESPN starting at 7.15 Eastern time? I know we're playing in Carolina, but I still like the Saints at minus three down there. I think Derek Carr gets it done. I like the Saints defense as well. Darius, your thoughts? Same. Saints win, Saints cover. All right, I'll be there as well with the Saints minus three in Charlotte. Then 8-15 in Pittsburgh, Ooh. Pennsylvania. Tone Diggs. There are one and a half, twos, and two and a halfs out there. Okay, so depending upon what you pick, you'll get the best favor. AJ, who do you like? I like the Browns at what, minus one and a half I get them? Mm -hmm. Yep. Darius? Yep. Browns. Browns win, Browns cover. Wow. Uh-oh. I think TJ still has a good game. That's all we yeah. care about. Got a backup tackle. He's a big oh, dude. No, no, no. Huge, you can't yeah. that ball. And look with the Bengals. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh. Added the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm picking the Browns. Throw the computer wow. Uh -oh. Throw the computer. That was going to be the super. I was going to pick the Steelers if that one went in. I was going to take two and a half because you're not supposed to. There's no way the Steelers should only be two and a half point dogs At with home. how they looked and how the Browns looked. I don't care. Did you see how they looked? Yeah. And then did you see how the Browns looked? Yes, I saw how the Browns looked, but we're acting like, you know, Deshaun Watson had 350 pass yards and ripped it up against the Bengals. All right, give me the Steelers plus two and a half. Hell yeah. Go. I'll take the Steelers plus two and a half. Woo! I don't like it. This is just strictly because I don't like it doesn't make sense to me. Like that doesn't. Yes. It doesn't make sense to me. So it just feels like that's going to be the way it goes. Have we thought about this? Obviously, this weekend um, I was in Colorado, so I was da dabbling with some of the local laws. Mm -hmm. Said it on SmackDown. I guess there was a conversation backstage uh, while I was talking by some people that were like, that looks a little high right now. And then two seconds later, I go, I've been participating in the local laws. Big pop, I guess, out of the back. <laughs> I guess big, big pop, which I appreciate. And you, how much AI are the books using right now? Probably all of them. Probably a ton. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what could they gather? Just all the data quicker than ever? Yes. yes. And narratives and decisions mm -hmm. and everything like that? They could run, like, 7 billion samples of the game. Trends and just, to yeah. figure out or what? Yeah. they. I mean, when it first started with chat GPT, that's actually something we tried to do when it was upgraded to, you know, being in sync with the internet so it could look stuff up. They could ask over and over and over again about situations, about if players aren't playing that normally will be. Like, they probably ran one with Amari Cooper. Yeah, in or out. Remember, Joe Buck mm -hmm. says in. Yeah. Adam Schefter says out. Uh -huh. Joe Buck says, oh, I guess Kevin Stefanski didn't see Schefter's tweet, <laughs> which yeah. was hilarious. Joe Buck yeah. being like, who are we believe in here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We believe in Schefter or we believe in the head coach of the football team? 
So this is going to be a big oh, this yeah. is source no off. Oh, yeah. Big we'll time. No tonight. We Ooh, will. No source was on point. This is a source off. Yes, it is. Massive standing point, too. I bet Cooper's good for half a point, maybe. But the AI that they are probably operating with on the book side, I think is going to continue to make them a difficult challenge, the sports books as a whole. Yeah. So we got to remember that. When, they're, when are they trying to work us? Yeah. You know, like two and a half, if you just go off that, feels like you're not. I'm going with the Steelers plus two and a half. Yeah. You're at minus one and a half with the Browns? Yes. So there's a chance we both get this year. Nice yeah. Little. Okay, there's a chance. Hopefully not, though. That'd be fun. That would it'd be, be really fun. Mm -hmm. It'd be, be cool. Good. Not for me. Not for you, but it'd be cool for... Yeah. And it, AI's can't Does take. Dane have? Which one's Dane on? Orlovsky, let's call him. Does he know that Mahomes <laughs> and Marty, Marty, uh, Marty Fish were just dogging him on yeah, the other? Yeah, Marty Fish and Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes? Oh, yeah. Marty Fish did? Yeah, Marty, well, Marty, yeah. Marty Fish replied, buried Orlovsky. Yeah. So the only people that see that are people that follow Marty Fish and Dan Orlovsky. Then Patrick Mahomes quote tweeted Marty's tweet and said, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. So he let yeah. all of his followers see it. So it was just like, uh, hey, Dan, oh, Dan, we're live, we're live, we're live, we're live. <laughs> okay, sweet Oakmont hat. I do believe the Oakmont hat with how tight it is Ooh. around your head is the reason why <laughs> Marty Fish said what he said. And then Patrick Mahomes quote tweeted it <laughs> while laughing in your face. Is everything okay? How's life on the internet right now with what has happened to you? <laughs> I got a really small head. I don't care that people are making fun of me for my small head, dude. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Grow it. I got a small head. I say I have small head. Take HG. Big ears and big nose. And and if you wanted to drop, say it. Say it. <laughs> say it, Dan. Come on, Dan. 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 Just, Just do Dan, it. Say it. I got big feet. There you go. There All you right, go. you nailed it. Hey, real quick, we need a piece of information from you so we can make our decisions. Who do you like tonight? Saints, Panthers, and obviously Brown Steelers. Uh, in our game, I like the Saints. Um, I shouldn't say that. Can't make a pick. Yep. Can't the, pick the, a team. The, dude, crazy stat. the Saints defense has not allowed more than 21 points in nine straight games. I just think the defense is too good. Okay. Um, as much as I love Bryce. And then with Cleveland, Pittsburgh, I know there's some concerns if um, Amari's going to play. I think their offense is too good up front. To, you know, a, without Cam for Pittsburgh is a big deal. Um, and I think they can cover on the back end. So I'll take Cleveland and I'll take New Orleans. Can't do it. All right. We appreciate the hell out of you, pal. Have a good game tonight. You're going to be on ESPN Monday Night Football. Wow. Let's go, man. Is he going to fart again? I'll have a good time, man. Fired up for it. Not as good as the past 72 hours for your life, but it'll be a good time. Buddy, I'm not on Monday Night Football. All is good. Enjoy yourself. Uh, AJ wants to know if you're going to fart directly into the microphone again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to try to try to not make a public embarrassment of my, uh, with myself this evening. No, you want – Dan, it was fun, It was funny. It was, it was relatable. Yeah. I know. You, do, do, do you think I'm concerned with that? No. That's right. You're a dog, okay. Dan. Like you. you look great, bud. Hey, thanks. You too, Dan. Your head is tiny. Holy shit. Yeah, it's a, I wear the same size hat as my son. Jeez, Jeez. Dan. going to spike your skull off the ground one day. What's that all about? I never, I never told you the story. Did I ever tell you the story about, I think it was Monday Night Football and, and uh, my helmet during the Eagles game? Oh. No, I would just turn around backwards. You look like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> 60 second story. So we're playing <laughs> on the road in Philly. I'm with Houston at this point. I'm the backup to Shab. Two minutes row right before the half. I always keep my helmet on like the electrical box, right? The, the, the thing that has all like the communications for the booth. Phones. Um, oh. And unknowingly, the equipment guys took my helmet from that right into the locker room to change the battery for the speaker and the helmet and didn't tell me. Two minute drill starts. Shab goes down, bangs his head with like I don't know how much time left. Not a ton, but maybe 40, 50 seconds. I can't find my helmet. I finally grab Garrett Graham's helmet, who was a tight end of ours at the time, and I put the helmet on, and it looks like um, uh, stormtroopers, like whatever that movie is. Uh, Spaceballs. Ginormous for me. Uh, and I walk into the huddle, and Andre Johnson is just dying laughing. So, uh, very small head over there. Well, hold on. How'd you get the play call? I mean, there's so many questions real quick. Well, the the play, like, I was from the sideline. I was coming from the sideline, so Coop gave me the play call real quick. And then after that, 
like it was hand signals. We always had like emergency hand signals to just in case like, you know, the, the speaker goes out or, or whatnot. So it's a tight end's helmet. Yeah. I can't hear it. <laughs> Is the speaker not working? No, I just I, I don't, it's not a helmet that has a speaker. No, it's not a speaker. I lost mine. Somebody stole my helmet. God yeah. damn. Way to hey, way to adjust, way to get past it, and way to battle adversity. Yeah. That's the Dan Orlovsky story. We appreciate you. Good to hear from you, bud. Everybody would like to say anything to him. Love tonight? you, Dan. Love you, Dan. Good luck tonight, Dan. Have fun. It's longer than an, a minute story. We need voiceovers of coaches in the booth, too, like Tony did yesterday. Watch yeah. film. Get like Tony Romo. Yes. I got you. Hey, Boston Connor, please don't send out a tweet tonight telling me how much I suck on calling games and that you prefer someone else. Don't do that because it'll just start a trend. Okay? We'll be watching the other game. Yeah, yeah. I'm not watching that game, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Appreciate the hell out of you, dude. <laughs> Hey, Dan. Hey, real quick. We are proud of you, dude. You're yeah, calling man. Monday Night Football, dude. That's, boy, that's a big deal. Love you, Dan. I'll Love be watching you, your game, Dan. I'll be watching your game. Yeah, yeah. First hour. We're on there. Appreciate you, buddy. Later, fellas. Dude's calling Monday Night Football. Let's go. Yeah. Big, big time. Big multi view. With Fowler. Yeah, multi view. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we can do both, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube TV. Pretty solid debut. Yeah. In Very my good. Life. Yeah. And I think they are going to, like, I would guess that. Within the next few weeks here, you're going to be able to pick your own exactly boxes. Yeah. I think that's coming. You can. You just got to scroll through a lot of them. But yeah. mm -hmm. AJ, woe is me. I had to sign into five TVs, yep. put them all on Wi-Fi, download YouTube TV, sign up for YouTube TV, do the whole thing. Because the first week we were down at the stadium. This week, first time at home, it took me 47 minutes to get that thing. But, boy. <laughs> Once those games kicked off. Yeah. Oh, it was great. Woo. One of them was Red Zone. He had some games around it, the multi view. The yeah. best. It's so, it's, hey, they did well moving to YouTube TV, yes, I think, they personally. Did. Yeah, a thousand times better than what it was last year, for sure. They said more than ever. Yes. Yeah. So, Sign ups. I believe that's a success story. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. that's good I news. think so. Sorry, Hulu. I couldn't even get the NFL ticket the last five years because it just wasn't available in my area. So, just as somebody who just signed into five TVs and pretty good at tech. <laughs> Sorry, Father. Yep, he's trying. I tried my best. You've seen it right there. I literally just tried it. All right, AJ. Have a great evening. Let's enjoy tonight. You are on the Saints and the Browns. Yes. I am on the Saints and the Steelers. D butts on the Saints and the Browns. Yep. Which is where Dan Orlovsky is mm -hmm. as well. We'll find out who's right, who's not tomorrow. We'll have a great mm -hmm. Tuesday for you. Aaron Rodgers coming on the program. I think there's a couple others as well. Nice. It should be a pretty stacked Tuesday. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this every single day, for joining us with your life, and allowing us to just penetrate your ear holes with so much stupidity. But I believe if you pick through all the dumb, there is some morsels of good in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think today we had a little bit of that. You all are the best. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye. Bye.